both th- and today. I love that. You know, like it's a it's an exciting career being a live streamer. One yeah. one day you've never hosted a live stream, and by the end of the day you've hosted three. I've of hosted them. like a, three live streams just today. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, so far. Hey guys, I'm back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I I have a new mic now. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I love that. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'll just pretend. We basically last... went through everything and it's hoping that it wasn't the mic, and it was the mic. My mic broke. Uh, the first time I ever tried to stream ever breaks that day. Yeah, and it broke. <laughs> yeah, during the stream. During as well. the like, stream. Um, in the call before the stream, it was fine. Yeah. So, I thought that was really cool. <laughs> it's very it, cool. We live in a goofy world, full of goofy things. Like Verdana <laughs> moment. Thank you. Let me just tell my Discord <laughs> server that it, it's back up. You being active in your Discord server. Look at you go. I, I'm trying to include him. Make him feel included. I wouldn't know anything about that. Ah. Uh. I may have started playing Minecraft while we were uh, sorting out technical issues as well. That helps people. Ke- that helps you keep your mind on the, uh, on the doctor. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's like a nice like grounding element. Uh, I find it, it, it keeps me within reality, which I guess is ironic because it's you know it's a video game. But <clears throat> is that okay. ironic? It's hard to tell. I'm just maybe I'll just give a, a just a minute for people to come back because <laughs> we. There were a bunch of people joining, and then, and then I had to end it. Hello, Boots. End it all. What's up, Boots? I got it's working now. I got the mic working. Hopefully. Um, with a low, low, newer and lower bit rate, <laughs> which isn't oh, even beautiful. the problem. Which isn't even the problem. I could have turned the bit rate back up, but I didn't. But you know, whatever. I mean, you can, you can, you can turn the bit rate. You can change the bit rate while you're streaming. That is true. I'm gonna do that. It's uh, the magic of modern technology. And then we will start again. From square one. From square one. To be fair, not this, much this stuff... This cave I found is wild. N- not much <laughs> stuff is moving on screen, <laughs> so the bitrate doesn't have to be... Well, yeah, yeah, that's 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 yeah. how my my streams tend to go as well. It's like, hey, this the stream is mostly just like still images. Uh, stuff doesn't have to, have to move; it's fine. But I, even so, I could move stuff if I wanted to to, get to up the experience. When I'm placing stuff into the tiers, I can just do like a. You, could, you couldn't see that, but I did. Like you should a, make that sound effect, effect every time. I'll do that. There we go. No one's here this time. That's how you know it's like a high production value stream. No one's joining the stream this time, which is maybe it's great. like a you know a boy who cried wolf situation <laughs> where I do two streams and they both <laughs> they both fuck up and then the f- time I finally have everything working, people are like, oh another another uh, technical difficulty stream. Uh, no thank you. Well, fuck exactly. Up. I don't care how many people are watching. I'm gonna do it anyways. And if you guys don't like it. And you can go unsubscribe, even though you're not here. Yeah, everyone, unsubscribe immediately. <laughs> Do it. So, anyways, Doctor Who, it's a show, and we're, we're gonna yeah. rank the, we're gonna rank the series of it. This yeah. is the first attempt at making this video. Live they know it isn't. This, what, who are you saying that for? <laughs> anyways, series one. What do we think of series? Yeah, one? feel free to get involved, chat. By the way, even though no one's here this time, <laughs> feel, feel free well, to give your you, opinions. You were time. saying uh, we we were having a discussion about the uh, one you know um, on the previous stream that didn't happen about how uh, lots of uh, lots of the the early episodes of series one tend to feel a bit mid, uh, yeah. and I was saying that hey, you know. They they may not have uh, be the most like impressive stories, but they establish the characters very well, mm-hmm. and you know that's sort of what the 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 front end of the series is for. And 
you may not come away from them thinking, wow, that was incredible, but they do do a lot of great groundwork for the series. And then you were countering that by saying, again, all on this like imaginary stream that didn't really it happen. It didn't happen, yeah. No. Um, yeah. Um, but I imagine if it did happen, what you would have then said is that that's, that's all true. However, Doctor Who is a very episodic show yes. where the appeal of a lot of it is that you can just you know, like watch any episode That um, is what I might have order. been saying on a, on a stream that didn't happen. Uh, yeah, no. My pity yeah. series one is it's a it's a good, dare I say, great series. But uh, I just, I think, like you, when it's a show like Doctor Who, the most important thing is, for an individual episode, is just I think that it stands on its own. It's it's not like it's not like a, a Breaking Bad or a Game of Thrones or something with, with you know like a some bigger story that it's telling. It, it's an episodic show. So I think you, even though I I really appreciate what they were doing. With the with the um, how they set up the ninth doctor and his relationship with Rose and uh, the the uh, his PTSD like post time war I think that was all really done but the the actual episodes themselves near the beginning like the end of the world the unquite dead <laughs> the, the fucking sl- the farting Slitheen two parter I I just find those there all... are a few of them are like actively shit I'm sorry what you... yeah so I find those all very mid and at points shit. Um, yeah, definitely shit at points, but uh, I do agree with you, Numpy. Yeah. So I do agree that uh, if we had series one quality these days, that would be that would be nice. Be a big improvement. Yeah, yeah, opening series one quality. And I also agree with you, Percy the Wolf, that season one is an excellent start to the series. It is. No, I, like it, it's a it's a good starting point, one hundred percent. Yeah, and then Dalek. Dalek is the first episode that's class. That's a class episode, that's, right that's there. That's elite. That's elite shit. I think it's my favorite episode of the yeah. series. But the thing is that this the back half of season one is genuinely like what it's it goes hard. Uh, <laughs> like that shit and like, the long game. <laughs> it's like Dalek, the long game, Father's Day, the Empty Child, the Doctor Dances, Boomtown, Bad Wolf, Pardon the Ways. Boomtown is the only episode from that whole stretch that's not amazing, and honestly I still like it. Wait, 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 wait. The long game. Oh shit, I totally well, you know uh, you know what? I don't hate that. I don't hate it. That as as far as I'm concerned, that's the closest that like series one gets to being like uh, Chibnall era tier. It's, it's not. It's very like it, the Doctor it is, is still good in it. The, the companions are still good in it, but no, it is um, it is mid. Everything else is just sort of like, what were you doing, guys? Like the, 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 the side characters are all very shallow. The story is very shallow. It, it tries to have ideas that it explores, but it doesn't really cover them very well or in a particularly interesting way. Well, it, no, it it is a shallow exploration at a, a more sort of deep theme like the idea of um how you know like news well, can control be, the information used to, yeah you control, you control the, the information you control the world but it doesn't really delve into any like actually interesting like explorations of that theme it's just like a blue room you just see a blue room with people in it yeah <laughs> like, can, typing stuff and it's like they control everything uh, yeah, it'd be nice if we it, if, it if sort we of saw. tells you what its ideas are rather than exploring yeah, yeah, no, them a good uh, way to, through the story yeah like, it would be nice if we and saw... And the characters, the side characters are all very shallow. Yeah, it'd be nice if we saw <laughs> the effects that what they do had on the, the people. We don't really see that much of the, the people. We, very yeah, little. I mean, we, you would. I think you would need to give it more... I mean, I mean, you'd either, like, need to just totally re- re- rework it or yeah. need to give it, like, more time to explore the story with much depth. And, yeah, I think... There's, like, there's one moment in it, I rewatched it relatively recently, and there's just a moment in it where, like, a character reveals himself to have, like, been a secret agent or something this whole time. And there it's like, what is what is going on? This is, like, this is just really weak. Yeah. Um, yeah but... Just the, the way the dialogue is constructed and the character motivations, it all seems off my, yeah, in a my, very my brain, hollow way. My brain kind of just... <sighs> Flew past that episode when I was when I was reading out the titles of the. I, <laughs> but forgot, I, don't, I don't blame you. I forgot that, that one's mid at best. But the thing, is, okay. But the rest of the back half of series one, I, I like Boomtown. I honestly like Boom. Like the scenes with the Doctor uh, having dinner with Margaret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are fucking hilarious. <laughs> I mean, th- those are those are the own, like those are the good scenes, and you also have some like good stuff for Rose learning how. Um, it's, it's essentially, ch- essentially, Lowe's, Rose manages to take, take the L on how she's treat, uh, treated Mickey so far. Yeah, which is nice because before that point, the show was just like glorifying her abuse of him and neglect. 
pretty much uh yeah you get sort of she learns a lesson on that one um which is nice to see it's a chill episode they're just hanging out you know Kinda yeah appreciate that um and um yes boots i agree that nine has a good outfit i do like it it's different it gives a different vibe from most doctor outfits but um yeah it's just sort of casual he just sort of slips on a leather jacket and you know nothing too showy that kind of fits his per persona very well yeah very stripped back very just you know if um if you saw him uh in public walking around i said if you saw if you saw someone dressed exactly like him in public walking around he's the one who would be least likely to be a cosplay as in like <laughs> you could see someone dressed exactly as the ninth doctor and not immediately assume that that's someone cosplaying the Doctor. But I would, uh, I would love you if you did immediately assume it was someone <laughs> cosplaying the Ninth Doctor. Like, oh, no, yeah, yeah, if yeah. You, if a Doctor Who fan went to like a like a biker gang meetup, just be like, oh my god, everyone's cosplaying. <laughs> this is crazy. But like series one, it's. Like okay, Dalek, Father's Day, the Empty Child slash Doctor Dances, and especially the series finale two parter, those are all some of my favorite yeah. stories the show's ever done, and they they all come almost back to back. It's such a good run. It really is. Um, it, it gives us um some of the most interesting uh portrayals of the Daleks we've ever seen, and I I really adored like Dalek stories. I want more good ones. Someone in, um, someone in chat just said Eccleston reminds me of my dad. <laughs> I do not have a good relationship <laughs> with my dad. <laughs> um, I'm I'm sorry to hear that, but if it's true that your dad is like Eccleston, that 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 means he may be a bit of a dick at times, but he 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 does care about you underneath it all. Well, it really it depends he, on in what way he he reminds you of uh of of your dad. He you called know? you a stupid ape. But he's he is his heart's in the right place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, if your dad is literally Christopher Eccleston, he may have committed a event. genocide of two species, <laughs> but his heart is in the right place. Yeah, yeah. And I think, but he's really sad about it. He's really he it, he's torn up about it. I swear. He's he's very sorry. <laughs> yeah. So series one, the I feel like most people would push most people watching this would want it to be an s i think you said you wanted it to be an s and part of me wants to put an s but i also just can't forget that the first half the first half of the series literally has no like or i guess the first five episodes i mean but the first five episodes are kind of it's just kind of a mid run i'm sorry to say it and it but, kind of makes know, me... we can all be forgiven for our mistakes I mean, like, if you think it should be an S, I'll put an S. It's I, I do think it should be an S. You do uh, think it should be an S? Gonna be, if oh, it's well, going to be democratic, then I guess uh, does, does that mean I push yeah, it to S? You can push it to S, but um, I'm throwing you a bone on that one, which means you have to throw me a bone on a future disagreement. I'm going to I'm gonna hold that. Okay, I, I understand. Okay. Well, I, I, I assume all of them are going to be democratic, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't really take issue with Series 1 being... I, I, for me, it's like kind of in between S and A. Because it has a farting aliens two parter. <laughs> that's like that's part of why but the farting aliens two parter is really good. They just fought. The only problem is that they fought. Well, uh, there's I don't like know. a couple of plot, pro plot problems in part two. But, but the, other than the that, fact like... that they win the day by Mickey just guessing the password to yeah, a that's, nuclear that's, silo. That's the um, and then they nuke themselves. But they 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 survive because they're hey, no, in the it's closet. Not a, it's not a nuke. It's not a nuke. It's a normal missile. And then they all win because they're in the closet. And then they all come out of the closet. At the end of the episode very bravely they bravely well, the, come out of the, the, the thing that's weird to me about that is that they clearly survived that because they were in the reinforced metal room but the show likes to pretend that it's because they were standing in the closet yeah i don't but, it, but it, it's part of a bigger metaphor it's, it's social commentary yes but, but anyways yeah, no we can put it in s we can put it in s fair enough oh i almost forgot s okay so true so series two then um yes yeah. that's worse <laughs> yeah yeah uh there's a lot of worse episodes but it also still has a lot of bangers in it you know yeah totally um it doesn't have like a great run at any point like the the back half of season 
Obi-Wan has, but um yeah. so there's good stuff in there like um the the girl in the fireplace despite the possible grooming undertones that m- you might yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> if you ignore that well that the, the thing about that right is that i don't know i don't know to be fair he doesn't groom i her know on how i feel about that he accidentally well no he doesn't her. do it on purpose <laughs> he just accidentally does it because the mirrors keep yeah that, that's the perfect way to say <laughs> yeah, it's accidental grooming that's what it is uh yeah and when it's an accident it's okay uh, 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 <laughs> Jay endorses every statement being made on this podcast. By the way, podcast, yes, live stream, whatever. I don't know what this is. I don't even know what I'm doing right now. The um, I, I've I've always enjoyed the Cyberman two parter, the parallel universe one. Yeah. Um. There, the thing is, um, what, what, the um, the girl in the fireplace and the Cyberman two parter. A lot of people hate on those. My main criticism of the Cyberman two parter is that I feel it would be a, mo- a lot more thematically pertinent if John Lumick was converted into a uh, just your standard Cyberman rather than the big Cyber Controller. Uh, that would yeah. really sort of um, show the problem with what he's doing. I feel, um, yeah. you know, the whole thing is that like, hey, these thing, these guys, they. They take away your individuality, um, and it would be like a really poetic end if you never find out which one he even is. But then all of the side men get defeated. Uh, I really like the moment where they went cliche. Where, with the end. yeah, like this, there's a side man who's like um, the doctor is asking a side man after John Lumick. He's like, "Well, where's John Lumick gone? Ha ha ha." Um, and Simon's like, oh, he's being upgraded. And the doctor says, oh, so he's just like you. And I'm there thinking, yeah, that would be a really cool, like, pertinent end to his character. Uh, to him get his like you know his just dessert i guess Uh but then yeah they don't do that which is a shame that's my biggest criticism they do Hmm? it's kind of around then that they start taking mickey seriously as a character like he's not just a comedy relief anymore like he is a well i mean they take him seriously as a character in like doomsday but he is like more of a comic relief or not doomsday and yeah uh, yeah. sorry boomtown Boomtown. yeah but no but i mean he he really becomes he really steps into his own here i think and this is the episode where he decides to stay in the parallel universe you know to help out there i just yeah very cool of him it's very cool of him uh separating him from his actor (laughs) uh yeah there's also um there was like a deleted scene, I think, where um, you find out that um, that like Jake from that episode uh, was dating the parallel universe version of uh, Mickey who dies in it. Oh yeah, I which think... I think adds like a whole new angle to. I I, th- I really wish that was still in there. It adds like more depth to it. Yeah, and the, yeah, no, I I think I remember that from when I was a kid, and I was like. Why they delete that? And I, I might, I might know why now. As, some, as <laughs> I, a, I might know why. I might know why. It's a shame. Because 2006 is why. Yeah, it, it is a shame, but. Uh... Mm-hmm. But see, we still got Captain Jack, you know. We still got that representation. Yeah. Russell T Davies got it in. Um, I'm seeing an interesting take here in the chat. Someone says they they specifically called out the 50s episode and the olympics episode as their favorites and i you might i can't tell if you're joking or not <laughs> that, that might be the least popular opinion you could <laughs> that, have come up with the most the least popular opinion in existence yeah um yeah because yeah if we're talking about series two you can't ignore the fact that there's this like there's this whole thing where it has love and monsters and fear her in it <laughs> Yeah, which is um, not doing it any favors. Per and se. it also yeah has the it has the uh, has the Olympics one as well. That's fear her. Wait, the idiot's lantern. No, yeah, you're right. Uh, no, yeah, the, yeah, that's the one I was. I mean, that yeah. one's not good either. That... <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but the the the, the I parts. I need to rewatch all of these though. The parts with David Tennant and Billy Piper like just having fun though, riding the 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 motor bicycle. Bicycle, motor, but the motorcycle, the motorbike, <laughs> riding, riding the motorbike. You know, those are those are some fun scenes. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't like the scenes between uh, the Doctor and Rose uh, I... in the in later series too because they get too sort of lovey dovey. I and I understand that. Hmm? 
I've never really felt that way necessarily. I I find like may I I could see where someone's coming from. Like, why would the doctor, this nine hundred year old alien, suddenly fall that hard for Rose? Just like a nineteen year old girl, bit weird, bit random. Hey hey hey, he's twenty by series two. He's twenty. She's twenty. She's twenty. Okay. That makes more sense. Yeah, a bit weird though that <laughs> she, that happens. Yeah. Uh, also. There's also like a few scenes I remember where it's played where like it's, it's played off as like he's like almost nervous to tell her how he feels and I don't bu- I don't buy that from him really. Yeah, it's I don't know I, I I've I've never a hundred percent understood why the doctor fell for Rose and none I mean, of his companions before that or even really after the same like I guess there's like the doctor had something with River Song and there was that whole. Yasmin thing, which we'll I guess we'll get to eventually, but like so, the, what the doctor with Rose is like uniquely like t- it's like a it's like teenagers in love. It's like something we've never seen. It really is, yeah, yeah. And like, which well, maybe, maybe the reason I it doesn't bother me is because I grew up watching it and I thought it was cute then, and it, it didn't. I wasn't weirded out by the fact it doesn't really make that much sense for the doctor to be in a romance like that, but um. Yeah, and and the age gap, which is the a bit age, off. The age. To be fair, any human would be a bit off in terms of age gap. It could have been an eighty-year-old. Oh woman. no, I don't know. Like, I I think that like, um, like, look, the age gap is still large, but, um, I think like over the age of like probably like I don't know, I I, I don't want to put like an exact number on it, but like definitely by the time you're thirty-five, you can date anyone like as old as you want, and it's not dodgy. Mm-hmm. Um. Because there's like no imbalance of power dynamic. I, you know, I I've never been 35, but like you know, the whole thing is like it's a it's an imbalanced power dynamic. If it's like you know, a 40 year old dating like an 18 year old, even though that's legal, there's probably still an imbalanced power dynamic there. I've been 35. Um, it's really overrated. I don't recommend it. <laughs> um, uh, series two. Like, sorry, sorry. So that, hmm? What were you saying? Was it? But like. Well, for any character like dating the Doctor, as soon as they're like over thirty-five, I think it's fine. I see. Um, and yeah, and it's not like I'm not super married to that number, but it's definitely over nineteen. Is it's it, nineteen is definitely too low for the for that number. Yeah, no, I I agree, and the way that they write her in a very teenagery way, it also doesn't yeah. do it any favors. And it's like well, they also sort of write him in a teenagery way at times. Yeah, no, they do. If I'm being Which honest, weird. I I haven't really thought about it that much until just now. But the tenth Doctor isn't as good of a Doctor in the season as he is in series three or four. I don't think. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, he's, um, he's not... I, but I think I think it's is that just in terms of his like romantic angle with Rosa, or is that in general? I think he hadn't a hundred percent come into his own either yet. Like a lot of his um. His his cleverest moments and the the, the moments you really see, see get to see David Tennant pulling off his acting chops come in like series three and four like series three has the uh, human nature turns himself human, um, like uh, a lot of his most I don't know what you call them epic moments <laughs> like I don't know like Voyage of the Damned and such when he's you know really showing off how much of a cool motherfucker I mean, that's, he is to everyone. That's, that's almost like, well, I mean, I like that stuff that he does, but it's almost too far in the other direction. If he started like doing that off the gate, I think we need to get an arc for him to get, get to that point where yeah, he's really fair. cocky. But yeah, in series two, it's like, I think that they, he's, he's still a good doctor in series two, hundred percent. But like his, his like, also he's weirder in series three or, and four. I think that also adds like uh, that's true like uh the the thing he was doing in series three when he's trying to like push the radiation into his foot and he's like hopping around and he's like barefoot on the moon like <laughs> i love that shit and that i don't think series two ten would have done that uh yeah i i think it's definitely his weakest season for characterization in series two yeah um and the, just the episodes in series two, just mm-hmm. like, just I'm just like looking through everything series two has to offer. Like, what would you say the best episode in series two is? Like, is it Girl in the Maybe fireplace? the Satan Pit? The Satan Pit? Okay, interesting take. I haven't heard that that one. Uh, what else? Th- I mean, it's it's a it's a really solid story. I think most people really like it. 
Wait, hold on. YouTube's giving me a... What do you mean viewers will experience buffering? Shut the fuck up, YouTube. Just make my stream work, please. Just power through. <laughs> just please. Uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just keep going. Um. Anyways. I, th I think that I think the uh, Saint Pit is probably uh, one of the most popular choices for series two. I like it. Uh, it highlights. It, it's really spooky. <laughs> like just the like. The like Saint it, like, explores is the bad guy. interesting ideas. Uh -huh, fair enough. Um, uh, I I do like that two parter. I I would probably put Girl in the Fireplace, at as my favorite, from that season. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. It is a banger. It is a banger. I've I've never felt personally that the um the ending of this season is the strongest. Like it's not nearly as good as the finale Sorry. series one. Uh, there's really good parts of it, and the scene with Doctor on the the Doctor and Rose on the beach. Then he fades away, you know, right before he's going to say, I love you. Maybe it's a little cheesy. Maybe I'm a bit nostalgic for it, but I, I do still really like that. When I was a kid, it made me cry. <laughs> um, Like, yeah, there, there is Fair. one thing. There is one thing about that episode, though, that, like, r has always bothered the fuck out of me. And it, it's like, I usually try not to, like, have my criticisms, criticisms revolve around a, a plot hole. But... You know the moment when Rose is hanging on to like the 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 lever and the, the dials are mm -hmm. have been sucked into the void and then she loses her grip and falls in. And then her dad just suddenly someone in the chat is saying co parter right now. I don't give a fuck. I don't come <laughs> at me. Come at me. She flies off <laughs> she flies off of it and then her dad just appears from from the parallel universe. He somehow not only knew at that moment that she was <laughs> that she was falling, but he knew where to stand. Yeah. He doesn't get sucked in for no re for no reason, like because the explanation is that if you switch between universes, you'll be covered in void stuff, and thus you'll get sucked in. He he comes, in does not get sucked in for no reason, and knows where to stand, and and, and grabs her, and then and then Rose is saved, and it's like. Could you not have just written this to make it's, any it's, sense? She, it's, she's not earned. Yeah, it's, it's her being saved isn't earned by that story at all. Stop telling me to cope, chat. Stop. <laughs> you cope. <laughs> well, you've encouraged it now. <laughs> Pete had spawn immunity. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Titan. He, that's that's the that's the lore explanation. He was still on his iframes. <laughs> he used iframes to do it. Uh, yeah, and and like in general, uh, I've mixed feelings on Army of Ghosts and Doomsday because the funniest thing that's ever happened in Doctor Who is the the bitch fight between the Daleks and the Cybermen. <laughs> I love that shit, but yeah, there's just fun. there's a bunch of like sh mid shit that doesn't make any sense in that episode too. And like, yeah. Um. One of the complaints that I don't subscribe to that I hear about that episode a lot is that um, it's like does a massive disservice to the Cybermen to have them totally like plowed over by the Daleks, and it's like I don't like that one. The Daleks... Well, especially um, when you consider that these are Time War Daleks versus like very new Cybermen. Yeah, they're baby Cybermen. It's like yeah, the Daleks were the only. If, if they held their own, that would be a problem. Daleks were the only species that could go up against the Time Lords. Like it wouldn't make sense for the the Cybermen to be as good. Cybermen are literally just like, and these are the these are the Cybermen that are just modified humans from the parallel universe. It's not the Mondas Cybermen, so it doesn't even they'd be even shitty. Yeah, there's no real alien technology. There's like some cool like advanced tech, but you know, it's like honestly, they they shouldn't be able to hold their own against the Daleks. Just looking through series two as a whole, like it's. Even the episodes that are good aren't that good. <laughs> if the, like School Reunion. Hey, hey, hey. Satan, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's true. School Reunion is an episode people hold up as one of the best of series too because uh, Sarah Jane and there's some great scenes in there with her. But it's it's it's, it's like a really goofy ass, <laughs> fucking, kind of weird episode as a whole that has this really annoying like through like thing where like Rose is jealous of Sarah Jane and she's jealous of Rose and they have this like girl fight and it's so cringe and like I don't like 
I, I like the resolution to them being jealous of each other, though. Well, I'm glad. Um, I'm glad they become friends. It's just like the fact that they even have a cat fight at all is just so 2006 and pointless. Yeah. And I, I don't know. For me, series two is like it's it's it might even be B for me, if I'm being honest. I, I'm happy to put it in B. Like it, it, there's it just it comes up short on having like good enough episodes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, chat. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, B, B, put it in B. I'm putting it in B. I'm putting it in, I'm, I'm putting it in B. It's happening. Um, uh, the thing about <laughs> um, School Reunion as well is that, like, um, it really feels like, uh, it really feels like they wanted to do a character drama piece between Rose and Sarah Jane and the Doctor. And then they're like, oh, I guess we also need, like, aliens in it. Like, it's a Doctor Who episode, I guess. Dude, I have one of the spiciest chats ever. They're, they're, they're in agreement that Love and Monsters is a good episode right now. Why? I don't know. My I have edge lords. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, I respect your I, opinion. It's a unique episode. I can understand that. 100%. Is channel pup in the chat? Is that what's happening? I don't know. I don't here, know. here to defend his baby. <laughs> well, I guess I guess we move on to series three then. Series three. What are we got in series three? Series three is quite good, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I, I really like series three. Yeah, uh, it's I... let, let down by the ending of its finale, I think, and by um, Martha um, being consistently written to just be in love with the Doctor rather than to be. Ex there are much more interesting elements of her character to explore, which the, the series does sometimes. But it seems to think we're way more interested in her being just like pining after the doctor than we are. Those are my two main issues with the series. Yeah. Like, it, I, Martha on her own, I think, is a great companion. I think uh, uh, Freema Adjuman, I hope I pronounced that right, does a good job. Uh, did I pronounce it right? Whatever. I think she she does a great job playing her. I have no idea. I know, I know, I know it's Freema, but I've never learned how to say her, her last name correctly. And I, well, like in, in all these years, I've just heard it and been like, "Oh, that's I. how it's said," but not remembered. Um. Yeah. Sorry. Someone's spamming my chat. Uh. Hold on. Can you ban stop? them? Can you stop spamming? I don't want to ban you, but please stop spamming my chat. <laughs> if you keep spamming my chat, I'm gonna, I'm them. gonna put you on a. I'm gonna have to give you a spank. All right. That's what I was thinking. Great minds. Great minds think alike. Well, it seems they stopped, so there we go. See, I'm authoritative. When I say things, people listen. The only problem leader. is that when you like when you threaten to spank your YouTube audience, a lot of them are like, "Oh yes, please." It's like, oh, no, right. Other, the other people are gonna start spamming the chat now. Damn it. <laughs> Just out of pure, pure desire. Okay, so series three. Anyways, series three. I think it, it just well, well it doesn't have like the 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 like a sheer amount of great episodes that like series four has it's yeah. more consistent like it doesn't have the bad parts yeah it doesn't have it's like two. you know several bad episodes yeah but but that's pretty much I mean, it. to be fair it does have the Lazarus experiment that is one of the most unintentionally funny things I've ever seen in my life, <laughs> like the CGI <laughs> on the guy. Yeah. And the fact that like, it's a genuinely interesting theme of like someone, you know, like, trying to prolong their life, you know, fear, fear of death. Oh yeah. Yeah. It, it, a theme, which it really ignores um, yeah. as well. It, it, because just, like, like the doctor is a really interesting character to explore that villain with, because he just has a naturally very long life. And the only thing that, that they address that with in the episode is have him say to Lazarus, well, I've lived long enough to know that a longer life isn't always a better one. Then just Which is die. one of those things where you want to say, like, yeah, easy for you to say, <laughs> easy bitch. Easy for you to say. And it, it's like, well, we have this really interesting concept for an episode. What do we do with it? Oh, he turns into a flesh spider. Yeah, he turns into a big spider. <laughs> and, and then they play an organ really loud, and he dies. And then he dies, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, but, um, oh, I got, I got, I got all the best scenes in it are like Sorry? A young Lazarus talking about like, you know, old things 
Uh, or I think there's like a scene where like Lazarus is talking about remembering like sheltering from the bombs in World War II in a church. Um, yeah, no, the, there's good parts in there for sure. Like I like the first act of the episode. Yeah, for real, for real. Um, I think I got sidetracked earlier just... when I was talking about Martha, but I was trying to say that she's she's a great companion in terms of her characterization. I, and I like that she's competent. Like she she's a doctor. She's actually genuinely useful to the doctor in that sense with her through her skill set. But what like you said, her yeah. her being in love with him for like no reason and him just friend zoning her is one of my least favorite things about this season. I kind of I mean, you I, know, I understand why she likes him. It's just like come on, ca yeah. calm down. He's it's, just a guy. It's so uh, chill un, out. It's so unsubtle. It's like, it's like she. I don't remember exactly the episode, the context, but there's a part when like someone's talking to Martha about like, no, no, it's the doctor said. The doctor's like, you know what it's like when uh, someone's looking at you, but uh, you know they just don't see you the way you yeah, see yeah, them, yeah. and then he like walks away, and she's just like, yeah, tell me about it or something like that. It's just like, do you, it does have to be so unsubtle. <laughs> I get it. She's in love with him. Like, it, it even like it, 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 it um, it sort it sort of affects like even like a lot of the good scenes and stuff like uh, human nature. Um, yeah. where, yeah, it's like um. She she tells um one of the things that she tells John Smith about the Doctor is like that she loves him, and it's like. Great, cool. I feel like he's probably more concerned about like what kind of actual person he is, though, right? Like, um, because like it's, it's a whole scene of him trying to be like, well, of course you want the doctor back, you know, he's your friend, but I'm John. I I want to live, and she's like, well, he's so good. I love him, and it's like, Martha, that's just gonna persuade him that you're more biased. Why did you say that? Uh huh. Um, but and there's a lot of like Martha, why did you do that in that episode? It's like one of the episode's main problems, I think, is just. Martha, why did you do that? You should know better than that. Why'd you let him eat pears? He hates pears. Well, it's like, um, why is her, like, um, one of her, like, go-to reactions or, like, her immediate go-to reaction when she's, uh, when she's like, oh, I need him, I need the doctor back, like, now. Let's just go up to John Smith and be like, the doctor is real. Are you, you need to be the doctor again, please. It's like, you know, that's, that, that's not how this works, Martha. <laughs> yeah. But even so, like despite that, it's it's a great episode. It's a great two parter, like real, like a real yeah, yeah, yeah. Standout um, from the like that was written by uh, Chris Cornell, right? Um, or is it I think it's Paul, Paul Cornell. Cornell. But... Sorry, a Paul Cornell. Yes, yeah, yeah. And the um, this is the episode I've rewatched like most recently. By the way, I'm not sure. I watched Father's Day the other day, but. Um, yeah, I had a fun time rewatching this the other day. Um, it is really good. One of the other problems I take with it is that the, um, the tone isn't maintained where you've got like the doctor like takes a load of shit at the end of the episode for like kind of, you know, being a dick. Um, and then there's this sort of uncomfortable scene where he invites, uh, that lady on board the TARDIS, uh, the nurse, the nurse matron, he, he invites her on board the TARDIS. Oh, right. And there's this whole thing of like, um, he's clearly not reading the room. I believe that he as a character would do it, but it's a very uncomfortable scene. And it's like, so that's sort of the point. Um, but then just like that scene ends and suddenly it's back to, it's like back to normal Doctor Who fanfare. It's like, anyway, Martha, what a great adventure. Let's go off to the next place. And Martha's like, yeah. And yeah. it's like, you're criticizing, tonal whiplash. criticizing the family blood. You're trying to get murdered out here. Oh yeah, I mean, a lot of people like to say that that episode is racist. Um, I it, it isn't really. Um, well, the, does that Smith, come? Uh, no, Smith, uh, fucking. Well, it's like one. Um, why did the Doctor choose to take Martha to this um, to this place and time where she knew? Well, he knew that she yeah, would experience good, racism. Like, he it's like, knew he would have known. Well, no. Happen. <laughs> it's not a good point because in the episode, there's a line where he's like, um, he states that the TARDIS is going to take care of where they. Um, is that he he's going to be becoming human and then the TARDIS is going to find a location that they can integrate. So it wasn't his choice. Oh, okay. I, well, I, to be fair, I didn't remember that. No one and does. Just... That's the thing. No one remembers that line. Um, but it like it it completely absolves that like criticism. 
Um, I only brought up that criticism because you led me. You made me think it was a criticism you were making, and then I just wanted to agree with you to feel to feel special. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry for deceiving you. You, you, you deceived me. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little trickster goblin. What do you think about the the doctor going full uh, evil <laughs> at the end and bit trapping them like in eternity? Uh, I think it was very clearly written for seven, but I I, I don't mind it for ten. Yeah, hun- because yeah, right, because it was originally a book, right? Yeah, it, I've got a copy of that book on my desk right now because after rewatching it, I was like, I want to read the book. Yeah, what's funny is it's it's debatable that it part. I know that the um he, when he killed the Ragnos, that was before this, but I think the family blood is one of the main. Mo- like one of the first times we really saw like i don't know what you want to call the oncoming storm in the 10th doctor and it's debatable yeah that, i mean that mm. that influenced him like his dark side going forward and the only reason that he had a dark side in that sense going forward is because the the writer of this episode wrote something for the 7th doctor and then just gave it to the 10th doctor yeah. and then it became part of his character but it, like it works it does. It's sort of the first time we see like a vengeance in him, uh, rather than just like trying to save the day. This is very clearly he 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 knows he's giving them like he's got like a somber face about him as he does it, but he also just knows that he's giving them like their just dessert kind of thing. He's he knows he's giving them like an ironic punishment. Someone in chat just said, "Oh, so ten isn't racist, but the TARDIS is." Yeah, yeah. I guess that's <laughs> the one. The Doctor's not racist, but the TARDIS picked. A time period where Martha would be discriminated against as the best period they could integrate into. Th- if that might well, sort of because of... the TARDIS is like a much more unknowable entity, right? So it's sort of like I don't really know what the TARDIS's process was. <laughs> that maybe the TARDIS just didn't like Martha the way it didn't like Clara. Dang! And we just I sentence you to racism. <laughs> I sentence you to racism. I'm going to use the your your skin color against you, Martha. What am I, the thirteenth Doctor? Ooh, I knew you. Were, I knew where you were going with that. Yeah, it was, it was a bit predictable, but I, I had to say it anyways. It's uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's it's good one. <laughs> I, I, I don't blame you, but go on. <laughs> Over, I'll get, I think, I think we should probably wrap up on series three because we spent a long time talking about family blood and such. But like overall, yeah. Um, this is um. Oh, wait, actually, before we wrap up, I just have to complain about the thing everyone well, complains I mean, about, which is, uh, the the winning with mm-hmm. prayer at the end of the last of the time lords where well yeah they they i get that they set up the archangel network it's like the psychic network that everyone's connected to so if everyone says the word doctor it will restore him to his former glory but i mean beyond the fact that that's a deus well, ex think- machina that wasn't really set up like like the martha just told people uh, like she told people about the doctor and told them to say the word and then apparently the image of the doctor, which is in all of their heads, is what recreates him. But the thing is, none of them know what he looks like. They've never seen him. So how is the image of the young tenth yeah. doctor in all of their heads to like rebuild him? Does it like like the more realistic thing that would have happened is he would have just turned into like a stock doctor with a, t- a stethoscope, <laughs> like a stock <laughs> image of a doctor. That's what would have happened realistically. But he turns into David Tennant again. Ah, uh, well, I mean, that's a sentence that we're going to hear a lot. Yeah. He turns yeah. into David Tennant <laughs> The Doctor again. turns into David Tennant a lot of times. Every other incarnation Three? once. Three? But, but, well, I, do, if we're counting this as a time the young David Tennant emerges, then it's it's um the first regeneration, when he first emerges, this, um, the time with the the meta crisis doctor at the time that the doctor generate regenerates yeah. into the hand and becomes himself again um and then the 13th doctor turning into him so there's five there's five tenth doctors five tenth doctor emerges uh, so far so far so at this point for this for the 70th, 70th anniversary they should probably do the five tenth doctors yes i would watch that I think um, I mean, a lot of people are ironically saying that they would watch like a, a three twelfth doctors with one of with with one twelfth doctor from each twelfth doctor season. But I guess we'll yeah, get to that. True, because yeah, I mean they are basically three different doctors, anyways. 
Um, I I would probably put uh, three in A, if I'm being honest. Can we address the Dalek two part first? Oh yeah, no, we can address that first, and then and we can get to ranking. Do, do, do you like it? Do I like it? Um, I wouldn't say like is the word I'd use. Uh, I, I'm nostalgic for it though because it's one of the first stories I ever saw when I was a kid, and I think. Ooh. Again, there's like interesting themes explored. Like it's this is a common thing in the Russell T Davies era back when they explored interesting themes, <laughs> which is there are a lot of episodes that did explore like genuinely interesting themes. In this case, the Daleks being so desperate for survival that they'll they'll sacrifice the one thing that w- is the most important to them, which is racial purity. To be fair, the episode doesn't do a great job explaining why that's their only option to like merge their DNA with humans. Cause that seems so sacrilegious to the Daleks. And it's like, even they realize, wait, we don't actually have to do this. Let's just kill, <laughs> let's just kill the, well, the, I mean, it the... seems, um, that it's sort of justified by them being the cult of Skara rather than any other particular Daleks. Right. Mm-hmm. This, this secret order that, are, that are essentially exist as the sacrilegious Daleks. If any Daleks were going to try it, it would be them. That fair enough. I, I just I think that I would have liked to see like Laszlo, that's the name of the, the, the guy, right? Yeah. I, I Laszlo never felt like he had any Dalek qualities in him. He kind of just felt like a nice guy to me. And I felt like But was he was he supposed to be like a Dalek? I he, thought he was just half, like a, he's half a, Dalek, a slave half. they made. No, sorry, no, he's not, not Laszlo. He's, he's like a pig slave. Not Laszlo, he? sorry. I meant the uh, who's the hybrid? What's the name of the hybrid? Sec. Sec. Sorry, Sec. Yeah. No. He when when they like. Turn yeah, he is him, just kind of a nice guy. Isn't he's he? just kind of a nice guy. And it, like what I, I would have liked to see, like a, a conflict, you know, within him between his Dalek side and his human side. And I just felt like the episode didn't explore that much. It's not a terrible episode. Like there, there's there are decent side characters in it. Um. I almost it's... get the, the impression watching that episode, though, that, that Sek was kind of a nice guy before. Uh, I mean, you know, he had to sort of undo the conditioning he received as a Dalek. He's a nice but guy. But that ultimately, ultimately, he was just sort of chill. Mm-hmm. Um, what did Laszlo which do in this episode again? Because I, I, I don't... <laughs> he was the, um, he was like the guy that they tried to, like, genetically engineer into being a slave for them. Okay. Um, and he was the one who escaped. I don't really remember his arc too good. I just remember them like having really, there being really interesting scenes between the Doctor and and Sek in this one. Yeah, no, I like interesting scenes, but I I like I always felt they could have done more with Sek as a character. They, they could have done more with and him, and they should have um, named him Laszlo because that's a cooler name. That's what I thought. I don't so. think it's like a a it's bad not... story though either. Um. Like I think I think it is a pretty good two part of there's like some plot issues here and there. And it could have done done like more with its characters, but it I'm not like gonna turn my nose up at it either, right? I really like it. I, I like the um the setting of it, like in nineteen thirties New York. I, I, I like the yeah, the um the homage they pay to the, the, the time period and you know and such. But like I don't know, I, I think it's okay. That's probably what I'd say is my opinion of it. Fair enough. Anyway, I, this oh yeah, this series has Blink. Obviously, we can't not mention that because <laughs> it's Blink. Blink, I think, is really overrated, but I don't hate it. It's like it's all right. It's pretty good. It's not my. Fa- um, it's, it's not. It's not my number one favorite episode of the show. But I think there's a reason it has the prestige it does because it, it's such oh, yeah. a good jumping on. Like you can show anyone Blink as their first episode, and it's it's an intriguing mystery. It's well written really interesting exploration of, of time travel like the conversation with the doctor with the, the transcript being written as the conversation is happening it, it's just it's clever and it's full of good ideas that when you watch it for the first time you're like oh, I wish more time travel stuff just to like use the idea of time travel in a clever way like this Weeping Angels obviously also a fantastic idea for a monster playing on the primal fear of like your fear of the dark or what you can't see like the Weeping Angels only move when you're not looking at them. It's it's just so many good ideas. Everything about it's written well. It's even well shot. It looks quite cinematic. I I also think it's like a it's a masterclass in how to present your ideas rather than like um 
necessarily the quality of the ideas themselves because um i mean you know, like a time travel story the whole loop set on itself it's been done a lot of times right it's nothing new it's sure it's it's a fun, it's fun a lot of people enjoy that kind of thing but it isn't like some groundbreaking idea um and like the weeping angels they're a very cool idea um they are they're cool but at the same time there was no like guarantee that they would actually be scary but the execution of the presentation of it like the fact that we don't just have a um a time a, like a time loop story or whatever not just time loop like you like you know a time travel story that loops in on itself but the fact that it's presented with a conversation happening with a pre-recorded video message that we've already seen bits of in the episode is what really like brings it together is like that satisfaction of um of seeing pieces of a puzzle come together in a way that you weren't yeah. expecting yeah totally like the seeing the the mystery sort of come together and, and doctor who is in many ways kind of a mystery show for being, for being honest and that's one of the, the best yeah examples. it does do a lot of mystery stories well, someone in chat is referring to you as jay sexy uh, how dare I, they i just thought you'd want to you'd want to know that and appreciate it i i do appreciate it i'm, I'm very thankful I feel, I feel like the stream is going to be about five hours long. No, we'll we'll keep we'll keep it moving. We'll keep it moving, Tom Monty. Yeah, we probably should get to series four. We should probably point. get to series, four. series three. Let's just slap this in A. I think we already know it's A. Yeah, I think I think it's A. You know, it's sounding sounding better than two, but uh, not as good as one. It's A. It's a good series. Whoa. Um, Prove it. And. With that, series four, and we—I mean, we already know where this one goes. It's—it's it's series four, like. Yeah. Uh, D. <laughs> D. Actually, no. Let me just quickly add another row, because I just realized there's gonna have to be another row. We're gonna—we're gonna hit that point. No, don't be called C. Okay, there we go. That, there needs to be an F, <laughs> for reasons we'll get into. Uh, anyways, <laughs> this is another one where I think the the resolution in the finale is pretty weak. In series four, yeah, I like series four was really going for like an end game <laughs> type, like some Infinity War shit with yeah. the finale, and I appreciate it. It's but... really fun. It's a very fun fan service episode. Bit light on the whole story, though. Yeah, it it doesn't have like. Really, you know, um, if we're going to do something like that, all the different characters should be like a different moving part in like this um, narrative that would have gone differently if they hadn't all been there. Whereas it's just sort of, hey, all these characters are here and also they're fighting Daleks. Yay! I just realized I, and I, you're I, like, yeah, yay. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I, I accidentally just changed mm -hmm. the C row to F. Hold, hold on. Okay, this is C. There we go. That's fine. That's fine. That's a that's not a bad mistake. There we go. Um but then we've got, you know, Partners in Crime. Pretty cool. Fires Will Pay, banger. Planet of the U, banger. banger. Tarin one, banger. Doctor's daughter. Bang. It's fine. It exists. Yeah. Uh Unicorn and the Wasp. Uh, uh, so I, I the find library. that one fun. Banger. banger. Midnight. Banger. banger. Turn left. Banger. banger. It's like, yeah, it's yeah. It's ass, isn't it? It's ass. It's obviously. It's just. There's so many good episodes. Dawn is the best companion. So so many. Like allegedly. Allegedly, no. She is. She is. She is. It's a fact. I like. I'm. I've always been more partial to Martha myself. I mean, it's kind of when I was a kid, Martha was my favorite, and Dawn has kind of moved up because Dawn is not in love with the Doctor. That's kind of what gave Mar Donna the edge. Well, like, yeah, that, I mean, that, that's my only complaint about Martha, right? And it's, I, I also, like, really want to see her just come back of, like, ev any character who, um, any previous companion who wouldn't it be just, wouldn't it be fun to just give them another go in the TARDIS for a season or two? Martha is, like, easily the top of that list for me. Well, to be fair, Martha kind of got that in this season. Because she comes back for, like, a, is, she's in, like, five episodes of this season, I think. Is she in five of them? She's oh yeah, she is in five of them. Two, yeah, okay, two yeah. Potters and the Doctor's Daughter um, show five episodes, so she's in a big chunk of this season. 
And she is great in this season. Yeah, she's you know? great. She's not in love with the doctor. So if anything, this is debatably her best season. I think it might be. Like, I really like her interactions um, with her. I also, clone. I am hoping that, um, oh yeah. Her interactions with her clone in the Santaran two-parter. That, I remember getting really sad when I was a kid when her clone died. And like, I was like, no, they could have been friends. Well, that would be fun. Imagine, imagine having two of a, a companion <laughs> character. That would be crazy. I, I, I don't even know how much we can even say about series four because it's just the best season. <laughs> like, it's just undisputedly I, the best. I, I, I think I'm. I think I might still rate season one over it, but I think they they both go in ass, right? Why is someone chat saying for Donna's technical issues never seem to end? Do, am I having technical issues again? What's the technical? Is that because now? you? Is that because you? If that because you put the thing in the? Is you, you turned C tier to F tier? I. Is that why? I hope not. I mean, I hope it is. I hope there's not a different, a worse issue that I don't know about. What? Hold on. Chat. All pretend that there's a really bad technical don't issue. Don't pretend there's a really bad technical issue. I won't be able to tell if, it, if you're being serious or not. <laughs> <laughs> I like to look a little troll. <laughs> is is it like not? Is it buffering for you guys or like? Like okay, no one. It'll probably be fine. No one's even saying anything. So unless unless the whole thing just derailed and disconnected. And that's why I'm not seeing any new chats. Then I'm gonna assume that it's because there's no more problems. That's the way to go. Anyways, yeah, no, I think it was the stream was buffering for people. Fuck. I hate YouTube. But yeah, no, it's like wow, th this rude. has this this series has the best overall like qual like quality between episodes of any of any season it's like in, I terms, think so, in yeah. terms of episodes that like aren't good like how many even are there i mean there's like the doctor's daughter and unicorn and the wasp right and maybe maybe journey's end that's a bit of a hot oh actually i'd have to rewatch watch we, and crime i guess we have to include the specials in here because there's no there's no tier for the specials which means we're oh yeah what, what did we get the first season? Oh yeah, okay. So then, then we get Waters of Mars as well, and Planet of the Dead, which I don't think is amazing, but I think it's definitely overhated. I think Planet uh, of the Dead is overhated. My real contention is with the End of Time. Fuck man. Thing is, uh, I don't... End of Time is in a weird boat where I genuinely think its biggest problem is that it's cringe. It is so cringe. <laughs> It is. It is but, the master just like eating a hamburger, like so hungry, <laughs> like oh, oh god, and just turning into a skull and yeah. then blasting off. It's like, what did you do? What did you do to this the problem poor is a, man? The problem story is as the story, it really works. Like, there's like loads of uh, great scenes between the characters. They, they I, form like a cohesive whole as well. I don't even necessarily um, like it as a story. It, it, it services all the characters really well. It services the. Uh, See, I actually it's journeys. Well, then, I mean, you know, that's the main thing, really. Journeys end, uh, which is the, the ending of like ma the main mainline series four. I I do like that just for f purely on how fun it is. Like very light story, obviously, but j just so many great scenes. Jack making a joke about the doctors having a three way with each <laughs> with each other, or like you know the scene when the doctor says goodbye to Donna. You know, that's that shit. That's one of the saddest companion departures I think ever if not the saddest. Whereas yeah. the end of time, I just don't think has the meat. It, it doesn't, ha for me, it doesn't have the good scenes and it also doesn't have a cohesive story. Like, the, like Gallifrey's plan doesn't make any sense to me. I, I still don't understand it. Uh, I don't, I think I said in the doctor's ranked video that I thought it would have been cool if like, I wanted to see the doctor on a time Lord victorious arc. Cause the wires of Mars leaves off with him like more radical than we've ever seen him before and i wanted to see the doctor trying to bring back gallifrey and the episode didn't do that and i i said i don't i'm not i mean sorry. that's like a whole different ass thing though right like oh it is totally. um because the thing is that the thing about the time lord victoria stuff is it does kind of get addressed in waters of mars when uh adelaide uh unalives herself. herself yeah 
what... see i was i was being careful for your monetization there but yeah no i don't i just don't even care also people are saying that the chat the the stream is buffering again and i'm just fucking i've had it with youtube it's understandable <laughs> Everyone in the chat is just like, Look, I, I tend to just I tend to just power on through. Yeah, let's just power. We're losing viewers now because it's like not working. <laughs> but fuck it. Have you uh, have you turned down the bitrate? Have you tried turning down the bitrate? I'll tr I'll turn it way down. Hold on. What is it at the moment? I turned it back up because um I've turned it up to four thousand. Yeah, gonna... you probably just want to. Sit. I'm gonna turn it down to one. Yeah, 000. just 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 don't have it on four thousand. It's probably the best bet. Yeah. Oh, that fixed it. I think. Yay. Uh, we lost oh my god oh we lost all viewers we're down to six viewers we lost everyone because it was buffering for like what were we at before um i wasn't actually looking but i know it was a lot more than that <laughs> tragic it was definitely in the double digits before great we've lost at least four we lost <laughs> we lost we lost people but the stream's working now so great Anyways, that that is good. As I was saying about series four, um, yes, banger season. It's a pretty banger season. Um, oh no, we, we, we were talking about no, fuck, we were talking about end of time. That's what I was complaining about. And I was like, no, I just I don't think it addresses the Time Lord Victorious very much. It just kind of pretends. Well, that all, I mean, I think. That, um, I think that Waters of Mars does a great job addressing Time Lord Victorious all on his own. I, I think it could have been bigger than just... It felt like an arc... To me, it felt like something that... A bigger part of the Tenth Doctor's character than just a one-episode thing. I guess you could argue that's not an, that's not a sin of the end of time, per se. That's just something I want to see out of the Tenth Doctor's arc. Well, then you also have... Um... End of time does... I mean, you have the Tenth Doctor's final moments, which are essentially him time lord victorious thing and then calming down uh where you know he, he he gets real mad he has a little temper tantrum and then he uh accepts his fate which i i've always thought is a very powerful scene <laughs> the the master eats are the specials going to change this change this from an s series though is the real question no no of course not no it still deserves to be at the top it's just um end of time I'm I'm glad to, to that now that the stream's working. Chat's back, and I, I can see stuff like the master eats burger, then becomes Sans Undertale, then he becomes Obama. So true. I'm so true. So true. You see, this is the thing. When I lower the I, bit I do want to I do want to take this. Oh, sorry. When I lower the bitrate, YouTube starts sending spamming me with warnings about how the bitrate's too low, and then when I yeah, put it up, it don't can't, worry about it can't that. It's fine. Handle the stream. <laughs> Well, YouTube just wants you to have better internet. YouTube, we, what YouTube wants is to sabotage me. That's what they want. No, I, mean, I guess I just want to take this opportunity to complain about um, the next Doctor. Mm hmm. Yes. As in the story, not Matt Smith. Um, <laughs> I thought you meant shooting which this I really, I really like. <laughs> oh, yeah, fuck that guy. Fuck I've not seen guy. him act in anything yet, but. Uh, uh, no, the. the, the uh, the story that I want, yeah, it's just um, I really like Jacks the Jackson Lake stuff in that story. I think it's really cool and neat and fun, and interesting. Good character to explore. I hate the climax. I also the really episode. like. The... Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> what you really want is you want like okay, so it's Cybermen trying to make do that have fallen like backwards in time to the Victorian era, and they're trying to do make do with the technology they can find in that era. That should be way cooler than. Hey, a giant mecha Cyberman is like walking through L Victorian London. No, you've you've taken a misstep there. It should be like you should be seeing essentially really janky ass Cyberman popping up and uh, yeah, it's just, I think Doctor and Who like you know steampunk body horror stuff. New Who has always a large portion of its episodes throughout all eras have suffered from lame ending syndrome, where they like have a really cool setup, really cool ideas good side characters and it's like they realize they ran out of time they're like okay so then there's a big robot and there's a big cgi explosion and then the bad guy falls into yeah, a pit of uh, fire and then that's the end it's like i don't know i don't know i think they wanted to, i think they wanted to be like more crowd pleasing i think they were like i didn't think 
I think it kind of shows like a lack of faith in the audience almost. Um, yeah. Where they're like tr putting a big robot on display for the kids rather than like, you could just do like a creepy story about robots trying to, well, not robots, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Cybermen trying to build more Cybermen with the resources they have available. It could be like a sort of, you know, evolution of the Daleks type thing um, where they're doing like gruesome experiments. Obviously, what you can get away with uh, on a family show, but like, you could have some pretty dark and sinister stuff in there without it being explicit. I love the part when they ran. And it out could of, be really cool when they ran out of budget. So the doctor launches the opening sequence of the show at the big robot. <laughs> that that was great. so true. <laughs> I still prefer this to the end of time, though. Fuck the end of time. All my homies hate the end of time. Nah, end of time is good. It's dude. It's just it's the doctor being mopey for two for two hours. The end of time is good, but really cringe. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. It's I don't know. It's just like uh, it's a shame of all the the serials the Doctor could have gone out in. Like I I straight up think that like like Silence in the Library would have been a better final story for the Tenth Doctor. Like basically anything else in Series Four, I think would have been a better final story for the 10th doctor another topic of silence in the library if i can just if i can just uh go on about how much i like it <laughs> it's 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 like back when stephen moffat wrote one-off episodes he was the goat he oh imagine if we were having that imagine again. if we cool? imagine if that could happen again wouldn't that be great uh, i'm i'm really hyped for this next season like everything i would have wanted everything i would have wanted is like they have oh, budget yeah. Russell T Davies writing with Stephen Moffat doing one-offs like they're giving they have a new vibe for the doctor it's it's like everything it's going to be it's going to be excellent it's, it's, it's gonna, I hope I hope if it sucks that's going to I'll cry people are going to accuse it of being woke I already know that that's in the, people have already accused it of being woke they it has a, it has they, a minority in it that it has a minority in it it has RuPaul drag race winner in it <laughs> You know, but I, I, when, when it's airing, I think there's going to be... Technically, 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 Ru RuPaul, RuPaul's Drag Race winner is a, is a minority category. That technically, yeah. Yeah, that's... Fewer people have done that than, uh, than have not done that. I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the question is, because even if the next series is good, finally... Will it could it be as good as series four? I think it could. Well, wow. not to get everyone's hopes up, but it definitely will be yes. And I think with that, I think we can put series four in safely S. in S top. Top of S tier. And like just on the top, I was going to say about Silence in the Library. I, I think that that episode has the very coolest ideas that any doctor episode has ever explored to this day like the, the the doctor meeting someone from his future that he doesn't know yet who holds a really significant role in his future and he doesn't know why it's like such an interesting dynamic between two characters and the vashonarata they're kind of similar to the weeping angels in that they also play off fear of the dark or fear of shadows like I mean, I, I think they do that way more than the Weeping Angels do. The Weeping Angels are, like, a very interesting, like... And they do play off Fear of the Dark, but they just... Mm -hmm. Not inherently. That's fear just what something that the episode does. Like, any yeah. any episode could play off of the Fear of the Dark. If you put, like, a fucking Dalek in a dark area... No, but I mean, or, like, there's a Dalek in there somewhere, you could do that, I you mean, it's built into them as a species. Well, yeah, the Weeping Angels move when you don't look at them, and Vashon Rada exist in shadows. Whereas a Dalek's just a Dalek. Well, yeah, but, I mean, like... Um, I guess what I'm saying is that, like, you know, they only do Fear of the Dark in that episode because they are in the dark, right? And, you know, yeah. the whole, like, can you see them, can you not is a thing that accentuates that, but um, it's not, like, inherent to the Weeping Angels that they play off the fear of a fear of the dark. Well, not the dark, necessarily. I mean, like, fear of what you can't see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that is what is, like, inherent to them. Yeah, that's, that's what I meant. Sorry. <laughs> All right. I got my words uh, twisted. I mean... <laughs> The silence are more similar to the angels, I think, in um, 
more so in execution than in concept because it is another one like when you can't see it thing but like i, I guess we'll get to that well i remember always thinking that the silence was kind of stephen moffat's attempt to like okay, do i have another weeping angels in me do i have another monster that everyone will love in yeah me? i think i do um and i have a i have a hot take for how he could have actually fully delivered on that but i guess we'll get to that we'll get to because we're on series five so we're getting close now yeah so, yeah, yeah. Series five, honestly i love series five I, I really like series five as well uh series five is one of my personal favorite seasons even though it's a moffat season fair enough it's the only moffat season that i feel that way about i'm even kind to the lodger well that has james corden in it so well, yeah, but it's not. It's not. It's not. That's not the character's fault. He's played by it's James, James Corden. It's James Corden before he like sold out to the USA, like back when yeah. he like was British. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> before he revoked, he was revoked British the person. British card. Uh, it's like series five. It has the my favorite first Doctor story of any first doc uh, of any Doctor, which is the eleventh hour. Oh yeah, I mean, eleventh eleventh hour is just like you could tell that like Moffat had been writing the eleventh hour in his head since he was like six. Yeah, no, it, uh, it, 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 and like just the way that the the doctor, but it also does a great job setting up Amy because the doctor meets meets Amy when she's a kid and then like accidentally ruins her whole life and then has to deal with that <laughs> while also trying to yeah. save the world. Like, oops, I accidentally made everyone think you're insane for your whole life. Sorry about that. <laughs> The Atraxia are also a really interesting thing that doesn't get explored at all, but I guess, you know, we can't have, uh, we can't I, explore everything that looks cool. I can forgive this one episode for having a kind of lame ending to, to like, or at least the villain getting defeated in a kind of lame way, because this episode truly is not about the villain. It's really, it's just about the Doctor and Amy. Like that, that's all. Oh, well, yeah. Episode. So, um,. This will start a trend of the Doctor scaring people away by telling them how cool he is. Yes, but... Which is super lame in the Moffat era, but it time, works in this one. This was the first time he did it, and it was cool then. Well, no. He, the first time he did it was in Silence in the Library. When, when did he do it in Silence in the Library? Another Moffat episode. He There's like a Vashti Narada, like spacesuit coming towards him oh right right and he's and like it, you just killed someone i like the shadow and then it pulls the shadow back in after yeah he's like well we're in the biggest library in the universe uh -huh. i'm the doctor look me up and then the shadow runs away scared but to be fair that's not how he won the day in that episode that's just, no it's not this is the first time but the, there are like um, won the day by plenty of flexing well, I mean, he'd already won the day, but, like, he just wanted to give them that, like, extra warning, right? Uh -huh. It's not, like... Oh, I guess true, but... It's not... The, 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 the story of the episode is already sort of resolved by that point. It's not... Uh, and then the Doctor told them how cool he was and the story was saved. Well, um, the, he, by telling them how cool he was, he guarantees that they'll never be a threat again. Yeah. So it's kind of part of how he protects Earth from them. But I guess he had already technically saved the day. But either way, again, just... Whether you like that or not, what the episode is really about is, you know, setting up Matt Smith as the Doctor and setting up um, Karen Gillan as the new companion. And I think it does a great job at both of those things. It's so condensed. Yeah, no, it's just it's just really well executed and it almost makes me wonder, where did this go later on <laughs> in Moffat's run? Yeah. I feel like Moffat eventually got complacent. And when I say eventually, I mean in Series 6. Yeah. <laughs> very quickly but like to me series five is it because i think you're right like he he was kind of writing series five since he was like six it's like it's like his i his, the idea of a doctor who season he'd always had in his head were like there, there's an arc throughout the series where the doctor keeps opening cracks in space and time with tardis he doesn't know that he's doing it and those cracks get to the point where they, they pose such a threat that all of the Doctor's enemies, like all the bad guys from throughout the show, all team up against him to take him down. It's like another kind yeah. of Infinity War <laughs> type thing. I, I've always thought that the way they do that was really lame. It could have been a bit cooler, um, but I do still really like the Pandorica opens and the Big Bang. Well, I mean, the thing, the thing that really has always bugged me about that episode is that you've got like... 
Um, a, a, you've got very clearly just like a fan pleasing lineup of all of these characters who are uh, basically interchangeable. They're they're delivering like you've got like you know Sontarans and Jadoon and Daleks and Cybermen all in a room, and they're all delivering like one speech, but they're like. <laughs> Each one of them is delivering like a different line of the same speech. And the fact that all of them are together doesn't really necessarily impact the story that much. If if at all, like it could, it's like we don't get like eventually, it's not like, it's not like that collaboration is blown apart by internal struggles between them or anything. It is very much just like this could have been the same story with just like one villain being like, hey, the doctor's fucking with shit. Let's uh, get rid of him. You're right. That that was um, just done to make the episode seem bigger and cooler. Like that's true. Yeah. But again, like like for um, the stolen Earth and Journey's End, sometimes since Doctor Who is at its core well, a bit of a a bit of a goofy show. <laughs> sometimes the thing about that is that, like um, I'm okay with you that. see in, in Journey's End you like see the characters and the characters are like behaving like themselves. You actually get like the benefit of having them all there. Um, you get to see more of that character, which is fun, right? You get to see characters meet each other who didn't before. Um, you know, you you get characterization for those characters, which isn't something you get in um, Pandorica Opens. You just get like the you so you just get the props and the costumes on screen, and their names get said. You know, no, you're totally right. Um, like it's not part of the story, and I, I totally agree that I think they could have done a better job, like showing, like having this. The, the having the fact that every all the doctor's enemies are all teaming up against him actually play a bigger role in the story and actually like make it harder for him to like do what he's trying I think to do because genuinely it, he literally scares them all off again by just being like I'm awesome and then they're like oh, yeah. oh shit he's awesome fuck we gotta fly away <laughs> and it's like yeah that that again that's kind of just a larger issue with the Moffat era in general. Uh, I genuinely think that the story would be better if it wasn't just a big team up of loads of like if every villain like maybe um, maybe some returning villains could be like involved but it doesn't need to be this big it, it just needs to be like some people who've noticed what's going on and, and they're trying to stop the doctor it doesn't need to be this huge thing with every recognizable face in it. And I would say I've never um, that's also only really true of Pandorica Opens because the Big Bang is a very timey-wimey episode about dealing with everything being fucked up. <laughs> yeah, um, but, I also... I, I don't like the timey-wimey stuff in Big Bang, but I need to rewatch it to remember why. Again, it can be hard for me to, to know if I'm being objective or not when I'm talking about Series 5, because that's another series that I'm nostalgic for. And I remember watching The Big Bang for the first time when I was a kid, and when Amy like was in the Pandorica instead of the Doctor... I was like, my mind was blown. I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my entire fucking life. All right, kid. That this was is like, where it gets complicated. complicated. That was like my inception. I was like, what is going on? This is so cool. What you, what you want? What, I don't know. I, I, feel, I feel like season five has got like a, a pretty good, like consistent baseline. Um, it never becomes like dog shit. I agree. Like, um, no, I, I, I it's totally. It's got some bangers in there too. I totally agree that there's that series five doesn't have the consistency of ser series four. I would, I wouldn't try. To fair, victory of the Daleks is kind of dog shit. Yeah, no, it, yeah, it has a uh, victory, <laughs> victory of the Daleks in there, um, but like, but it still, it still gets the Doctor's relationship bet with the Daleks bet better than any other Moffat Dalek story. Somehow, amazingly, <laughs> yeah, and somehow, <laughs> this is the only episode when. Did he write Victory of the Daleks or was it? I don't even remember. I think Mark Gatiss wrote it. Yeah, it was Mark. You can tell. It's a very Gatiss episode. <laughs> Look, I like Mark Gatiss and I don't want to be rude to him. I like him, but it had this has him all over it, is all, is all I'm saying. Well, um, he wrote The Unquiet Dead, which I really like. I'm kind of met on that one, if I'm being honest. Well, I, like, I, mean, yeah. I like when the like, doctor tries to explain to Charles Dickens what a fan is. <laughs> yeah, but, that's fun. But series five, I, I feel like I feel like all the character work is on point and and Unquiet Dead. All this, every it's a, it's a story that's like it doesn't stand out, but like it hits all the beats that it needs to be to 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 be the thing that it is. Well, as series as someone in chat just pointed out, series five has Vincent the Doctor and Amy's Choice 
And it those does. are two of my favorite episodes of the show, like point blank. I love those episodes. Very fair. And especially Vince and the Doctor, the ending of it, it is a pet peeve of mine to play like pop music, like sad pop music over a scene that's supposed to be sad. Like, that's just something I've seen over. That's like a something like, like Riverdale. Well, Riverdale. I mean, like when they did it in, well, not exactly the same thing, but when they pay, played pop music for that scene in Rosa. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that Rosa. Yeah, no, it, the scene when she's getting rocked off the bus. You know, that, that it's it's similar, except the scene in Vince the, in the Doctor is far more effective. But I, 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 I'm still capable of loving that scene, despite the fact that that's kind of a pet peeve of mine, because it's just so... The build-up to seeing Vincent's character and seeing just how he has no self-confidence... And, like, in the back of your head, the whole time you're watching the episode, you're kind of like, they could just tell him. They could just tell him that he's, like, such a legend and, you know, it might it might give him confidence, you know? And then they don't just tell him. They show him. And it's, it's just one of the most yeah. and it's heartwarming really... scenes ever. But then that doesn't change anything, which is almost I, – I kind of love that. It's like you can't just – Well, it's also a really good message to um... – Essentially, the friends of people who struggle with mental health. You can't um, just fix someone's mental where you health have immediately. Your, well, yeah. You can't, you can't fix someone's mental health by yourself by just being nice to them. Yeah. However, you've certainly contributed to their life by doing that. It's a really nice message to have. And it's a very valuable thing to say to people, I think. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's a really good episode. Someone chats asking me if I think Angel's two-parter is S tier. Um, I there's a lot of things I really like about it. It brought back River Song, and I think she's really good in that in that story. Um, I like. I also the... think she's really good in that story. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's really good. Long pause in that story, <laughs> and um, <laughs> and like, I... I think she's really good in her big finish range. I think she's just kind of really good, period. She's kind of good. Uh, I mean, so but, uh, there will be there will be later stories where I start to despise River Song. I know. I, I I was I was joking. I hundred percent. She gets annoying. Oh no, fair. Fuck. She gets annoying as fuck. <laughs> but no, that's just her relationship with the Doctor. That yeah, that's kind of a big part of why. But no, at this point, at yeah. this point, she was cool. She was cool in this two part. Yeah, and yeah, I, I like um. I really like the setting of the episode. Like they're in a crashed ship with artificial gravity, you know, and they're, they're kind of climbing up the ship and as the power's failing and the gravity is failing and stuff. And it's a good setting to have weeping angels, like with the lights flickering out. However, I think it's really lame that this episode shows you the weeping angels moving. Like you it lose is. a lot of this, the, uh, just, I don't know, the stigma about also, ne never um, having seen. Them. I don't know that this necessarily makes it a bad well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it has a lot of Weeping Angel rules that I don't like. I don't like mm. the... Um, the image of an angel. I don't like an how angel. hard they take that. I like it potentially if if all that that was was like, if there's an image of an angel, the angel can like see out of that image and it can like use it to probe around, you know? <laughs> it's <laughs> like if you take a photograph of an angel, it can like move in that photograph and it can see out the photograph. Kind of like... It's, it's kind of in the realm of like magic more so than science for Doctor Who, but I still don't mind it, right? Uh, and I think you could do some really cool stuff with it. That awkward moment when you remember the fact that canonically the Statue of Liberty is an angel, and that means every image oh, yeah. of the Statue of Liberty is an angel <laughs> in Doctor Who so lore. Oopsies. <laughs> We're fucked. Whenever they just decide to start moving, tourists are screwed. But um. Oh, yeah. Some... Well, that's the thing. Someone's always looking at it, so it can never move. Someone's asking me... um if I think Stephen Moffat is a good writer, and that's a really complicated question. But I'd have to say yes. <laughs> that is a really complicated I'd have question. To, I guess I'd have to say yes, because like I can't say he's not a good writer. He wrote all the best episodes of the show for the first four seasons, like, undisputably. Like, he, he's, he's, a, he's a great ideas guy. Like, he comes up with such good ideas for monsters and, and characters and episodes. His problem is when he's trying to do arcs <laughs> like when he's in charge of the show as a whole and he's trying well, to I, I do sorry i do want to add a couple more problems that i take with Stephen Moffat. right well i was gonna get to more but uh you can that was just the beginning of the problems he also has a problem with right, his sense well, of humor I mean, in my opinion but yeah what were you gonna say yeah 
So, well, his humor, right? Um, Stephen Moffat started. I don't know if you've ever seen a show called Coupling. No, I have not. That was where, like, Stephen Moffat really, like, I think it's his first major project. I could be wrong about that, but it was, um, it was a, a sitcom. It ran for like uh, four seasons, and it's got Stephen Moffat dialogue all over it. But it, because it, it, it's like placed in a sitcom setting, it works way better. But like Moffat, by the time he was writing Doctor Who and he was in charge of Doctor Who, he was very clearly used to writing sitcom dialogue, and he would inject it in places that it just really didn't work. He really likes sex uh, dialogue jokes. that was. Oh yeah, he does really <laughs> like sex jokes. That's his thing. <laughs> Um, if I if I were to ever like be the showrunner of Doctor Who, I would put a hard limit on the number of sex jokes that were included. No hanky panky the TARDIS. Who, who's the one that said that? Was that John Nathan Turner? Um, if it was, I'm not sure. That's like the one thing I like about John Nathan Turner. <laughs> that I like a lot of things about John Nathan Turner. <laughs> that's honestly John Nathan Turner is like my least favorite <laughs> contributor contributor to Doctor Who, with maybe the exception of a certain man that we'll probably talk about soon he did some very cool things i mean you know he did he, like a lot like you know a lot of the cool things that happened under five six and seven are things that we can thank him for you know they do have a lot of bangers under that it's not just like you know three shit doctors right we we do have like i think you know the three great doctors maybe not necessarily thanks to him for a lot of it but uh well, you see, my opinion of the the fifth, sixth, and seventh Doctor's eras might be extremely controversial, so I'll just keep my mouth shut. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> uh, um, anyway, anyways, despite that, I'm gonna get chat mad at me if I talk about that too much. <laughs> We're talking about something that's my opinion of mine that's far less controversial, which is series five. I like it. Yeah, I like it. B. You see, I would personally. It would be S for me, but you, I, I'm getting the sense it'd be more A for you. I, I, I think, I, I think I would put it in B. You'd put it in B. Maybe A. Okay, we can do, um, a. we can do A as a, a compromise. But I'm gonna hold. I'm it. happy. I'm for putting it, it above. I'm a. putting it above three. It's better than three. That's my so stance on that. You see, if this were just me, I think I would swap five and one, and call me crazy all you want i will call you crazy <laughs> bruh amy's choice is the most trippy wacky episode of the show ever and i love that shit and it, there's no farting aliens um, two-parter in series five so hey 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 though it does have um it does have it does have vampires of venice and the siberian I, I was avoiding those and the lodger the lodger if not for a certain actor would be, I think, actually a decent story. Well, I mean, the thing about Series yeah, 5 is I do think generally, like, this is the best that, that Doctor's characterization is in an 11th Doctor season, I think, in Series 5, but it is still showing cracks of, like, problems that Moffat would later really lean into, where you have, like, uh, in The Lodger, you no have the moment... Hey! You have the moment in The Lodger where, like, um... The doctor is like getting ready to play football, and then Amy's like, "Good, that is normal. You'll fit in." And the doctor is like, "Okay, now football is the one with the sticks, right?" And you're like, "That doesn't, yeah, no, I Steven. totally agree. No, like, I, I also <laughs> talked about that in the video when I was talking about the eleventh doctor. I think that's more of a problem in series six and seven, but it's also kind of an issue. Yeah, in but five, it, where he's it does just like so dumb. He just doesn't know anything. It's like doesn't make sense that he would not. Yeah, what? Like there's why a, did the why did Malfat make him dumb? Th th there's a scene this in Vampires of Venice when he bursts out of a cake and then says he kissed Amy and he's like, "Oh, I didn't know that would sound bad until he said it." It's like, how? How, how yeah. did you not know? <laughs> you knew. How did you? You're how fucking did with you Rory. Know that? You don't. You want to. You want to tell Rory you cucked him because you're proud of it. Okay, <laughs> we get it. <laughs> and there's a, there's a scene. Well, I guess when we get to series seven, we'll talk about that. But it, it, it's a problem that gets worse. <laughs> it doesn't get better. And speaking of series six, series six. Baz, next, next, series seven. <laughs> series six was when Doctor Who sold out to the USA, much like James Corden. They both sold out in twenty eleven yeah. <laughs> to the USA, and um, it got to it was um, to the point where I remember they would when it was airing on American and Canadian networks, they 
they had a little blurb play before the opening explaining what Doctor Who is. Like Amy narrating saying, a, a alien man crashed into my garden when I was a little girl and then took me into his time machine. We've been running away ever since. It's pretty wacky, but if you guys stay tuned, we might just save the day. And it's like... <laughs> Because the whole series eleven, the point of it was to try to gain a, an American audience, and it did kind of succeed. It did, like I think the viewership. No series eleven. Sorry, I sorry, I meant um, it came out in twenty eleven, and it has the eleventh Doctor, so eleven's in my head. Series six was trying to appeal to the U.S., and I think it worked. Series eleven is was losing viewership in the U.S. Complete opposite effect. Yeah. Despite the fact that well, series... it sort of gained them for the start, but it didn't really hold them. Yeah. Well, despite the fact that Series 6 was a big win for the show's ratings, I don't think it was a big win for the show's quality. The plot arc is garbage, <laughs> right? The overall arc is just nonsense. It do- um, so it's the worst River resolution Song... ever. Like, he just goes into his oh, yeah. robot suit of himself, and that works somehow, even though it's a fixed point in time. What? That's a- is that how fixed point um, times work? In... <laughs> Why Why do you even need River Song to be there if it's the spacesuit doing the killing? Yeah, it's, it's, what? it's, it's the problem with Moffat that would, uh, it would also get worse, I think, as he went, which was just like scope over substance. Just like trying yeah, to make well, things big like... and awesome and like over having them actually make sense or like really be like meaningful. Or, like, like, or even resemble something that makes sense. Like there's no like, there's no level on which... Because I remember, this is the point where people were like, I like Moffat, but his plot arcs are too confusing. And it's like, people didn't realize that it was They weren't confused because, like, it was just too much for them to take in, like, too much information, and they couldn't follow it all. They were confused because it, there isn't anything to follow. There isn't, like, a cohesive through line to this. Um, yeah, no, it's literally when just... When you get, like... It's literally just showing off... Like, Moffat had a bunch of... That's why I said Moffat's an ideas guy. Like, he does come up with good ideas... But when he was showrunner and when he had to write a bunch of episodes every year instead of just, like, one, he would, like, try to just spam ideas at the audience without necessarily making them, like, refining them or making them make sense. <laughs> or, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sorry, I kind of cut well, you off. Well, I, I don't know how valuable an idea even is in that context. It's like... Hey, what if the what if River killed the Doctor? Okay, I guess sure can, we could make that work. No, let's not make it work. Let's just do it. Um, <laughs> and there's like a, uh, there's a like, thing in there when I remember Rory is like listen. Amy's kidnapped at one point. Rory's like listening to a recording of her, and she's saying, "I love you so much. I know I'm supposed to love him, but I love you. You just you fell out of the sky one day and you took my heart." And it's obvious that she, it sounds like she's talking about the doctor, and then Rory's like Ugh, cucked again, and and but yeah. then she just says later Classic in the episode, she just says later on that she was talking about Rory, but it's like if you're, yeah, what like, do you mean fell out of the sky? When did Rory fall out of the sky? <laughs> and why would you be saying I it's know? It's a I'm figure su- of speech. <laughs> why would you be saying I know I'm supposed to love him, but I love you? If you're talking about Rory, you are supposed to love Rory. He's your husband. Why would you be supposed to love the doctor? It's, it's that because kind of thing. Because he's the big hero guy. No, but it's like, yeah. It's like where Moffat wants to do something in the plot. Wants um, to make... And unironically... Movie. Sorry? Well, so I was saying, unironically, the, um, the like characters hearing each other on the phone and getting the wrong idea was unironically executed way better in his sitcom. <laughs> I could see that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He says, well, the thing, the thing is with those episodes is that the whole point was to, like, set up a misunderstanding over the phone. So it's done really well, but this is one where it's like, hey, and then also there's a misunderstanding over the phone while, like, this alien invasion is happening. Um, but it doesn't work at all because it's not, like, it's... The plot isn't, like, structured around allowing this to happen. Yeah. It just does. Yeah, it's, it's like, just plot contrivances on top of plot contrivances. That's, that's kind of what Series 6 and a lot of later Moffat stuff was. He wanted to do well, I mean, something, and, you know, um, and he just did The it. River Song stuff is more than just contrived. It's just nonsense, right? Like, yeah, well, you know, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. Like, there's no way to analyze it in a way that makes sense. And uh, it's so funny that there's... An, in the, the I don't know if I can say the name of the episode on YouTube. 
<laughs> with that risking getting demonetized. But let's kill a wait, famous wait, wait, dictator. Wait. Oh right, <laughs> man. And um, it's like which honestly, it, honestly, you're 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 in you're in you're in trouble with let's kill. True. It is 2023. YouTube's probably gonna start cracking down the word "kill" sooner rather than later. But like that, ep- that's which seems like one of the most sensible words to crack down on, really. That episode is so nonsense. It just suddenly decides that Amy and Rory had a kid that was their best friend than they were when they were growing up that we never saw before, even though we've seen a lot of. Stuff oh yeah, wouldn't wouldn't it be cool if we'd heard of her? <laughs> <ever>? <laughs> wouldn't it be cool? And Moffat, you had a chance to establish her in like the first half of series six. Yeah, like you had a chance, but you didn't. They just introduce her. She's apparently a huge part of their lives, like from childhood to adulthood. And well, then so it turns they name her do- their daughter after her, which is a bootstrap paradox. I know that because it is. of series nine. But anyways, <laughs> anyways, um, sh- sh- it turns out that she's not only River Song, but she's also their child, who they grew up with. And who's also a time lord, and it doesn't make any sense that River's a time lord in the first place at all. <laughs> it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It, uh, it's like just trying to. Wrap that was your just head. for the Rory cucking. Just trying to wrap your head, and I'm not even necessarily against River Song being Amy and Rory's child. In fact, I think that's a cool twist in itself. But it's like so contrived, and they don't make it actually like really make sense, and they. And it feels like it's just there so that, like, people that record reaction videos on YouTube of Doctor Who will be like, no way! Yeah. <laughs> it, it does very much feel like that. Yeah, that's 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 really, like, an issue I have with... S- series 6 and 7, I think, so, are actually the worst in that regard, specifically. It does have some bangers, though. It has the Doctor's oh, yeah. Wife. It has... Um... I love the Doctor's Wife. That's It has... um. The girl who waited. It has uh, the God Complex, and that's sort of it. Um, I, I I do like the Impossible Astronaut and Dave the Moon on their own. They're part of a nonsense arc, but taken as oh yeah, yeah, sure. Um, and I remember when I first watched those, I thought that it was setting up a really cool story that would go somewhere good, and yeah, it seemed like it at the time. Um, yeah, the Doctor's Wife is, I think, one of. Eleven's best episodes. I I do kind of like Good Man Goes to War as well on its own, even though it's part of a nonsense arc. From um, was, um, even the bangers episodes, like even the banger episodes in this series, are held down by like uh, Eleven's characterization is weaker in this series than it was in the previous one. Moffat is falling even further into uh, sitcom dialogue in this one than he was in his previous season. Um, and like, there's still loads of sitcom dialogue littering even like his banger episodes, which do just like it doesn't fit it's not yeah. it's really forced it's like hey what if a character said something kind of unnatural and then another character um made a joke and obviously the unnatural thing was said so to lead the other character into making the joke and it's like yeah could you not do that though i'm just trying to enjoy the characters <laughs> i yeah i don't just, need like a yeah contri- a forced zinger in here contrived humor mm-hmm. and the doctor yeah. saying dude the doctor's catchphrases really also went off the deep end in this season got, got really started getting really annoying <laughs> Yeah. You can tell when Moffat has it, it it's like the same problem he has with jokes or the problem he has with story. When when Moffat wants to hit a story beat, you can tell that he's he's twisting things towards it even if they don't make sense. And when he wants to do a joke, he will set up unnatural dialogue just to make that joke happen. Even if it's not natural. It's yeah. Kind of the same issue. Well, it's also um, a problem that another big problem that Moffat has is um, I don't think he's a very good judge of what kind of things are cool in terms of like a lot of the time he wants things to seem like big, cool moments for the characters, it's like epic win moments. Am I right? The like, doctor see, has a lot of epic like, win it, moments. Yeah, it really feels like he's he's sitting there with you, the audience, nudging you, going, "Hey, hey, wasn't that an epic win?" Hashtag. Um. <laughs> yeah, no, that like, yeah. like, and you're like, no, not really. Like the moment when, like, the like at the end of the wedding verse song, which is one of the worst season finales ever. 
on Doctor Who when yeah. he reveals he somehow cheated a fixed point in time by just going into a robot suit of himself and then not dying. And apparently it's no longer a problem that it was a fixed point in time that he died there because all that mattered is that it looked to the universe like he died there because the universe is just a guy yeah. w- with, a, with popcorn just watching stuff happen. He's like, okay, well, it looks like he died there to me, so I guess we're good. And then he like he's like wearing what? a robe and he just pulls off the, the robe triumphantly. <laughs> and then the – I don't remember what his name is, but the head in the box just starts saying, Doctor Who, Doctor Who. Moffat loved doing that one, didn't he? And his face <laughs> – Think in front of the TARDIS, and it, it is, it's it's in the top five most cringe moments of, of all of Doctor Who, I think. Yeah. It, uh, what what Moffat loved thinking? doing that one over and over again too. Hmm? I, I was saying, what was he thinking <laughs> with that? What the fuck? Like, he thought it would be cool. And then the I reveal that I was gaslighting the whole audience, and it actually didn't matter if he died on the beach. And then. It, a guy says the words Doctor Who a lot, and that's the end of the season. Oh my god, they'll love me if I well, do that. Thing, I don't even... Like, why is that a fixed point? Why did the, How did that fixed point occur originally? I like, don't know. Because you'd think... The reason so, like, it's a the, fixed all point. the characters are only doing it because they know it's a fixed point. So, like... But you'd think it's a fixed point because it's the Doctor's death, and the Doctor is a really important guy, but then it turns out that it didn't actually matter if he died there. It was just a fixed point yeah, for, like, um, no reason. Well, it's like, but like, all the characters are only doing that because they know it's a fixed point and they don't want the universe to end. So it's like, why did this happen? Like, oh, I'm killing you. The universe made me for no clear reason. The universe has decided that I need to kill you now, so I will. We need an episode about... Like, that. there isn't a version of these events where it's like, this would just be the natural outcome. We're never presented with that. It's just... Yeah, yeah, we need... I hate it. We need an episode... With a where it, we find out who the guy is that just decides what's a fixed point or not, just like the <laughs> the receptionist of the universe, just like combing over the events, like this is fixed but point. Like, you could actually do like a fun thing with that. You could. It's like a Loki type story there. Yeah, with, but like, just, not that I'm actually. I I did say that as a joke. I don't actually think that that would be a good idea <laughs> for the episode. But oh no, I was. Uh... I don't know, I think you could actually do something like that. I think you could do like something really Maybe. like Douglas Adams level with that. I mean, I did. Uh, but I the did... thing is, you're playing with fire, so you want to be careful. I did like Loki, and that show was playing with fire. So I don't know. A lot of other people didn't. I don't know what was your. I didn't. You didn't. Okay. Well, I. It's, well, that's it's the thing. Like I the... watched it. Uh, I watched the first episode and was like, "This is bad," and then I turned it off. Oh, the first episode was bad. No, it, it came into its own later on. It's also like the only of those Marvel shows I I actually liked. WandaVision started good and then fell off. That's a, that's a different topic though. So let's stay on topic. Oh yeah, I enjoyed the first few episodes of WandaVision. But yeah, let's yeah let's stay on topic. <laughs> Do you want? I I want to put this in D because I don't think it's quite an F. It does. It really? does drop so many balls. I don't know. Maybe it is. I an would F. campaign for C. Do we have like an F minus. I was gonna campaign for C for series six because it still has good episodes and moments i think there it's an it's we need to remember that if we're talking about d a debate between d and f we're about to be talking about series seven which is noticeably worse than series okay, six yeah. noticeably um, worse series six does have a few bangers in it right yeah. so i guess it is only fair to, to call it a d i think it's a c all right. What, what's our compromise that we've not we've not sorted this? How is how do we compromise that? Well, you're supposed to throw me a bone from the beginning, but I'm saving that for what I know is going to be controversial later on. So I'm going to ask chat. Chat, is this C or chat. D? Tell me. There's like an annoying delay on chat because chat is going to choose C. Chat is going to choose C. The, I think the stream is like chat's going to be nice. The stream is like a minute behind for everyone else, so I have to wait for them to catch up to actually figure out what they. We should have. This is when we should have gone off topic. You know, let's go off topic now. Oh, no, someone's in C. Uh, it's happening. It's going in C. They're all saying C. I, I knew it. I knew they would say it. I did too. That's why I asked them, because I think it deserves to be in C. No! <laughs> I played you, and I saved my bone that you still owe me in the process. So, ha. Huh. I'm it's so unfair. I'm going to cry. Okay, can you just, like... I need. I really, really, really need to use the washer, and I've been holding it. But can you just like entertain everyone for like thirty seconds? Yeah, I can. I can entertain your chat. Uh, right, yeah. Let's. Uh, hey, hey, chat. How are you? How are you going? What's the? Uh, 
anyone seen like any i did a thing videos i've been really getting into that channel recently uh his, his humor's been been really seeping into mine um that that joke in the video beginning of my latest video that was that was that was definitely his influence but you're not a you know you're, this isn't my channel let's not just talk about my own videos here let's uh Someone, somebody chat. Give me something to work with here. Do you want to ask like a question or something? Doctor Who, am I right? It sure gets worse <laughs> as you go. Read the highway code. What a good idea. Oh, you're you're in for, you're in deep, aren't you? You you know you know what's up. What was my favorite Fortnite skin? I uh like. I like uh, Harley Quinn is one, right? Sure, let's go with that. Jake, you agree that Jody's Doctor is like a less interesting Mrs. Frizzle? I'm not sure that I can. I mean, I'll certainly agree that she's less interesting. Let's let's settle for that. Uh, are you doing a video for Flux? We will have to see, won't we? Okay, I'm back. Oh, hello. Chat was was Jay being entertaining, or did Jay? Oh my god, I, I thought of something to say. <laughs> What's well, too late? You missed your well, chance. I mean, if we're doing, if we were doing the series six talk, I had my, I, I hinted at it earlier, so I feel it's only fair that I should, I should let people know what I had in my mind. Oh, I guess uh, is it? Sorry. I think Moffat really missed um, missed a trick with the silence mm -hmm. by showing them on screen ever. Oh shit! I think if, oh, you're right. That if you can't cool. remember them, the yeah, like if the audience the thing with them should be that they're never shown. And then also, like th there could just be that like Moffat could just like if you wanted to troll the audience, be like, "What do you mean? I did show them. You just don't remember them." <laughs> it works on everyone, of course. Yeah. Oh, that would have been clever. You're totally right. I've never. I did that. Even uh, I have mind. a. I have a couple of edits of that episode saved somewhere. Um, where some someone made them and sent them to me. Where like they edit out every time a silent is shown, and obviously it doesn't really work because like the episode's ending is like. Honestly, I've, um, I've never even really liked the way that the silents look that much. Anyways, the coolest thing about them is their concept. So if you never saw them, and it's like no one, no one in universe knows what they look like, and you don't yeah. know what they look like as the audience, that would be cool as hell. Right? Yeah, you're totally right. That's a really good idea. You should write for Doctor Who. I will. I, I will I will now make it my life's work to get into that position. Yes, yeah, send send in a uh... I may have already burnt the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> well you burnt the bridge with Chibnall, right? Chibnall's not there anymore. So you know you might still have a shot. I don't know. I don't know if the BBC likes me. Um, true, you did kind of make a video I... called The Fall of one of their biggest shows and it has like five million views and... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Possible bridge burn, but you can just like have a you could submit it with a fake identity. Oh, I could, yeah, yeah, like Ray Sexy. That might that'll work, I might get him. I'm just trying to procrastinate talking about series seven right now because I series seven is so goddamn cringe. It's bad, <laughs> it's bad. series seven is bad. Let's move on. It's 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 not a good season. It's not. It is not. Technically, technically, the first episode of Series 7 is The Doctor, The Winter, and The Wardrobe, <laughs> which is... Uh, bad. It's, it's so bad. And it, it, how, how did the same person that wrote the Christmas Car A Christmas Carol write that one? Uh, a Christmas Carol is also bad, don't at me. Don't fucking say that. You're better than that. It's really bad. Don't say that. The dialogue is all just written to be like, hey, look, I know dialogue, the dialogue's right? a little cringe, but it's so heartwarm. Okay, actually, um, when I was a kid, I actually 100% agreed with you. I hated A Christmas Carol. And then, I, I don't know, I just, I came around on it. I just but, really... And then um, the character arcs are kind of, like, weak. They're, they're kind of thin. In... I mean, you know, conceptually, they're cool. I like what it's trying to do, but I don't think it manages it. Well, look. And then finally, 
Well, I, and finally, I don't like what it's trying to do. I like what it's trying to do with arcs, but holy shit. You can't just let it be... You can't just let a thing... You can't just let it happen that the Doctor can just go and fucking change someone by going to their past. You can't just let him think that that's a thing that's okay to do. Or then why not just solve every story like that? Oh, yeah. aliens are invading? Let's go find out where like, they live and make them nice, actually. I never said Oh, it fucking made... Davros created the Daleks? Let's go meet him as a child and hey, make him well, nice, actually. Technically, he did oh, once fucking... actually go back to when Davros was going to create the Daleks, but then he decided not to because it would have ripple effects on time, and I guess he stopped being concerned about that later, later on. Well, yeah. No, no, I totally take your point. I don't actually think it makes sense. <laughs> I like it because it's, it's charming. I like it because it's, it's charming it's, and happy. Well, okay? I don't find it charming. I find it You cringe. have no heart, then. No soul. Fine. I'll take it. <laughs> no, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It, it, the whole thing's a paradox, because if he changes the past, then there's, there's no incentive for him to go back and change the past in the first place. Do Doctor used to care about paradoxes. Stopped caring about paradoxes during... The Moffat era, if I'm being honest. Also, there's the whole thing where um, the the central like the, the thing that is the 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 source of uh, I don't remember his name, but like the guy, the grumpy guy, <laughs> like um, Dumbledore. Dumbledore, yeah, Dumbledore. Dumble Dumbledore is upset because his like girlfriend is dying of an uncurable illness, and she's like sh that's why she has to freeze herself. Because that's how that works, I guess. I'll, I'll accept it. And the doctor, being the doctor, could very, very easily get her the treatment she needs to get over that illness, but decides not to. And it's like, does oh, that, yeah. does that make, I even thought of that. Does that make plot sense? No. Well, the fact that he's willing to, he's willing to do this thing, but not the other thing, which is arguably much worse. Well, the th yeah, the okay. thing is, the, the, the argument you could make is, you know, it's, it, it's not the doctor's place to start interfering with who lives and who dies. You know, like Father's Day is all about that. He can't just go in the future and bring back futuristic, futuristic, futuristic tech. I can't talk to a time that doesn't have it. You know, that that could have, you know, ripple effects and create paradoxes. But the fact that he is already creating a paradox by f fucking with Dumbledore's yeah. past. Okay, I I take your point that it doesn't make very much sense. But I also don't like the, how the characters are written in it. There's nothing in it that I like. All right, well. I I don't necessarily dislike the characters in it, if I'm being honest. Like, How dare you? <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, let's... Uh, let's uh, you're not forgiven. Let's move on. <laughs> okay, well, you're the one that doesn't like let's Christmas move Carol, so... You're the one that's true. True. You're the I one will not be forgiven get... by like <laughs> yeah, most of the viewers. Yeah. For that. <laughs> Even though my chat agrees with you, apparently I can't take Ooh, one W. Oh, that's interesting. Today. I can't take one W. I'm sure you've taken many Ws today, like uh, when you fixed your microphone by replacing it with someone else's microphone. Yeah, that was kind of my roommate's W in some ways by just having a microphone. Well, I guess it's also it's a shared W. Yeah. 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 Anything, anything, I, I've, I'm just trying to pivot away from talking about Series 7 so hard, because fuck, man, this is... Let's talk about Series 7. Why is it so cringe, though? <laughs> what happened? It's, good. it's just a little bit too tight. <laughs> and both halves of it are cringe in different ways. It's, it's like, amazing. Yeah, the first I mean... half is, like, that's the, that is two episodes written by Chibnall that are both really bad and don't make sense and are they have really bad forced attempts at humor the whole way through he makes jokes about balls at various points if i remember Stephen moffat also likes to make jokes about balls they, they yeah they they're really the dream team when it comes to that and the second half of the series is cringe in more sort of a plot sense <laughs> in that every the, the whole impossible girl arc doesn't really make much sense in hindsight and is cringe but it's also cringe in terms of the way the characters are written. Yeah, I was going to get to that. The The character interactions are cringe. The oh, the whole yeah. overarching plot of Series 7B in general with the great intelligence is nonsensical. And the, the name of the Doctor... Yeah, I forget, I forget that they even bring back the great intelligence for that arc. It's like such a nothing burger. Yeah, and the name of the Doctor... This this okay it drives me insane that everyone likes this episode. It has like a nine point three out of ten on IMDb, and I'm like, this episode is really bad. 
Why does everyone like it? It doesn't make any sense. It's very much... <laughs> yeah, it's it's not... <sighs> It's it's a nothing. I don't, episode. I don't remember like it's literally just. Like, and they also the the whole like um, subverted timeline where the Doctor dies on Translore. That's never ex clearly explained never to the explained audience. Explained and, that, and why how that works? Why wasn't it a fixed point in time when he died on Translore? But it's a fixed point in time when he died on Lake Silencio. I don't. Or was because, it because because? And also, I just I love the because, way that Moffat reused the idea of having. A, a series arc where the doctor knows he's going to die somewhere and is trying to avoid going there twice in a row. Well, yeah, but let's fa thankfully you don't won't do it again in another series. <laughs> it's like, it's, oh, wait. It's, in series six, the doctor's like, I, I, al I've always known I'm going to die on Lake Silencio. It's, it's terrible. I've, I've been trying to run away from Lake Silencio for so long, but it's finally time for me to face my fears and go there. And he goes there thinking he's going to die. He only he only realizes that he has plot armor partway through uh, Wedding River <laughs> Song. And then in Series 7, yeah. it's like, I've always known I was going to die on Trenzalore ever since. And then you see that the 10th Doctor in the 15th anniversary knows about Trenzalore. So he's known about that for a long time. He's like, I always knew I was going to die on Trenzalore. And it's like, if you always knew you were going to die on Trenzalore, then why were you ever worried about Lake Silencio? <laughs> I don't, I don't get it. But I'm sure now he always he, he's always known that he was going to die in some other place. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Ever since I was a boy, I knew that I was going to die in Florida. So, like, what's your opinion, by the way, of Nightmare and Silver? Because that's an episode people have mixed feelings on i think they i think they probably gutted what was probably a pretty good script from neil gaiman no it was apparently originally it was supposed to be a two-parter well yeah you can tell you can tell it's so it's so crammed and it's like neil gaiman hasn't come back to write since then because i think he's mad <laughs> that they ruined his episode it's just like a, it's such a crime that you do that to neil gaiman you bring neil gaiman on the guy who wrote The Doctor's Wife, and just a generally very well-respected writer within science fiction in general, and, like, not let him do a two, the two-part he wants to do and then, like, mess with his episode like that? Like, man, like Yeah, it's a bit cringe. I, I bet it would have been really good if they just let him do it how he wanted to. But at least that episode gave us evil 11th Doctor. <laughs> Yelling, they here. That's an iconic Eleventh Doctor moment. I also enjoy cringe. I all yeah, cringe is great. <laughs> and if you enjoy cringe, then this is an S tier season. It it is. That's true. And the 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 like Marvel sense of humor that Stephen Moffat really was leaning into is like pe all throughout the series, like. Like when they're in Asylum of, of the Daleks, when they're like, how many Daleks are down there? And then Amy's like, uh, like what uh, color? What no, 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 no. I was getting to that. Amy's like, what what type no, of Daleks I don't, are there? I don't, I don't remember. And then I guess to Rory's like, what color? And then they all just awkwardly look at him and he's like, there were no good questions left. And it's like. Uh, he's not <laughs> taking the threat seriously at all. He's not taking the threat seriously, LMAO. At that point, as like as also also, if none of them had looked at him like that, would he have just not explained it? Would he? <laughs> I don't was know. he making a joke on purpose, or was that? <laughs> that that's what I'm talking about. This sense of that. humor, where it's like they're so desperate to make a joke that a character says something, it doesn't make any sense for them to make in that scenario, just because it's la funny. That's like yeah, that's uh, one scene step... where the, the uh, it's a scene where they're fucking like they're in the most like dangerous place they could be, and they're all just like, ha ha, funny, <laughs> right? <laughs> Let's all joke around and stuff. This show doesn't have emotional sex with the characters anymore. <laughs> like a joke like that and the kind of stuff that's peppered throughout the season is like one step away from like when a person is just talking about an e an evil villain that they hate. They're like, I sure hate this evil villain. And then it just cuts to the person they're talking to doing a hashtag awkward face. And then the person who was talking is just like, they're right behind me, aren't they? And then, yeah. And then it's the, and then they're right behind them. It's the, the, like that, like MCU humor. Like I hate that shit. It's 
I swear, in the 2010s, it just became so oversaturated in entertainment, and I fucking hate it. We're meta. <laughs> we're, we have a little well, bit of... It's like, it's like we're... Sense of humor. We're like, we're, our characters aren't taking the serious situation seriously. Isn't that wacky? They're quirky, and they're quippy, and they got an attitude. They do. <sighs> yeah, but that, that that's a larger pet peeve of mine but just about this this i think that that's they're, they're letting up on that a little bit more recently it's really bad like in like the the mid to late 2010s not that it's gone it's it's not gone at all well it's sort of gone from doctor who and the chibnall era the humor is bad but it's not that kind that of is humor. true it's just it's just bad well actually even chibnall has a few of those sort of like quote-unquote self-aware jokes like i remember like there's there's a moment in flux when a bunch of the doctor's explaining something really fast and there's just, I don't remember who it is, but like some woman who's from like the past is just there kind of along for the ride. And then it just cuts to her smiling. And she's like, I don't know what's happening. And it's like, just, yeah. Yeah. It's there a little bit, but it's, we definitely got a breather from it. <laughs> it wasn't, that's one thing that improved when Chris Chibnall became showrunner. I mean, sure, sure. I mean, the humor didn't improve, but that so specific not over the type humor of humor did, did go away. It just meant that we got a break from that annoyingness. Is the like the one thing? I mean, I we got a, we got a break from a lot of Stephen Moffat isms, right? I mean, we did. Yeah. We didn't get the hey, look how cool this thing is much anymore. We didn't get the sitcom dialogue either. We just got a different kind of shit dialogue. Yeah. I never thought anyone would make me miss Moffat. But Chibnall managed. Yeah, no, I don't either. Um, yeah, this. I think this is okay. Just going through all the episodes, there's like literally like, there's no great episodes in series seven. There's not one episode that. No. Like, the Angels Take Manhattan is kind. It's bad. I was gonna say that like it, people love that one, and it has th scenes and moments that I like a lot. But God, it just doesn't make any sense again. Like it doesn't. Like so, why? Hey, why? Let's make the fucking Statue of Liberty an angel, and let's make it so that Amy and Rory quote unquote die by because the TARDIS you, can't you, go specifically to New York in a specific the, year. And apparently, the Doctor can't just park outside of New York and then just walk in and get them and then walk out. <laughs> like well, yeah. Doctor, you know, you know, you don't have to park the TARDIS directly in the city that you're going to, right? It's like, oh my god, I can never see them again because the TARDIS can't fly to New York at this point in time. Well, what if you just pick them up, like, next year? Yeah, we pick them up next year. <laughs> or, again, there doesn't have to be any span of time. Just, like, go to, like, New Jersey <laughs> and then just take a boat yeah, to just... New York. Oh, well, that's why he doesn't want to do it. Oh, oh, yeah, fair. Yeah, it doesn't want to run to Tony Soprano. Don't blame him. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, this is not a good season. There's not... There's, n like... <laughs> Is this an F or uh, is this Grimm's a D? Horror sucks. I think this is an F. Uh, no, but the thing is, are we really going to put this in the same tier with certain series to come? I think it's it still has a bit of a leg up. I think it's like when you're this bad, it's like I don't know. It's like I, I don't, I don't. I would be very unhappy if Doctor Who was always this bad anyway. Like it's not like. I agree. I, I guess it could be worse. We could still add like an F plus and an F minus if you want. I think five tiers is enough. I, I think we should put this in D because as cringe as it is, it isn't series 12. <laughs> it's, that's true. Keep that in perspective. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah. I think I'll throw this in D. I guess if we are, if we're, if we're, if we're talking like normally, I would always give this like an F. Mm -hmm. But if we're scaling this so we're that like we it. can differentiate between all of the different things, if we're, yeah. If we're scaling this on a scale of of uh, on yeah, a scale of flux I, to series one, yeah, that's how I do tier lists. Yeah, what it's yeah, what then, is funny about D. Doctor Who is that you know, if you could t the, you could rank the seasons just by the chronological year they came out, and it would be an acceptable tier list. Like every season is worse mm. than the last. I'm not saying that's necessarily my opinion, but I would it's it would it would be a passable tier list. <laughs> Just have series one on top and yeah, Flux I think I think closed. series ten is the only one that people will be like, "What?" Series ten is a point of contention, and I'm not going to say anything about my opinion on that till we get there. 
So fair enough. Series eight. Better than series seven. <laughs> yeah, it's not perfect. Better than series seven, but... Not perfect. The dog's characterization is probably the weirdest in this that's ever been in a Moffat season. I, um, I liked the ideas. I liked the idea of going back to a darker doctor. I liked the idea of him having a conflict about wondering if he's a, a good man or not. I didn't love how it was executed necessarily. But the thing is, and this is a controversial take, but I prefer Series 8 Capaldi to Series 9 and 10 Capaldi. That is a controversial take because it's incorrect. It's correct. You I don't. don't you're wrong. No, no, I'm right. And the reason I'm right is because Peter Capaldi just works so much better in this kind of role. In series nine and ten, it felt like they just like it, kind of Moffat. There was there series eight was received negatively when it came out, especially the twelfth Doctor, and it felt like Moffat folded to criticism and made the Doctor more similar to what he'd been like when he was the eleventh Doctor again. Not necessarily the the exact same, but like sort of like retreaded on some of the ideas but it also I found feels more... like this is it feels like this was always supposed to be the arc anyway though right but it it always... it's not really I mean, there was arc. a very yeah there was a very like abrupt change it's an abrupt change between series eight and nine and that's the if you like i would be so down with this if it was an arc and people say this is an arc all the time i like on on online forums like 12th doctor is such a great arc look at how he's in series eight and then look how he's in series 10 but it's like it's not an arc if you just change them off screen in between two seasons like I would have found it really cool to see the, the the doctor like work through his issues and the like the 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 sort of paranoia plaguing him about not being a good man. If we saw him work through that and sort of open up to people around him over time, I thought that would have been really cool. But it's just like we basically get two versions of him. And I, I if I'm being honest, I think the series nine and ten Capaldi is not playing to Capaldi's strengths as an actor. Like I, I don't think Capaldi was born. I, I think he does it brilliantly. I'm not. I love Capaldi as a casting for for the Doctor, and I like. He, there are aspects of it he can pull off well, like the, the cool grandpa kind of vibe. Like, but, and and being a professor in Series Ten, that was a stroke of genius. That that was great. But like, even so, like s some of the thi like. <laughs> Like when, some of the uh, Matt Smithisms, you mean? So like the Matt he's Smithisms, and, the Matt Smithisms when he's like awk, when he's hashtag awkward. But those were there in series eight, but they're not n nearly to the same degree, and it's kind of framed differently. In that like when he's when he in series eight, he's consistently like not a sociable guy, like he just doesn't like people, like it's by choice. Whereas in series nine and ten, it feels like he just doesn't get them again. It, but in a different way. Yeah, like he, well, the thing like, is, like, in, yeah, like he, he, like the eleventh daughter, he just doesn't understand humans. Again, in series eight, he just didn't like them. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was sort of done in series eight. Um, I'm not sure why he was so done in series eight, but he just sort of was. Well, I, I guess you could just chalk that up to change in brain chemistry. But like, I'm not sure why he stopped being done in series nine, because <laughs> he just kind of stopped. He was like, I'm done with being done. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Uh, Look, I have a lot of controversial takes about series nine and ten <laughs> in general. So, but like, no, I, I mean, there's things that he did well and that complement his um, the, the the later um, Capaldi. But I think Capaldi is an actor that r does a, a sort of dickish brooding character really well. <laughs> like when he was uh when he was Malcolm Tucker. Well, he's got such like, like a great range, though. He's great thing. range. I just, I just, I never felt like the the sort of more jovial, happy sort of j jokester twelfth Doctor was as I never felt that he was he shone in that role to the same extent. And I also just felt like we'd seen that a lot from other incarnations. And what was unique about the twelfth Doctor is kind of being left by the wayside. That's kind of how I felt. Not that I dislike. I would never say that I don't like the Twelfth Doctor at any point. I would never say that he he's even close to being bad at any point. He's he's a great Doctor. He's top five for me. But, like, he could have been top one or two. I don't know if he'd dethrone Eccleston for me because it's Eccleston Master Race, but, you know. So, I mean, let's if we look at the episodes, though, in Series 8, right? They're not necessarily... It's not necessarily the best run of episodes. No. 
Uh, it, it does have Flatline got, uh, and Mummy on the Orient Express, though, which are both great. Yeah. But oh, that's listen, sort listen, of it, it, isn't it has it? a listen too, right? I love that episode. Don't say it's a nothing. Listen burger. is. Don't say it's a nothing burger. I'll kill you. That's not. That's not. Those aren't the words I was going to use. Okay. Um. It's more so just. I don't know. I. Well, I like it. I I think it, I just think it could be better executed to doing the thing that it's trying to do. Well, the thing is, it's not even a perfect. There's no perfect episodes. In this um in this series, ch- chat is saying they don't like listen either. All the edgy takes, all your edgy takes are going over well. So, because listen is a pretty well liked episode, all things considered. I mean, I, I guess... feel like it was when it came out, but people have turned on it in the in the interim. Fair. I mean, look... I'm one of those people. <laughs> It, it does again tr- try to go very big in ways that maybe didn't have to, like going back to the doctor being a kid on Gallifrey and then Clara being, oh, yeah, that's being the monster like under his it. bed. When I watched that one as a kid, I thought it was really clever. Is it maybe, does it have a bit of an air of cringe to it? Maybe. Okay, fine. But over, But at the same time, I just, I find this episode. I find it interesting to see the doctor's own, the doctor psyching himself out, like almost for a whole episode. Like, like the doctor's always been the smartest person in the room. He's always known more than everyone else. So what? If, what if he got himself wound up over something that's not even a problem? I, I like. I yeah, do find it, that it makes it makes sense for him. Like, if you're ever going to do this uh, story, it makes sense to do it for this doctor at this time in his life. Yeah, I, I think Capaldi did a great job in this episode. Um, someone in chat just pointed out that it this is another example of Clara <laughs> being the most important in the person in the doctor's life, and that she's apparently the reason that he went to the academy. And but that's that's an issue with Clara that was worse in series seven, <laughs> in that she was the one that told him to steal the TARDIS, and she was the one that saved him at every single point yeah. in his life that he was ever in danger. Well, no, the thing about that is that um, I'm more okay with it in terms of like. There's got to be an original version of those events where Clara wasn't there, and then the Great Intelligence went and messed it up deliberately, and then Clara had to go and undo the messing up of it that the Great Intelligence did. Yeah. But even so... Which conceptually I am fine with. But I don't like how that's executed (laughs) at all. And this this oh, is yeah, an example yeah, of just. I mean, I would like it more if it was like the if it was like loads of Doctor Who stories where Clara is just like sort of battling the great intelligence in the background and the great intelligence isn't like it doesn't even ever like get to the doctor because clara is holding yeah what would have been cool is if we got yeah like what if we actually got scenes that were set in past episodes and the episode was kind of yeah like going like going on the background like you said and you you saw them interact with like this like the side characters and like setting of that episode like if most of uh name of the doctor was set in past episodes with just like interacting that'd be really with those fun words. that would be cool it'd well. also be a really cool way to do like the 50th anniversary but they didn't do that yeah that, that well that's literally like what endgame is <laughs> just like going back oh to and that's another Marvel thing moves. day of the doctor is bad i don't love day of the doctor either so i guess that's kind of an edgy take we both have however All right. i'm controversial let's move on <laughs> but i was gonna say whilst i don't love it i also don't dislike it I, i'm pretty lukewarm on it i i like things about it for me, um, I can sum up like my like, and there's like more complaints I have about it, but like I enjoy it. The fundamental issue that I take with that story can be summed up in a scene where the eleventh Doctor and the tenth Doctor are like with the War Doctor about to use the moment to end the war, and they give like this whole like they talk about it, they talk it through, um, and they give like this speech about you know you don't have to do it alone, and what we do now we do. Um, because there is no other way, mm. and it's a great, it's a great scene. It all really works. And then Clara starts crying, and it's still good at this point. Like there's still, this is still good dialogue. You have Clara saying, "I always knew that you destroyed your own people, but I never actually pictured you doing it," mm-hmm. which I really like as a line, yeah. uh, especially from Clara, who knows about all these other doctors. I know where you're going, by the way, but I won't. Um, <laughs> disrupt and then they just and then that scene turns out that scene was the bait and switch yeah that scene actually no uh that 
That should have been the conclusion. But yeah, no, it was it actually should've... the opposite of that is the conclusion. Yeah, no, I, I, I haven't talked about this before because I didn't want to get murdered, but I hate the fact <laughs> that the doctor fix, saves Gallifrey in that episode. He should, I hate it. I hate it. Gallifrey being destroyed well, was so such a good idea on Russell T. Davies' part to have the Time Lords gone. Doctor left his kind. It works on two fronts because it works in the, for the Doctor's characterization because he's all like, you know, sad <laughs> that he killed his own people. It gives him an, a sort of tortured backstory, and you know, especially with the ninth. We all love Doctor, those. That, yeah, we all love those. The, the brooding, sort of sad guy. But it was actually well done and added a lot to his characterization. And it also worked on the front that like it removed the Time Lords from being like annoying roadblocks for the Doctor within the stories, like. And that the Time Lords would, like, get mad when he interfered with stuff too much, like, and just, like, put him on trial or, like, force him to regenerate or whatever the fuck. With them out of the way, like, he became the authority. And that that worked. And the one good thing Moffat did in the 50th anniversary after having him save Gallifrey was having it be lost. So Gallifrey still wasn't in the picture. And oh boy, do I have a lot to say about how he reintegrated Gallifrey into the story in Hellbent. <laughs> That's a yes. mouthful. And then let's never come back to Gallifrey again like, until we destroy it off screen. <laughs> we'll, um, yeah, well, that's that, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. For the 50th anniversary, well, I guess we already ranked Series 7, so we shouldn't even well, talk about this either. It's not it that also great, makes, um, but I still find it It fun. also makes the... Um, Gallifrey, like the, the, sorry, the time war really tiny. The the solution doesn't the solution the alternate solution is like it's not that there isn't there was no other way. It's that there was actually a very easy another way that we just didn't think of it. it. I didn't I didn't notice. Oh, actually, there was a solution. I missed this whole time. It was fine. <laughs> the point was um, that there was no solution. and that solution shouldn't have even worked. I know because it made the problem so tiny. It's like the the time war was this like uh, universe spanning conflict that threatened to consume all of reality no actually it was just really just one Gallifrey battle. was being bombed by battle. some daleks and every single um, dalek you... in existence was around the planet so that when the planet disappeared they all shot each other and they all died yeah <laughs> that's satisfying <laughs> yeah that like the ideas of the time war based on the, the descriptions was that like it, it it was a time war, not a not just a like a, a series of battles like, escalating to like some like big conclusion like like wars on Earth, but a war that took place across all of time to the point where it spanned from the beginning of time to the end of time. Like time time was being rewritten, so that the time lords and dogs could fight each other. Like my the idea I had in my head was they were trying to undo each other's existence, like. The yeah, way that the way the time lords do it in the um the way the, time, the box house. Yeah, the way the time lords sent the doctor to like kill the Daleks at their inception, Genesis of the Daleks. Like my idea was that like they'd send someone else to do that, right? And then that time lord would do it, but then the Daleks would somehow before that happened, like catch wind of that and then go back further to try to kill the time lords. And then it, it would just be the, it would be a time war. Like they'd be trying to paradox each other out of existence, and it would be like no conflict that you'd ever seen. And also as someone chat just pointed out beyond just that there were supposed to be things that were created for the sake of that war that were like beyond description in terms of their their horrors like the nightmare child the, um, the could have been king the uh, the the could have been king and the army of never was and meanwhile yeah, what a like, cool name what was that like when we saw the 50th anniversary it was literally just like sad people shooting lasers at daleks and then getting blown up and be like oh no I'm blown up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what a lame way to depict the time war. Yeah. But it, anyway, we we we've already roasted series seven enough. <laughs> yeah. Um. I mean, I'm kind of tempted to move it down to F, but you know, I guess if we are going to be proportional. Okay. You know what? If you want, I can add a new tier. Do you want that? Do you want F minus? I would like a new tier. Okay, we'll do it. I, I, I wait. Happy. Maybe we can have D minus. Or maybe we can maybe we can have like I kinda F like, and super F. I kind of like F minus. Personally, I'm happy with it in D, but you you let me put series six where I did, so I'll I'll, I'll allow this. All right, all right, let's let's do it. Then. Okay. But yeah, um, Capaldi, Capaldi time. Yeah, Cap series eight for me is an improvement from series seven because it just like tones down that cringe <laughs> a little bit. 
I'll make um, it, hold on, let me make F F plus. Differentiation. I want to put it in. It has it has like three good episodes again. Where did we put series six? Because I think it's basically another series six. Although the plot arc is better than series six, so maybe one above series six. Yeah, I would. Th that would be with series two. Does that feel right to put series eight with series two? No, no, yeah. it's not. I'm putting. Uh, I'll put this. In okay, C. so with C. series six then. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay, and C and now. Actually, wait. Before we get into that, I just want to talk about the ending of series eight. Which is one of – this became a, a weirdly consistent thing with Moffat starting in, um, like in series six where like the, the part one or the, the lead up to the series finale would be really good. Like in this case, Dark Water. I really like Dark Water. Great part one. And then yeah, the, really the like actual Water. last episode would be trash. Big, <laughs> Death big, in big. Heaven sucks. <laughs> It's so lame. Yeah. Like so again, such cool themes being explored, like the the doctor trying to search for an afterlife. You know? Like and like I think it could have worked if um instead of ha having what spurs him on being Danny Pink dying and then Clara threatening him. If he um you know, he just being that this is the time period when he's kind of having a midlife crisis and he's like exploring concepts that have been plaguing him for a long time, like in Listen, when he's like, what if there was a creature that was evolved to be undetected? What if he was like, you know what? I just want to know what happens when we die. I'm going to go find that shit. Yeah. But even so, that that is still basically the concept of the episode, trying to, to find what happens when after you die. And it starts out really intriguing. Um, Missy seems like an interesting villain uh, in how they set her up. Um, I, I do like... Danny Pink dying because there's nothing interesting about him as a character, so being dead is the most interesting thing he does. <laughs> and um, yeah, just like and the reveal, the slow reveal that it Cybermen are behind this, I think is really well done. The way it's unsaid, it's just subtly hinted by the doors, like looking the same as Cybermen eyes, and just the the fact that this is a whole scheme that involves dead people in general, which is like the Cybermen obviously convert people in, into um, into Cybermen so they could use dead people theoretically. Like, again, a lot of good ideas, but my God, it just does not pan out. It just does not pan out at all. Yeah, and, and, and the point where they have, like, Cyberman reign that turns, like, you know, a thousand-year-old skeletons into Cybermen. It's like, you're pushing this, guys. <laughs> what is useful in that old skeleton? Like, what what is it? What part of that skeleton is helping you to create a Cyberman? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but it's... And the doctor's resolution to his his like worry that he's not a good man is just I'm actually just an idiot. That's it. That's I absolve I myself of all responsibility. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's really I think series nine is an even more extreme example of a great part one and a terrible part two. Possibly one of the most extreme examples that I've yep. ever seen in anything ever. <laughs> And uh, yeah, quite we can, possibly we can get to that now. Uh, actually, and you're obviously nine. referring to before the flood. But yeah, and uh, yeah, and under the lake and before the flood. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So, no, series nine <clears throat> was my breaking point when I was a kid. Funny that it was this and not series seven or eight because those are more controversial seasons, especially series seven now. Series eight. But when I do it think came out, series nine is worse. I think so too. Thank God you agree with me on that. Fuck, because it's it's gained this love by the fan base. Series, people go on about how good series nine is, and when I when I was I I was like um I was a kid, but uh, well more like a teenager when this came out, and I had been a defender of series eight. I'd seen its problems, but like. I remember defending it to my friends and being like, no, 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 he, he's doing something cool with the 12th Doctor. Just wait, just wait. Like, it, it's an arc. Just wait. <laughs> and, like, I know that some of the episodes seem a little lame, but it's, like, there, there's there's interesting characterization there, and I like the themes. I like it's a little darker than it was in Series 7, you know? Well, it, it just, just just watch Series 9, and then Series 9 came out. And I, I remember this specifically. Whoopsie. I was watching um, um the... The Magician's Apprentice, I think is the... Yeah, The Magician's Apprentice. Are you about to say talk about the moment where he comes out in the tank? Uh, no, it was earlier than that. I was watching it, and Missy 
was sending a video chat to like unit headquarters and there then like dubstep music started playing and she was like you guys might find that things are a little different from usual and then she like pops her head out of the computer yeah <laughs> in the like the worst special effects. is this more or less cringe than the master got under um under under rtd and, um that's a good question end of time is levels of cringe previously thought impossible i, I did humanity. do a, a long twitter post ranking all of the masters from most cringe to least cringe well, personally, I prefer Missy um, to the Russell T. Davies master overall. But in this, in, in Series 9, she's just so goddamn cringe. Yeah. She sucks in, in, in Series I, 9. I like her more in Series 10. I like her in Series 8 and Series 10 and not in Series 9. That's very fair. Yeah, like... And like, I don't know. It's I think it, what's a shame about series nine is I think it was a great idea for a season to have only two parters, with the exception of the one terrible found footage episode that everyone pretends doesn't exist, and I don't blame them. Like just like, yeah, just only two parters, kind of like the classic series. So like you get you you get to to venture deeper into e- each story. Like it was a good idea, but like the stories just sucked. <laughs> And, the, and I don't like the, I don't like the way that Moffat does two parters though. Is the thing is that true, a yeah. huge trend in Moffat two parters? They're it's totally just different. That the, that's the first part is good. Yeah, part <laughs> one sets up. Part one is like here's an adventure, and part two is like another adventure that loosely relates to the previous adventure. Like yeah, no, I totally agree. Like um, he doesn't really Moffat's like never made a real two part in his life except the Silence in the Library one from just off the top of my head i can't think of any other real two oh oh the end of series 10 is a real two-parter too kind of actually both of them are still pretty different they're still both pretty different when i think about it but i'll count it yeah (sighs) Yeah. mobile doesn't like making two-parters he likes making things that's why when neil gaiman came to him it was like can i make a two-parter about cyberman he was like shut the fuck up you get one episode bitch (laughs) Yeah. And one ruined episode. Well, the first thing he asked was, um, well, are the two parts wildly different from each other? And Neil Gaiman then said no, which was a mistake. <laughs> no, they're, they're all, you know, they're, it's way... really just one story spread over two episodes. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's you know, it's a the story itself is an hour and 30 minutes long. There's like a cliffhanger in the middle where things get quite intense. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, Neil. I don't think you get it. The way it's supposed to work is that part one is really good, and then part two is like some <laughs> random episode where they're dicking around, and then they like resolve the problem of part one in the background. That's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Neil. Okay. I don't know if you you're new to this or like. No, it's like I I remember um the first when I was a kid I was like a Doctor Who fanatic. I would never have imagined that I would quit on a new episode before it was even done. But I remember after hating the magician's apprentice and the witch's familiar, cause they're both so goddamn cringe. Like the cringe was back in full effect from like series seven, like the terrible sense of humor, like Missy's was so annoying like, with all her quips. And the plane stopping was just so like overdone. Like it's just like, it's just like a, Hey, here's something big and quirky. That's qu- crazy. Isn't it? Anyway, now the actual story, you mentioned the doctor riding in on a tank. Which was really jarring to watch live because we'd never seen the 12th Doctor act like that before. That was like the first time we ever saw it. Riding in on a tank and just be like, you guys like my tank? I bought it for my fish. And then it cuts to all the Vi- the Vikings looking all awkward. And it's like, that joke will be really yeah. funny in the future. It's like Again, the, the Marvel sense of humor. It, like Season 8 kind of gave us a bre- breather from it. And then it was back in Series 9 and like worse than ever. Like we, we had to, we had to deal with both the doctor and Missy making annoying quips <laughs> the whole time, and then in under the lake and before the flood, which like is an improvement. I, I don't know. It's still like there's still like that this this like layer of cringe on top of it all. Like I hate that before the flood starts with the doctor breaking the fourth wall and just explaining a bootstrap paradox to the audience. Let's it's that's it's just lampshading. It is just lampshading. It's like lampshading done in a cool and interesting way, I guess. That's this fun scene to watch. But like the the episode 
the thing about that is that the episode isn't actually about the idea of exploring like a the bootstrap, bootstrap paradox. paradox. No, and it could have been, but it's not. It sets up this cool idea of the bootstrap paradox, and you're like, oh, okay, is that what we're exploring? No, no but there is one boot- in the episode, and we want you to forgive paradox. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, the, the writer was like, oh, wait, the way that I resolved this episode involves uh, a classic time travel paradox. Well, instead of instead of fixing that, what I'll do is I'll just have the doctor set up the paradox at the beginning, and then it, people will think it's a theme. Oh, I'm clever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I honestly, I honestly suspect that's how it was written. Is that the bootstrap paradox came in first, and then that scene was added in. <laughs> I a hundred percent, I a hundred percent think that that's right. People in chat are asking what lampshading means. By the way, lampshading is when you, as a writer, have done something that you know is bad, but then you acknowledge it rather than fixing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that's a hundred percent. Basically, yeah. I, I, I still think to this day, and no one else says this. I think that the girl who died and the woman who lived is one of the worst things I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> it's certainly not good. It's so bad. <laughs> it's so f- <laughs> it's so bad. May- why did you bring Maisie Williams in? Why did she even die in the first like she she was wearing a helmet and then they take the helmet off her and she's just dead and they're like she died of death. And the doctor's like don't worry. Well- I actually have a ch- chip with me that makes you invincible, and it's definitely not a bad idea for me to give this to her and make her fucking invincible yeah. randomly. I'll just do it, and he makes her invincible. Yeah, that's the, yeah. <laughs> Without why cons- not? Let's just do it. Like, what? Ha- like, is this the same guy from like Father's Day who's like, no, Rose, we can't save someone who's supposed to be dead. That'll like mess with the flow of time. Now the doctor's like, I'm just gonna make her invincible. Like, Raffle, LMAO. Yeah, Maisie like, Williams. fuck it, why not, you know? <laughs> and the woman who lived got to a point when it started playing cartoon sound effects over stuff. There's like there's a scene where it's, it's Maisie Williams' backstory, and she's jumping out a window, and it plays whoosh sounds. <laughs> and she shoots a yeah. bow, and it plays like a boing sound, and I think I turned it off at that point <laughs> when I was a kid. I was like, I'm out. I'm fucking, I'm done. I did See, I never turned an episode off halfway through until uh, Resolution. It took you that long. That was the first episode I turned off halfway. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> I see the thing is I really want to like Doctor Who episodes whenever I watch them. So I'll be like extremely forgiving until I reach a point and like resolution snapped me now. Now I go into a Doctor Who episode being like critical. What I love is that Resolution is the, an episode that people constantly say is one of the best of Chibnall's era. I it's, see that all the time. Maybe it is, but it sucks. <laughs> Dude, the I one... think it's, it's like it, um, it broke me particularly because like you know it had the Daleks in it and I could just you know I, I'm so very familiar with the Daleks that I could immediately tell something was off. The woman who lived has my favorite line from Doctor Who of all time, which is when um, Maisie Williams takes out an evil death beam that the Tigers gave to her. I can't believe that's a real sentence, and then <laughs> puts it down and it launches out like a ray to summon them. And the ray is purple. And the doctor says, purple, the color of death. <laughs> really? Is that a real line? <laughs> That's a real line. <laughs> That's the line from the show. I'm not making that shit up. <laughs> Why does <laughs> say that? <laughs> that, like, I, people need, I feel like I'm in a dream sometimes when I hear people say Series 9 is one of the best series. series. What are you guys talking about? Is not one of the it best series. Very bad. It's one of the worst series. You're fucking gaslighting me. It's like the Zygon two-parter is the first one that's half decent, and I don't even think that. Yeah, was I'm that all right good. with that one. I think it's okay. I really like the war speech. I think that's a great scene. Um, it's there's there's editing mistakes in it. I remember noticing this when I was a kid. There's a few points when they left like a black frame in between two shots, which is like weirdly amateurish. Really? Yeah. I'm, I remember I even pa- paused and went back. I don't even do that. <laughs> no. The, the, well, to be fair, my most recent video, I do do that. But <laughs> if you, if I was uh, working on the BBC, I, you know, I had months. So that was just my entire thing. I, you know. That that brings me to another big complaint I have about specifically series nine and ten. Weird amateurish mm-hmm. technical issues were plaguing the show around this time. And I don't fucking get why. They could not sync the music with the visuals in the opening for like 
half of the Be fair, that was like in the RTD era as well. They did that in the RTD era. Yeah, but I don't mind it there because it, it the desynced version kind of works <laughs> in like a different... it fair. Stuff lines up with the music in a different way. Whereas in Capaldi's, it was just off to in different ways like every episode and i don't know why that kept happening his opening has an effect when the tardis flies into the camera where there's like this beam that comes off of it and like goes it almost goes off the edges of the screen and then it disappears like abruptly before reaching the edges and that always drove me insane when i was a kid and then they released huh. the christmas special with nick frost where they redid the opening and then they fixed it I was like, oh, thank God. And then Series 9 came, and then they, they unfixed it. Like, <laughs> it was fucked up again. <laughs> I was like, it's so... Like, once you see it, you never unsee it. Like it, look, it, it thank you for thank you for thank you for um ruining for, that for, for, you. for, for poisoning yeah for poisoning this movie. things i've never liked that intro anyway um i've never i don't love it. It, was, it, was based on a, it was based on a youtube video I don't know. I've seen that. I seen that YouTube video before the uh, series came out. Yeah, I kind of prefer. Because I'm I'm very deep into the YouTube fan intro community for Dog. So Who. am I. Listen, when I was nine years old, I uploaded a video that was every Doctor Who opening up to that point, and it got a hundred thousand views. And that was the first time I got a lot of views on a video, and that's what made me want to do YouTube. And then I didn't do it for like ten years after that. <laughs> but hey, I, that's what made me want to do it. Feels. <laughs> And like no, there's there's like editing mistakes all throughout series nine when you start noticing them, or like at least sh like weird editing, like shots that are like last for like half a second, weird choices of camera angles. There's a point in in um the girl who died when it cuts to a like there's a bunch of Vikings on a spaceship and the wall starts moving in on them, and the the camera angle they cut to to convey this is a fisheye GoPro shot that they like taped the wall that's slightly crooked and like off center and like jostles when the wall moves like the whole thing vibrates it looks like as cheap as something from Classic Who, and I'm like it's it's fisheye the whole thing is like fisheye because it's like a cheap GoPro, and it's like why why did you why is this the shot. Like how did the DP? I don't, I don't set think I've watched shot. that episode since broadcast. By the way, it's I think that's not, one of the few Doctor Who episodes I've never watched since broadcast. It's fucking terrible, and no, it doesn't get. I think it's like as bad as the very. I think it's as bad as like Love and Monsters. No one talks about it. It's so bad. People need to. I remember appreciate how it being bad shit, it is. Though, and I was like fourteen when it came out. So me remembering it, I was like, well, I'm fifteen, I think. Me remembering it being shit really says something. Um, <laughs> Um, if I was that young when it came out, the, the the whole episode is just obnoxious. Like I remember the I knew it was gonna suck from the at the very beginning. The the doctor and Clara get like captured by Vikings, and the doctor's like, you know what? You can't capture me because I'm the doctor. I'm the oncoming storm. I am the destroyer of countless species that have stood my way. And then one the one of the the Vikings grabs his sunglasses and snaps them in half. And then it just cuts to him making a little awkward face. And he's like, Clara, I think we're going with the Vikings. And then it cuts to the opening theme. And I just like audibly sighed <laughs> when I first watched that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, shout out to whoever did the effect of Odin's face in the sky, by the way, <laughs> for a girl who died. Oh, that, I remember that effect. It looked great. <laughs> yeah, this, um, this season, with the exception of Heaven Sent, I think has the worst run of episodes but pre Shibnall era that the show has ever had, and I'm including the classic series. I think Series 7 might be up there. I don't think so, personally. Series 7 had um, little, little breaks, little decent episodes in there. There was nothing great, but there was like decent stuff. With the exception of the Was Zygon. there, though? I mean, this... Uh, uh, but here's the thing. This has, like, the Zygon stuff as the, as the little break. Sure, I guess. But like I guess one thing like before the flood is like isn't like as bad as the rest of it. <laughs> What's so strange to series nine about me to me, sorry, is that in many ways it's like I hate it <laughs> that it's one of my least favorite se series, and somehow it has my favorite episode of the whole show in it, which is heaven sent. Whoopsie, I fucking love that episode so much. Why is it so good? Why is it in this season? 
Like it's it, I it's like as close to being a masterpiece. Face the, it's face. I always face the Raven, by the way. Sorry. Just, face yeah, the Raven. Uh, I don't like it that much. I find it kind of cringe. <laughs> the fact uh, that you get an action five action replays of Clara, get it having the Raven fly into her boobs <laughs> in slow motion, <laughs> like that's just the kind of yeah, like fair. cringy directing that was plaguing the show around that time, like, yeah. But like Heaven Sent doesn't have that problem. It's directed really, really well. It's written really well. It's an exploration of grief. It's like great themes. Everything is executed perfectly. Such a good concept. Like after the episode aired, I had dreams where I was inside the castle from Heaven Sent. I think about the scene when he punches through the diamond wall over the course of billions of years constantly. I listen to The Shepherd's Boy, the, to the song from that episode. That's my shit. That's one of my favorite songs from the whole yeah. Doctor Who soundtrack. I know it's a meme at this point on like do- and like online Doctor Who forums to, to go on about how good Heaven Sent is because everyone does it. But fuck, dude, I like it's almost like a perfect episode, and it's in series nine, and it's part one to Hell Bent, which is one of the worst episodes of the show. Like what? Well, you know, and it only it's only allowed to happen because Hell Bent is just completely a different thing. Yeah, tr- that is true. Like I remember, and the hell is bad. It's really bad. It's it's really really bad. But but heaven sent is like I could literally go on for ages about how much I love that episode's pacing, how genius it is to have an episode with just the Doctor and no one else. Like and like you know just just seeing how he deals with being alone and seeing how it kind of breaks him to be alone, how he needs other people with him, and when he's alone, like that fucks him up. You know, like just. Like, yeah, and it's such a gorgeously, it's a visually striking episode. There's a point I, I talked about this in one of my Doctor Who videos where they can they convey a long passage of time when he's digging with just a, a color change. Like it's the whole like the shot is red, and he's digging, and then everything fades to blue, and that conveys to the audience that that there's been a passage of time, and it's it's just like really good, like it's just really good directing. The whole thing is vis- like the shots are like cinematic. The it's whole Rachel Talalay, isn't it? It's Rachel Talalay. Yes, yeah, she's one of my favorite directors on the show. If I'm being honest, fair. Yeah. I mean, she's coming back, so that's nice. Oh, she's coming back too. Like I didn't even know that. Yeah, the stream's buffering again. By the way, I'm sorry to everyone dealing with this. Um, tragic. Yeah, looking forward to it not buffering. They'll, they'll learn to live with it. They're missing me gloating about how good Heaven Sent is. So, but anyway, hell bent, the whole though. series. Hell bent, though. <laughs> so, guys, I'm Stephen Moffat. Listen to this. This is my pitch. So you know how I the, don't believe you. You know how the whole show. This is a great Stephen Moffat impression. What the fuck are you talking about? The whole show. The Doctor has been going on about Gallifrey. It's, it's become kind of a legend at this point in the show's lore. Gallifrey. The Doctor misses his home. We've never really gotten to see it. We've only heard little descriptions of it and seen like little shots here and there of like the, the orange sky and like the, the red trees and the, the, the citadel and all that. And it seems like one of the coolest places ever. But we can't see it because it's it's destroyed, right? And it's time locked, so he can never go there. And he wants to go there like more than anything. And that's been a constant like struggle for him throughout the whole show, like that he can't go back home. And after ten years of that, of the dog even the fiftieth anniversary, he still isn't able to actually get to Gallifrey. He just saves it. After ten years of holding this over the audience heads, I, like thousands of years in the doctor's lifespan of him being unable to get back to Gallifrey and this being one of his main personal goals. What if the episode was about Clara though? What if the episode was about Clara? And not only that, what if the, what doctor, if the episode was about like, yeah, what, what if, if that, the doctor, yeah, that's, a, that's a good idea. What if the doctor made it to Gallifrey said, actually fuck that shit. This is lame. And then left so that he can hang out with Clara. Look, is I'm that happy am I a genius or lame? not? Because we have like end of time, right? Establishes that Gallifrey is not good actually, and the memory, the, the version of it that he talks about, 
uh, is very much idealized in his head. But that the story the focus should still be on Gallifrey. About end of time. Only thing, one of the only things I like about End of Time is that it, it sets up the but all the conversations right between Ted and Wilf. Okay, fine, fine. You uh, you got me. Those are well. Even then, there's still some weird. There's a moment when an old woman grabs his ass. That I don't know why that's there. That's not a conversation between Ted and Wilf. No, but yeah, that it's is a, a weird scene. Moment. It's a scene. It's one of the Ted and Wilf. They are scenes. both present. Yeah. Like. But we need not we need not talk about the end of time. I can concur the end of time is much better than Hell Bent. <laughs> what the fuck was he thinking? Like I can't believe he actually just like after all the criticism that had been being geared like that had been directed against the show for being like the Clara show when she was on it. The fact that he decided to in series nine it finally seemed like that was on the mend. Like it, Clara wasn't. Like everything didn't revolve around Clara anymore, and it's like, oh, thank God, she's she's not the show isn't about Clara anymore. And then, <laughs> one of the most important things in like the overall story, if, if you want to call it that, of the show, which is the Doctor making it back to Galfrey, happens. And at that moment, Clara steps in, is like, I'm the main character again. <laughs> yeah, I like, what the fuck, man. Series 9 is not good. It's a shame. Series 9 is bad, but Heaven's Sent is amazing. But it's only one episode of 13. If you include Husbands um, of River Song. So, D or F? <sighs> Heaven Sent is solely the reason why... <sighs> Fuck, actually, no. Is, 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 can I really justify putting it a whole tier up for one episode? But it is my favorite episode. I think it should be an F. I kind of agree, but it has my favorite episode. <laughs> like it's it's a no, weird. Sometimes case. there are anomalies. Yeah, but this. <sighs> <laughs> You're in Fuck, so much I'm, pain. I'm, I don't know. Okay. I. Why don't I just put it? Okay, I'll, I'll campaign for D for now. Because of Heaven Sent, and I'll, but I'll put that there tenuously and say that we can move it if we decide. Is, do sure. you think, is that okay? Sure. Well, I, would, uh, did I say F or D? Did it... You said F. Okay, sure. We'll put it in, we'll put it in D. But, I, but we might move it, <laughs> depending on what yeah. the vibe is. Because I just, I feel like... To me, it feels worse than Series 7, but I, at the same time, I'll, I never want to revisit Series 7, whereas I will revisit Series 9. And that's, at the end of the day, the Doctor Who is supposed to be a show of rewatchability, you know? And like, a show that yeah. stands the test of time. And if Series 9 has that over Series 7, that has to say something. About I guess better. so. I don't know. Anyways... We're on to series ten now. We are. Uh, I like it. Hold on, wait. Chad is saying, "How long will it take you to realize there's a letter between D and F?" Okay, well, why don't you ask that to the education system because they're the ones that decided to skip E. Okay, it wasn't us. Okay, you know what? Fine. I'll, you know, right. yeah. there's no point in having F and F minus. I'll just add E. Fine. Sure. I was only doing it because it's a, it's a weird do tier it. list. I was I was only yeah. doing it because schools do it. Okay. Well, it's because F is short for fail. F, like, that is probably why they did it. They just, they just, they thought that was so clever that they had to skip E. <laughs> Never skip E. Okay, there you go, chat. There's an E now. Congrats. Well, okay, so series ten then. Series ten, I hated when it came out and have slowly warmed up to it over time, but I still think it's overrated within the Who universe. I mean, I happily say that it's probably overrated, but I still think it's pretty good. Uh, yeah, it is. Tr it is better than series nine. I can say that. I think that um, Capaldi uh, and Pearl carry it a lot, um, where the writing is weaker. Thing is, the um, I really like the 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 Doctor's characterization, and I really like um, Bill Potts as a companion. So it makes the bad, the even the bad stories, right, are much more watchable because they have good characters in them. 
Yeah, which I, is something that you know we were missing I've for never, a while. I've never liked Nardole really, and I'm not a huge Matt Lucas fan in general. But I think he adds stuff to the dynamic, although I'm not like t- super attached to his character. I, I I am super attached to like what he brings to the team, I guess. Can I just quickly point out something that I've just been dying hmm? to point out that t- technically isn't about Doctor Who, but also kind of is. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, hello? Hello? Fuck. Fuck. Hel- no! Fuck. What's going on? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Okay, can you, can, chat, can you hear me? Fuck. Wait, hold on. Sorry. Jay, can you hear me? Okay, okay, chat can hear. Okay, so it's not me. It's Let me just Hello? Hello? Hello. You can hear me again. Yes. Okay, good, good, good. Hello. I don't that's just that was a Discord problem. I don't know. I was saying those I, things happen sometimes. I, I have to point out a piece of deep Doctor Who lore, which is also Dude. a piece of community lore, which is in 2013, an episode of Community aired where, which has Matt Lucas in it as a huge fan right. of Inspector Space Time, which is that, ver- that show's version of Doctor Who. Right. And this is before he was a companion on the show. And not only is, is there that, coincidence but in that episode they say that there's a female inspector that everyone hates that episode oh. came out in 2013 deep lore that is cr- like it it has a future companion in it and it predicted the 13th doctor and it, it's also like not even a very good episode of community in general being but like i have to appreciate its fortune telling ability i'm still on series one of community it's a good show, except for when it's not. Yeah, I've heard that. I'm enjoying season one so far, but just sort of passively. Like, it's fine. It's all right. It's funny. It points. Uh... Series two of Community is probably one of my favorite series of a sitcom, but I'm nostalgic for mm. it because I watched it when I was a kid. So, Fair. That's a good show. Overall. <laughs> Falls off a bit near the end. Especially this season that doesn't have Dan Harmon. But anyways, Series 10 of Doctor Who. You know, when this came out, I actually thought it was even worse than Series 9. But that's because I was really cold towards the show at this point. Because I think I said Series 9 is the one that broke me. Like, it just made me kind of give up being a fan of the show. And I kind of was off the show for a while. And this series came out when I was in that period. So I I wasn't charitable towards it all. And if I'm being honest, it really didn't help that the Canadian broadcast of this episode, and I shit you not, the Canadian broadcast of this episode that BBC sent to space, which was the channel that aired it in Canada, f- was right. fucked up to the point where all the music and sound effects were desynced in the left and right audio channels. So there was a half second. Why? So the music all sounded. Why did that happen? The music all sounded like janky and echoey because they were like a half second apart from each other in the channels. This is what I'm talking about when I say amateurish technical issues that plagued series nine and ten. If you were British, um, this do these w- do copies like this still exist? I have been trying to find evidence of this for years. Listen, Jay, I've been trying to prove that I'm not crazy for so long, and I'm not. By the well, way, well, have you, did you have you met anyone else who's experienced this? Here's the thing: at that point in time, none of my friends watched Doctor Who anymore. No, and I, I never, I didn't look it up at the time on Reddit or anything. And now it's been so long that it's hard to find the discourse from back then. I have tried to find proof of it. And listen, I, I like some, of, some of my family members witnessed it. So it's not just me. And I've, I've seen the, at, at the time I went on YouTube and then watched the scenes and the music was fine. There was something fucked up about the broadcast where the music was like out of sync do you know? I mean, do you know? Have you ever met? Have you ever met anyone else I've who's not met who wasn't watching anyone, it in your home? I've not met anyone else. No, but the thing is, the 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 dialogue was not messed up, so it can't have been my TV. That doesn't make any sense. And the commercials. Well, no, it, it does make sense because um, how the commercials is because okay. So um, I mean, Doctor Who is broadcast in surround sound, right? Okay. So it could have been um, a. I mean, it would have it would have affected anything else that was broadcast in the same format. 
But if your TV was like briefly fucked up and it's like not processing surround sound correctly, um, no, listen. The then that would have been a, a a an error that you experienced, and a lot of other people, you know, some other people may have experienced, but it's not necessarily um, everyone in the country is experiencing it, or whatever, right? No, no, because the dialogue did not have that issue. Dialogue. Well, no, the dialogue in, in in surround sound is on a separate channel to the uh, soundtrack and these sound effects. That's from okay. you can look and. Okay, so so uh, if if your TV wasn't reading like the the channels correctly, um, if like one channel was fucked up or the the way it was interpreting the file or the the data or whatever, um, wasn't working out as it's supposed to, it could have been an error between you know what was being sent and the actual like reading of it that wasn't necessarily an issue with the broadcast. I've never heard of that before. Well, if you uh, if you go into a I mean, if you if you edit, like if you put Doctor Who in your editing file um, from a specifically, I think specifically from the DVDs, um, or if you like record it off the TV, you can get it in like full surround sound, and you can isolate the dialogue and the uh, or, uh, music and the sound effects. Well, so then. the fact that it doesn't affect the dialogue doesn't mean that it's not a <laughs> scale issue. Okay, well, I'll just say this. I'll just say this. <laughs> My TV had never before or after ever had an issue with surround sound of any other program. Yeah, okay. It, it, it's it's extremely likely that it was a fuck up, right? <laughs> On that part. And the that thing does, is, it, 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 the the problem resolved itself around episode three. Oh yeah, okay. Um, so I feel like it was it sounds, uh, certainly on their end. There is always the possibility. I, I won't say that it's not possible that it was a problem in my mind. I just feel that it is very unlikely. No, I, I'll, I'll happily... Uh, but I'll happily... I, ju I, just, I just want to find someone else that experienced this problem because I made the mistake of not searching for it online at the time, and now I can't find anything on it. <laughs> well, I mean, this is probably a good platform to, to help find anyone who experienced it. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. If anyone watching experienced it, which I doubt, because <laughs> I mean, why not yeah, maybe, sure. maybe someone did well yeah just everyone in chat pretend you experienced it yeah just just make me think i'm not crazy <laughs> please i need it <laughs> well what do you think of moffat cleverly titling the first episode of this series the pilot in reference to the fact that he was trying to make this a jumping on point i think it's a better a better title than the, a star in her eye which is what it was originally called. Oh, it was uh, actually called... I don't think it's... A... Oh, that is that is mm -hmm. bad. A Star in Her Eye? Yeah. Yeah, actually, actually, the pilot is better than that. I mean, I'm not in love with it as a title, but... No, I, I, I hate it. <laughs> I think it's weird to call the first episode of Series 10 the pilot, personally. Especially when it was his last season. Like, give that to Chibnall or something. You know, let him call his first episode the pilot. Mm -hmm. The thing about I mean, no doubt he was actually going to do that. But no, I get you. The thing about Series 10 is that I, I don't think this series has any episodes that I would call great. And I know people are going to yell at me when I say that. But it does have some episodes that are quite good. I really like Extremis. And I really like the, the, the series finale. Yeah. Um, uh, those are my highlights as well. I also really like Thin Ice. That's the one where the doctor punches a racist man, right? Yes. Yeah, that moment's pretty iconic. <laughs> and um, I know there is some weird stuff in there, but I, I don't want to... Like, I remember there, there was a point in that episode when um, they're in London and there's, like, there's a lot of non-white people there. And, like, Bill Posh is like, London's a lot less white than I'm used to. And the doctor's like... So was Jesus. History is a whitewash. And while it is true that history is a whitewash, and there's a lot of cases you can point to where people of color are kind of erased, London in the Victorian era is not an example of that at all. That's just really not accurate. Is it not? History. No. Not near. I'm not saying there weren't non-white people there, but they, they exaggerated it a lot for that episode. Like, you, if you were in a bustling city center, it wouldn't have been, like, mostly brown. i mean they're not just in the city center though are they i mean they're in like the 
they're at like they're at like the frost fair which is specifically like the port where you would have like a lot of people coming in from everywhere specifically i mean it's it's possible and again i don't want to really get hung up in this i know that there were a lot of sort of this was around the time that those cringy kind of like uh the quartering type well were people who up. would get very people very get angry very about bad. this specifically i'm not gonna get very angry about it i don't really mind and i i think it comes from a good place you know, wanting to represent stuff like that. I just think they could have picked something that's more historically accurate. I'm not saying it's impossible that there ever could have been a moment that you were in Victorian London when there were most of the people there weren't white. But fuck it. I don't. I don't. I really don't want to talk about this for too long because I don't want to be the quartering. <laughs> I don't want to turn into the quartering. <laughs> no, I, th- I. I don't like. I don't like have a much to say on that i mean i don't really know my history either so uh, like i'm you know something i've always been happy to like accept you know it could just be a coincidence but oh whatever right it's like mm. i uh, um, this series does have episodes that i really don't like like smile such as and um i've never liked smile the pyramid at the, <laughs> excuse me the pyramid at the end of the world that burp was timed for when i said that episode <laughs> to represent to, to metaphorically represent Another... how lame it is <laughs> Another good choice. Um, the Monk trilogy is very weak, and it takes Extremis, up a lot of time, Extremis which is annoying. Is really good. Oh, the, sorry. The live. The oh yeah, land, yeah. But... The live the land is the one I meant. I don't love Pyramid, the end of the world either. But the live the land, which is part three of the Monk trilogy, where there's a fake out regeneration, is, I think, the worst episode of the series. Ass. It's ass. Yeah, it's absolute ass. Uh, um, Empress. Of I really, li- I really like the character stuff in um, Pyramid at the end of the world, but I don't remember rating the plot so well. Empress... There's like the moment where um, sorry? you have. The doctor just being the doctor, and he says, "I put loads of secret files online in searchable format." <laughs> and Bill is just sort of like, "Okay, okay, <laughs> let's see what let's let him cook." Um, it's a very Moffat Doctor moment, that. But like, you know, I, yeah, there's a lot of character stuff. I enjoy. Bill is great, um, even in the bad episodes. Is the thing? Yeah, she's a she's a great companion. Um, um, knock knock. I've never been particularly fond of, but I still enjoy the Doctor and Bill in it quite a lot. Mm-hmm. They have a good dynamic. Um, it's kind of like a Doctor and Donna type, just like friends dynamic, but it, yeah. a bit different because the Doctor in Series Ten, he's in his professor phase, you know, so he's kind of like a mentor to her. In more, I mean, the, the Doctor is always kind of a mentor to his companions, but like I mean, especially there, I, th- I think it works really well. I still don't like Nardle very much, but I understand he's a part of the the chemistry. Because they're like a trio, and he's like the comedy relief, and I get it. Yeah, I don't like, find him funny. When but you I, say you don't, <laughs> sorry, I was, well, I was, I was going to ask when you, when you say you don't like him, do you like do you like not like do you like dislike him as a person or as a character? Because I do find those are different things. Because a lot of what he does has to do with comedy relief, and I don't find Matt Lucas to be a particularly funny person, and I don't find his lines that funny. That's why I say I don't love Nardole that much. Fair enough, yeah. Not, I find a lot of Nardole's lines funny, so it's a, a well. A lot of the stuff involving I find Nardole, him to be much worse than Husbands of River Song, to be fair. No, I no, I think that's his worst episode. I think he improved in Series 10. But, like, no, a lot of the, st- a lot of the stuff with Nardole I find to be the most funny are the Doctor's lines when he's responding to Nardole. <laughs> like, when Nardole doesn't want him to... to to leave and i think it's in oxygen oh that's a good episode too that's the most left overtly left-wing episode doctor's ever done and none of the like the people who accuse the show of being woke talked about it i just find i find that's, that really yeah it's an interesting thing <laughs> but, um we also have um sorry i was gonna say like a nodal thing where the doctor's reacting to nodal is funnier than nodal himself from- like nodal doesn't even have to be like in this scene really like he doesn't have any di- like doesn't he start what i mean to say is like he's not gonna line in this moment but it's funny because he's there is where, um, like, the Doctor lands the TARDIS in, like, the science laboratory in, um, in, in the, uh, in the Monk trilogy, whichever part it is. Um, and, and, you know, the TARDIS lands, he steps out, and the, one of the scientists there goes, what is that? And the Doctor says, that's not all. <laughs> I, I didn't even remember that, but that, that, that is funny. It's one of my favorite jokes in the show. No, I I like the the point the part in Sir <laughs> in Oxygen at the beginning when Nardole doesn't want the Doctor to take off because he has to like guard the vault, and Nardole holds up this like little thing of fluid. And he's like, "This is a fluid link. The TARDIS can't go anywhere without it." 
And the doctor's like, yeah, and who told you that? And he's like, you did. And he's like, exactly. And then he snaps and takes off the TARDIS. And then Nardo's just like, wait, what? And the doctor's like, I'm docking your pay for this. That part I find pretty funny. But it's because of the you, doctor, um, not because of Nardo. I, I don't know how familiar you are with Classic I mean, you must be pretty familiar with Classic Who, right? I, I assume yeah. you get the Fluid Link reference. Um. So I, 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 as I, I was about to ask that question, I guess I realized this, this conversation has been really new who focused. And then I started asking that question and remembered your ranking video. I was like, oh no, yeah, you, you will know. Uh, and like the thing about like, like with Nardo, it's like, I don't hate him, I guess. Like, I just don't really l- like him. Like if I had, were ranking companions, he'd be like pretty low. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I, I've never, like, cared about him that much. I think the thing that's weird about him is, you know, he doesn't really have an introductory story as much as he's just sort of there, and then he continues to be there. Mm-hmm. He's, like, he's like a side character in a story who doesn't really matter. Um, And then he just pops up again in the next episode, and it's like, oh, okay, I guess he's here to stay. Sure. You never really see him build a relationship with the Doctor. It's just... You gather that he has one now, and there's like a time. Yeah, it's 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 an odd. It's an odd. I think he's the only companion in New Who who's like that. Who's just sort of um, in, he, whose relationship with the Doctor is built up off screen, and then you just sort of accept that he's there. Yeah. Yeah, it, like he he's in some ways he's more of a supporting character than like a full on companion. He's not even in every episode in series ten. Yeah, he's kind of like what what Rory was in series five, like before he was like a full on companion, and he was just there sometimes. And I pref- yeah, he is I, very much like in that. that role. I like, I think he's okay. That's why he doesn't really bother me that much because he's he's not re- like Bill's the main companion. Yeah, and she's good, so you know. So and series ten has a pretty kick ass finale uh, if you don't count twice upon a time. <laughs> as the finale so true um i love having a multi-master episode that was such a good idea yeah yeah um it's something it's a good it's like it's interesting it's like it's a real fan service idea but it's not something the fans had ever really been asking for but yet when they saw it they knew that they'd been craving it all that time especially john yeah john sim and michelle gomez have a lot of chemistry with each other on screen it works well they do of course because it's written by stephen moffat they there's a they make a joke they about want having to sex with each other, other. yeah because that yeah. that's stephen moffat but you know doesn't M- missy like grab his dick at one point <laughs> um i think it's implied that like I, I don't know it's just implied that he's horny i think she makes she says his dick is getting hard at one point but she's she says it subtly he doesn't it's say getting, that his dick is getting <laughs> she, hard. she doesn't say that i th- I thought i remember there being a joke that subtly implied that he was getting an erection i think there's like a scene that you can read that way but i i don't know i can't remember it very well um like her saying i, I think she sort of like looks down at his crotch or no, something. i think i, I remember her looking down and this it wasn't this wasn't the line but it was something along these lines it was like well, something's getting stiff or like whatever, like something just like a kind of. I don't think it was ever like that of a. It was. That's what I'm saying. That, I think that I think wasn't, the dialogue, that wasn't on, the line. Up, I think... But it was something implying that his dick was getting. Okay, the let's master's have, um... the master's dick aside. Was, uh... <laughs> Hang on, I'm looking up a transcript now. <laughs> the master's dick is. Oh, okay. We need to get the bottom of if the master's dick got hard in the husband's in um, sorry um in the doctor falls. We need to know. Uh, right. Um. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. What is it? The master sort of like looks seductively at Missy and says, "By the way, is it wrong that I?" Uh... And then they both glance down, and Missy says, "Yes, very." Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking of. <laughs> so, if you want, you can interpret them as that that is him having <laughs> having an erection. How else you can also interpret? just like, <laughs> well, you can just you know interpret that as a glance. It doesn't a glance have to at mean... what? down like an awkward glance down you know <laughs> a lot of people it, it's a very common way to avoid eye contact with someone but what was he talking about then that, that i'm like just that i'm well, horny that, but not that that's just is it yeah is it okay. is it wrong that i want to do the fuck to you okay by the way i bet they did off screen 
there's definitely well, is it like you know missy was like yes it's very wrong oh well let's do it anyway <laughs> you know that missy would like it more because it's wrong like it's so true missy. and missy i like speaking of missy i do i like her in this season i've always just felt that i don't understand what caused her to, to gain a conscience here like what spurred that on like i wish we'd seen that a bit no more. i don't get that either really it just sort of happens and I, I i really like the idea of it and i like her relationship with the doctor but it's like we don't ever get to see what caused missy to finally start you know caring about other people i thought that it was a ploy initially because that would be a very master thing to do to like escape the vault you know but it wasn't it was, it was legitimate feelings. We don't really know where they came from. Was it, does it, you think it was like from the doctor being like standing over her for all that time and being nice to her? Maybe. I don't, it is, it is weak. It's like the weakest thing. Yeah. The weakest thing is like the jump to getting the arc started, but the arc is sort of started in her first scene in the episode. So it's like, I guess this is where her character is now. But what's weird about it is it's in itself a good arc. I like the arc, but it doesn't have a beginning. It just needed a beginning. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But for the most part, I can say that this is better than Series 9. That's not high praise. Would I say it's better than Series 8? For me, personally, I don't... I wouldn't say that. But they're they're kind of close for me. Uh, I think this is way better than Series 8. I think this is, like, one where the episodes have a baseline of being pretty good, but, like, the bad episodes are exceptions. But there are a few exceptions. But, like, yeah, generally this series is pretty good. I think that I want to put this in, like, B. Okay. Well, you owe me a bone, so it can't be in B. Well, where are you going to put it? I would have put it in either C or D personally and i guess uh, i can accept c but it has to be under we don't have a. anything in c we do have we have three things in c have oh you, have you have you sorry wait i guess you can't see this can you <laughs> no i can't i can't see it oh, yeah. I should, for, do you want no, me I, to... I had a brain fart there i had a really massive brain fart um and i it's not worth explaining to you the thought process that led me to thinking we didn't have anything in C. Just be, be aware C that is... there was a reason I thought that, and then I realized I was being stupid. Okay, I'll take your word for it. C is currently our most stacked tier. <laughs> There's three things in C. <laughs> All right, let's put it in C. Okay. Do you want me to I'm recite? I'm not happy about that though. Do you want me to, re to recite where we're at, by the way, before we get into Chibnall territory? Just since you can't see, no, it? I, I will just I'll just refresh this because I've got the stream open, just paused, so I can like have a look at the, the keep an eye on the chat. But I'll just refresh it. Okay. There we go. Yeah, I'm 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 okay with that. Uh, I'm not happy with I'm not happy with ten being in the same tier as six. <laughs> I don't. I just person. I don't know. I personally think that. Six is better than ten. I just I I I feel that way in my soul. I, it's tr okay. Six has, uh, the girl who waited. Six is way worse. God complex. I think I think that six is like way worse than ten. Because the plot arc is just so garbled. It is really garbled. Okay, you know what? Series ten you know what? works Fine. as a series. I'll do this. I'll leave it in C, but I'll put it above six. I'll put it as the highest one in C. How about that? I'm, I'm happy with that. That's, I'll accept In it. In our official ranking, 10 is above 6. I mean, I really I really think it actually belongs in B, but you know I'm throwing you this bone. Look, it's the highest one in C. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, ha I'm fine with okay, like, okay. Democracy was a mistake. <laughs> we need dictatorship. If it was dictatorship, I'd be the one in charge right now. And you wouldn't like that. No, I would. I'd, I would. Um, I, I would. would do, I would throw a um, a mutiny. I would do evil things, <laughs> like I would. Five I would and start S. a competing. <laughs> I would start a competing channel, a, a competing stream on my own channel, no, and I would start, make my own uh, tier no, list live a, on my channel. Start a competing channel. <laughs> like it. Make make a channel that has the name of a font. Make Helvetica. <laughs> <laughs> and then do your own ranking. That's just the opposite of this one. I will. That's that's, that's going to be my... As soon as the stream is done, that's what I'm going to be doing. 
<laughs> so Jay, we're at we've made it. We've made it. Uh, F to the to to. I'm gonna do this right now. I don't know if you're looking. Look if you're looking to stream. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm. I've got the stream open, but it's still paused. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it up live. Yeah, I'm gonna wait for your live reaction. Oh oh yeah, so true. <laughs> wait, have you? Has it updated? Because it's yeah, set... I can see it. Oh, can I can see. see I can see your crimes. I didn't think that it updated that fast. I thought there was a bigger delay, but yeah. I mean, this is correct. We're this is it. We're done. Oh yeah, they're both. They're all. All three of them were great, but like, I think the only conversations to be had is which one is the best and which one is the least good. Um, hold on. What was that noise? Oh wait, no. I still have Minecraft open. That was a villager noise. I thought that was part of, like, <laughs> the big guy just I made a villager noise. <laughs> yeah. Okay, hold on. Flux. Why the fuck is there? I, I was just, like, I left Minecraft like paused in my house, but it's like uh, not actually. Oh, there's like a, it's a traveling trader. Okay. I didn't realize you've been playing Minecraft the whole time. <laughs> I haven't been playing Minecraft the whole time. I've had it paused most of the time, but I've opened it a couple of times. Well, you're truly the queen of multitasking. Thank then again, it, uh, multi Minecraft is the kind of game that you can very easily play while ranking Doctor Who seasons. I'm I'm actually kind of jealous of you. <laughs> um. Anyways, so the Chibnall seasons. What what what's yeah, the uh, yeah. what's what's the vibe? I think that. Um. Well, obviously. I don't know. I don't know if we're, I don't know if we're, how how to take this at a place where I'm memeing. <laughs> I don't know how to explain my the feelings on how they stack up next compared to each other uh -huh. without without ending the meme. <laughs> I'll I'll end the meme. I'll end the meme. Oh, I can't put them back. Once you move them out of like the uh the roster, you can't put them back. All right. Well, I'll just like make a temporary. I'll just put this. At the we'll bottom. just keep them actually good for now. Just just keep them there for now. I'll, but I'll put actually good at the bottom. <laughs> So now this is like a weird meta tier list where the bottom one is the the good one. So true. Okay, so uh, Chibnall seasons. I think that Flux is the worst one. I agree. I Flux think... does this thing where it's got all the problems of the previous two, but it also like disregards the concept of structure. It doesn't just disregard um, the concept of structure, it disregards the concept of characters. It disregards the concept of... Well, the pacing. previous seasons did that. Yeah, but this one just, like, t dances on the graves of what once was the liter literary concept of characters. It also has yeah. a moment where a um, Santarin says, Chocolate! Because that's true, that's really but I mean, funny. Series 12 has, like, a... Uh, series 11 has a moment where a, a Dalek doesn't even laugh, and Series 12 has um, yeah, a moment true. where... The master. Where the you know, master. generally. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, well, I guess we're just talking about series 11 right now. So just keeping things in perspective. I, I think that's the best Chibnall season, personally. I get, I get pushback on that because people say it's the most boring one. And I agree. It's still the best one, though. <laughs> Yeah, it's got, it's got it's got the well. To be fair, twelve has Villa Daidati in it, whereas eleven doesn't yeah, have no. any episodes that I would actually call good. Villa Daidati is the 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 best, ep like that feels just like a kind of like an enjoyable Doctor Who, a episode. Doctor Who episode, yeah. like an episode of Doctor Who. Yeah, which is crazy. Um, I'm let me just pull up this the series eleven episodes real quick. Uh, yeah, so series uh, eleven. Villa Daidati still has a couple of problems. Um. The thing about series eleven is the people, the episodes that from that season that people say are quote unquote actually good are like mostly not good. Like Rosa, yeah, like, is um, not. It's it's kind of really simplistic, and the villains is really bad. And there's good things it's, about it's it. It's extremely cringe. It's extremely um, cringe. The character yeah. writing is like probably the best it's it's been in the Chibnall excluding Villa Daidai. I agree with you. The demons, the Punjab, is overrated. However, I think it's still one of the best episodes from the season, and but I don't think it's good. <laughs> Honestly. I'm fine with that. Uh, I'm not sure how I would rank it up against the other episodes of the season, to be honest. Like, Kerblam uh, is supposed to be 
and even I used to think this, that it was the best episode from the season, but the more I think about it, it's an episode where the Doctor finds a workers' rights revolution and then kills the leader of it <laughs> in support of a big yeah. corporation. She fucking kills yeah. him. She blows him up. <laughs> it's like... She does do that. Doctor Who... What's funny is, like, the Chibnall era is the one that's accused of being, like, woke. Quote, unquote. It is the woke, least woke. that means. But, the... but, like, S- Series 10 was the one that had an episode that was an overt critique of capitalism. <laughs> and... And then series, series 11, 11 is like, no, is like, actually. Big corporations are actually based. <laughs> yeah. you know that? <laughs> Did you know that Amazon's actually, like, the good guys? But Donald Trump is bad, which means that we are leftists. Yeah. We, we have a guy that's a stand-in for Donald Trump that says he likes to shoot things, and it makes him feel good. And he walks and he shoots a spider, and he's like, this is what's going to get me into the White House. And Reminds then we like won a lot five of, um, Oscars. A lot of Republicans, particularly at the start of Trump's presidency, didn't like Donald Trump. I, there's a time when um, Ben Shapiro didn't like Donald Trump. Those were yeah. like the good old days, you could say. Um, don't liking, not liking Donald Trump isn't, isn't even like a, an anti-right position. Not really. It, it's What it is, it's, it's like... What what this whole season is is centrist lib, that's what it is. It is, yeah. And like, like the fact that it gets a acu- it's, appar- it is it's well. apparently super leftist because there's a woman in it. Is like I well, hate no, how my it's like, yeah. We, it's um, it's more overtly um, political. It brings up you know, it's um. It's 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 leftist in the way that hey, isn't it good when we say the things that are good? Like a lot of you know, faceless corporations are right. Mm. It's leftist in the same way that some fucking like that Amazon putting a um, putting a pride flag on their logo in, in June me- means that Amazon is leftist. It's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> like like yeah, all corporations are actually leftist because in June they have the pride flag. It's like, yeah, like, exactly. That's, that's what leftism that's, is. Le- leftism is when colors. That's really kind of a good metaphor for what the Chibnall era of Doctor Who is. It's like rainbow capitalism. It's like pander. Yeah. It's pandering capitalism. Like they they saw an opportunity to make money by pandering. It turned. It ended up backfiring because the show was sucked too hard for the pandering to work. <laughs> but then again, yeah. no, there is there is there there are corners of um. 13th Doctor Defenders on Twitter. I love them. Love those corners of Twitter. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. One of them... Some of them found my video ranking the Doctors and got mad at me not only for putting the 13th Doctor last, but for criticizing Putin's invasion of Ukraine. So... That was a specific person, though. That was a specific person. Yeah, I can't, I can't imagine that's a huge demographic of people it's who a, did that. It's kind of a weird demographic, honestly, <laughs> that exists, apparently. But, I don't know, that's some of my, the interactions I've had with them. But anyways. No, so there, are some, there, are some, there are some people who, there are some, I mean, you know, there's people on Stan Twitter of all kinds of Stan Twitter who believe all kinds of crazy things, and all kinds of stands, and all kinds of, well, I guess, just, you know, whatever, right? There are people who believe crazy things is actually, I feel, the only thing of of meaning I was saying there, so let's just move on. Yeah. <laughs> so, see, yeah, Series 11 just does not have any, like, good episodes. Did you know that Chris Chibnall admitted that the, the Battle of Ranscor Avkalos is bad? I did. <laughs> he admitted it's bad and then said it was the first draft, so that's why it was bad, guys, so don't go too hard on me. And I could not fucking yeah, believe Yeah, but also, why that. were all the other were all of the other episodes also the first draft? Also, like, I don't get why it. did you submit a first draft and admit that you submitted a first draft for the series finale of your first season of Doctor Who? Why did you do that? <laughs> well, I guess it was like time constraints or something. I guess yeah, he would have. But uh, apparently, I guess that's an admission that he would want to. He would have wanted to make more changes to it. Didn't get the opportunity. For all that you can criticize Moffat for, he never submitted 
a first, at least as far as we know, we never he never submitted a first draft for any scripts when he was writing Doctor Who and Sherlock at the same time. And there were more episodes per season at that point too. Well, it's like, uh, I don't know, like, so, okay, Battle of Rounds of Colors was a first draft. Was It Takes You Away a first draft? It, I mean, was Arachnids a first draft? Most of these... Was Rosa a first draft? Most of them feels like first drafts. So yeah, I, I, honestly, the woman who it takes to... you away feels more like a first draft than anything. Like yeah, but the... it takes you away is like why did it like okay let's make all like the first thing you want to do with it takes you away is let's make all of the obvious changes okay um let's let's make it so that there isn't a ten minute section in the middle that has nothing to do with the story. Mm -hmm. Like, like that's the first thing you're moving and when you're redrafting stuff the woman who fell to earth is one of the only chibnall episodes and it's not like good but it's one of the only chibnall episodes that doesn't feel like a first draft to me no yeah it, it feels um everything sort of connects um in a way that could be satisfying there's pacing and the episode setting doesn't change to egypt halfway through and then hong kong <laughs> <laughs> that 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 really became a problem in series 12 though <laughs> series 11 is kind of exempt from a lot of the the more pressing Chibnall issues, because the, the thing about Series Eleven is there was a pitch that Chibnall made to the, to the, to the masses about what Series Eleven was going to be. He was like, "I'm reeling the show in. It's going to be a little bit. It's going to focus a little bit more on um, social issues. It's going to have more. The, it's going to have a more of a realistic tone to it. Uh, there's going to be no classic monsters at any point. Only new monsters. So we're not retreading. There's, it's not fan service. It's going to be its own thing." And even though I didn't like Sears 11, I kind of respected that. Like, no, it yeah, yeah. wasn't relying on Daleks too. or anything. It, it was standing on its own two feet. It you wasn't know, ruining anything other than the Doctor. It wasn't ruining any lore, and that's why I think it's the least offensive S Chibnall series. And I mean, I, it was ruining the Doctor's character. Yeah, but that's, but, happened, yeah. that's happened before, and that's fixable. <laughs> that's true. Whereas what Chibnall's gone and done in series 12, a little bit harder to fix. Not that it's unfixable, but a little bit Let's just fix. ignore it forever. <laughs> That's what they did with him being half human. <laughs> that was their exactly. strategy for that, and it actually worked. So, Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't disagree. That is what should be done. <laughs> But Same the, thing. But the thing is, like, it was more overt with The Timeless Child. With the movie, it was just, like, a few offhand remarks, which technically... The Doctor said it as a kind of a joke at one point. So you could count... You, that's not necessarily proof of being half-human. And at one point, the Master yeah, but no, you thinks do have, he's half-human. You do have the no, Master... No, 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 I know. The ma I'm getting to that. The Master thinks he's half-human. But what if the Master was just wrong? <laughs> that's my reading. I never thought of it The like Master that. was just wrong. <laughs> and dumb and the doctor actually played a prank on him back when they were friends to make him think they were half human and never told him it was just an elaborate practical joke sure i mean it's technically well, I, I always thought it would be funny to have like a line where the doctor just goes and then i told the master i was half human yeah, exactly me too i've literally i've imagined that exact line before like <laughs> Just like, and then I made him think I was half human, and he then he made an entire scheme around that, LMAO, <laughs> fucking idiot. Yeah, and like, and then that's just like an incidental line that you that you bring that you like a scene opens with. <laughs> oh wait, th that's a way to solve the timeless trial too. Just open an episode with, like, the it's just the master hangout with like whoever the master's friends with and be like, and then I convinced her that she was actually some kind of all powerful God figure from another universe by like showing her like, like fake memories. Like she totally bought it. Like I gave her a whole identity yeah. crisis. Oh, it was hilarious. I also made her think I destroyed all of Gallifrey somehow by myself. The thing is I like, I, I like the potential more of like, I think that Gallifrey being, like, not totally gone, but, like, just absolutely ruined is the best place it could be in for the, like, for, for potential future stories. Do you think that Russell T. Davies, just as a competent writer, will, will, will knows deep down how bad Chibnall was? Because he doesn't yes. say it. Like, and do you think that he will try to undo the Timeless Child? No. I, I, I think he'll just ignore it. But I, I, because yeah. I think he wants to show, he doesn't want to show that much disrespect to Chibnall by just 
undoing his thing. But at the same time, I think someone should. <laughs> and it, not, I don't not, think it'll be an overt undoing, but there might be something. Yeah, I agree. Not in a respectful way. I don't think there should be a whole episode like retreading the timeless child oh, yeah. arc. I think it should just be an offhand remark, like like some, something like what we we're just joking about, like, like the, the thing that we just said. Yeah, like the master's being like, and then I tricked you into thinking you're a timeless child, LMAO. And the thing is, whilst that theoretically makes a lot of things in Chibnall's era not make sense, Chibnall making the Doctor of the Timeless Child was taking a giant shit o- all over all other kinds of plot arcs that don't make sense if the Doctor is the Timeless Child. Yeah. Like, if regeneration is just harvested from the Doctor's DNA, and the only way you can get the ability to regenerate is have some of the Doctor's dna in you then then but river song and how the, the fuck the did river song related. yeah how did river song become a time lord just by being well then place? then then she must be the doctor's daughter yeah that means the doctor did fuck amy <laughs> i guess yeah i guess that's the current canon that's the current canonically correct reading of, of series six because the only thing that makes Joy. sense so she did cuck rory so she was talking about the doctor on that recording yeah and also the doctor <laughs> fucked his daughter oh yeah that's that's not i forgot about that part of it for a second yeah (laughs) that's not good (laughs) that's not good but then again the doctor's already fucked his daughter in real life in in you know the doctor's daughter the episode like she (laughs) she married david Tennant. like she is peter davidson's daughter and she married (laughs) i know what you meant but just the way that you (laughs) phrased that was hilarious (laughs) the doctor fucked his daughter in real life i don't know what to say man it's already happened so it has (laughs) Someone chat said Moffat playing 4D chess. <laughs> yeah, that that was Moffat's gambit all along. He just wanted to somehow write an incest plot, but not get the backlash of doing it, because he's such a devious little rascal. He is a very devious little rascal. That's the best way to sum him up, I think. It's clear that we really don't want to talk about series eleven. <laughs> I mean, it's it's bad. It's, it's bad, bad, but it's not like it doesn't. I mean, it is offensive, but it's, not in the ways it's that it's boring. Bad. That's the thing about it. Like, there's not much to talk well, about. But sometimes it's bad, bad though. Like, well, Arachnids in the UK. Yeah, that one's funny, bad. <laughs> and like, a lot of them are like, as soon as you think about them, it's like, what the fuck is going on here? Actually, no, it t- totally makes sense. The Doctor would want the spiders to have a, a humane death. No, that's starving. not. Even, that's not one that's when you think about it. That's one that you can see from the off. But yeah. what I'm saying like, uh, Demons of the Punjab. It takes you away. It's like bad when you think about it. It's like I haven't actually hey, should thought that ab- guy who abused his blind daughter have any repercussions? No, actually. Oh yeah, right. I actually I was thinking about that when I was watching it. <laughs> um, no. Will will she will will he be held accountable? Will he apologize? No. It, like an apology would be the bare minimum of what he little, should have had to he, go through. It seemed like he felt a little bad about it. Maybe. That's all that was required. And it's like, the fucking... That plot is so just like, oh, you wanted this story to happen, didn't you? So you wrote those words. Um, Like, hey, he wants to go to, like, this alternate dimension that he's discovered. Sure. Um, and But, like, that's no different from him having, like, a, a very serious reason that he wants to leave the house for a few days in any other situation, right? Like... The only he wants to leave the house for a few days at a time. So the way that he decides to do that is to scare his daughter <laughs> into not leaving the house by rigging up a sound system to play monster noises and boarding up his own house so that she believes there's monsters everywhere. Um like this this like the only way to ease someone into that plot is to have it be so that, like, they think it's real monsters too when they're first... Like, if you tell someone that that's just the story of the episode from the off, they're going like, no, that's stupid. What What are you talking about? You... Um, but because when you start watching that episode, you think there are real monsters, the, the reveal that actually they're fake doesn't immediately go, oh, no, that's, that's silly. You have to think about it. Yeah. Also, chat is asking me if I think Moffat hired Chibnall to cover his tracks, and I say yes. 100 <laughs> percent it was a, it was part of a scheme it's a very clever scheme because he's a schemey boy it really has made him look better in hindsight <laughs> it has um am i going to make what happened doctor who part three um i i probably 
I probably will actually make a video about Doctor Who, but it, but it it won't be what happened to Doctor Who Part Three. It will probably be just a video about Chris Chibnall in general, and I'm going to talk about Broadchurch as well in that because I don't understand how Ooh. how it's possible that Broadchurch is good. I've not. I've not Have you seen it. Broadchurch? Only the first episode, but I, I'm going to watch the whole show. But I liked the first episode, and I've heard people say that the whole show was really good. And from I've seen little snippets and such here and there, and it, it looks good. And I'm like, how is that possible? This is written by the man that wrote not only his era of Doctor Who, but Cyber Woman. He, <laughs> all the worst episodes of Torchwood are his too. Like anything he touches, Doctor Who related is. I thought there are some. There are some that are his that are like are supposed to be good. Like isn't like Countryside one of his or something? Right. Or like yeah. No. Drift? That that one. That one is one exception i kind of like that one what's clever about that one is it's like doctor who is always a series about evil aliens invading earth and something that was always in the back of my head is like what if something seemed like aliens but it was just really fucked up humans you know because humans are fucked up humans can do evil stuff like what if the doctor just stopped yeah humans and it wasn't a doctor who episode but there it's a torchwood episode where it seems like something supernatural is going on in this town and it turns out it's just a bunch of cannibals and it, it's genuinely a good episode. So congrats, Chibnall, on that. Yay! We did it! We did it! Uh, I hope you, you address Cyberwoman in that video, though. <laughs> I, I'll talk about Cyberwoman. Oh, and the sex gas one! <laughs> that's the second episode of the series, too. So that's the first episode he wrote for, for Torchwood. That Watching that, I watched that with my roommate, and it was... It, it was uh we were laughing very hard the whole time the, the the gwen at one point despite knowing that the the sex gas thing kills you they have it like in quarantined at the torchwood headquarters and then she just goes in and yeah yeah starts I, forcibly starts forcibly making out with her <laughs> You've seen it recently, okay? Yeah, so you and know. the sex gas woman says no, and Gwen is like, "No, actually, I've de I've decided to reject that no and assault you." We're I'm, we're, we're gonna um, kiss whether you like it or not, evil demon. Yeah, uh, there's also I mean, it's just like the such like Torchwood Jank, like Torchwood series one Jank. It's like when they fucking open the uh, little crates they have of tools, it makes like a a technical noise when it's just a box. They open a box and it goes <laughs> like like a like a like a a technical whirring and you're like why did you do the cars have leds like just glued to them i find it really um, funny sometimes how torchwood series one and two versus three and four are like just different shows they're just not the same yeah show. you also have um like a, a meteorite hits like the earth and what gwen that the, the meteorite survives being hit hitting the earth and then Gwen throws like a spanner at the meteorite and it crumbles. <laughs> Gwen is really smart in the in series one of Torchwood. She's genius. Well, then she acts like that that was her fault the whole time. Is that the sex gas was her fault because she threw a spanner at a guy who asked her to throw a spanner. Um and it hit the meteorite, and then the meteorite just like crumbled under the sheer force did, of that spanner. Did he ask her to throw it? I don't actually remember. Yeah, I think I think so. I think I think so. My memory is that she just like th throws it. I remember her just like I think someone asked her to pass something. And I remember her throwing it really aggressively and it Maybe. hit a wall. I don't know. I remember Gwen. Gwen like everything for the first few episodes of the show. Like everything is Gwen's fault. <laughs> like Gwen is except re not really. That's not. There's no way that that actually was Gwen's fault. Okay, but it was Gwen's fault to go in when the sex demon was in containment to just yeah that was gwen's fault then... no but there's like i'm trying to remember what else she does she like she it almost makes you wonder why they keep her around almost oh fuck it I, i'm I, I don't actually care how gwen fucked up we're supposed to be talking about series 11 oh yeah well i mean <laughs> you know actually it's, it's I think f we've talked yeah yeah it's f it's f series 12 is series 11 again but there's a shit plot arc F. Mm -hmm. All right. Wait, which one's se series? Uh, this is 11. Okay. F. Okay. So now series 12. Um, The timeless child is like, I think actually like the, I feel like the timeless children is the normie choice for the worst episode of the show, but it also is orphan 55 would like no, to have a orphan chat. 55 is average. 
it's Chibnall not average. It's oh, ch- n- uh, it's just so it's just preachy, so people notice. I think it's actually it's it's horrifically it's, bad on top. Like, dude, the, it's the, the same. I mean, they're all horrifically the bad. Like, it's the same thing as like uh, the side characters are so well, yeah. Bad. So um, they're the same. The side. It's the same kind of side characters that you see in stuff like the Sarangan Conundrum, where they have like one character trait that they like one outstanding problem that they resolve by the end of the story because th- magic. I uh, like like there's this guy Silas who has a son. They don't get along so good, but then the end of the episode they do actually, and it's fine. How the fuck um, did you remember the same his as in... name? Look, I remember a lot of crazy things. <laughs> um, I don't I don't even think the writer of that episode remembers his name. <laughs> I think he forgot that he was even in the episode halfway through because they just stopped look, talking and being involved in the story until the very end. I have a very, very good memory for these episodes because they have consumed my life I for six months. I made a video about Orphan 55 and don't remember his name. <laughs> um, there's also, I mean, um, yeah, like, Saranga Conundrum is basically just the same thing. Like, the, the side characters are just as weak. No, I think that one's, I think Orphan 55 is a bit worse. Though I, I agree that Saranga Conundrum is quite terrible and is just them running through corridors <laughs> from a CGI monster. But Orphan 55 is like, Orphan 55 has an old woman yelling Benny the whole time. It has, it has a a side character who's like this like military woman who it turns out is actually the long lost mom of this other girl who's like falls in love with Ryan and they have this terrible, like laughably bad romance. (laughs) <laughs> they, they, they do, that's, that's exactly how it feels to watch the, the Serang conundrum. Like, they have all the same kind of side characters. Okay, where it's but like, are, I'm do, actually an android, do and they... I have, like, this rare disease. I have a rare disease that, 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 I, that, I don't, that I don't take care of myself with. But actually, my brother is here, and he's, his, his, he, he's told me to take care of my disease, so I will. It's, like, the same stuff. It's, like, extremely shallow, like, but does um, Durango... drama bait side characters who are like whoa their stories have anything as dumb as the dregs and like in terms of concept or how they look no dude the the pating is not as stupid as the dregs it's not i guess so yeah first of all even the the idea that global warming turns us into dregs somehow or the fact that they actually look like monsters from the 70s like visibly people wearing rubber costumes where you can see the, yeah. like the stitches between, like the little the different pieces of costume they're wearing. It's. I thought it was the most embarrassing monster design I'd seen in the Chibnall era until I saw the Sea Devils. Hey, hey, the Sea Devils look good in like some of the shots <laughs> when they're not breathing. <laughs> when you don't yeah. see that uh that breathing effect <laughs> that they added on to those. Uh, um, but I guess yeah, we'll get to series thirteen when we get there. Um, series twelve is just it's a I like it. Spyfall is so bad. <laughs> that's the that's yes. I think that's is that the first Chibnall episode where he was like, okay, we're in Madrid. Okay, now we're in Angola. Yeah, it is. It <laughs> yeah, is. that 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 was the beginning of. If I just set the episode in a bunch of locations, they kind of do it in. Um, they they do the title card thing in resolution, but they don't do it. They don't like location hop. Mm-hmm. Because well, that's the thing is, um, Spyfall is trying to like, and I don't know why. I don't know why they're like, let's do a James Bond parody, but, but also they drop it's supposed that. to be a serious story about serious. They yeah, forget. They forget the to party. even make it a James Bond story the whole way through. <laughs> but, like there are some moments where they have like, like they have like Graham's like subplot with the laser shoes, which is very funny. Um, <laughs> it's it's just supposed to be fun. It's like it's like. You could be doing serious drama with this, but instead you've decided to make jokes about how he Graham has laser, has shoes. laser <laughs> shoes. And also, though, none of those jokes are funny Here, The best anyway. part is, on paper, the idea of Graham having laser shoes, I actually think, could have been really funny. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just imagining him, imagining him, like, chasing bad guys shooting lasers from his shoes. And that's a really funny yeah, yeah. image. And they didn't take advantage of it. But it's, it's, like, it's like an in-universe parody. It's like, Hey, aren't James Bond movie gadgets stupid? Well, you're su- your I gadgets you were building just... like a world. Yeah, you're building like this is a part of a world that I'm expected to take at least semi seriously here. Like I'm, expo- I'm ex- this isn't just a parody series. This isn't like Austin Powers, right? <laughs> yeah. I am supposed to be invested in the drama of these characters. Like you're supposed, I'm supposed to like go big wow, at, like um, 
a, a character returning in this same episode. So like, what's funny? They could have had. Am I not supposed to care about the drama now? They, Is it just a parody? They could have had an actual excuse for equipment like that they could have just had an explanation that the doctor like made those as a joke which is the kind of thing the doctor would do when they're bored just like you know i've watched your james bond movies and there are a lot of dumb gadgets and you know i am like five million years old so i just you know in my spare time i just made these and now they're the only things we have so now we have to use them <laughs> I, I don't know yeah <laughs> so it's like any kind of explanation I'm, sure. I'm not saying that's great um, but it's like an explanation or like or the doctor then, like the, the um the Duan Master is bad. Uh, no, no fault of Sasha Duan's though. He's great. Um, I, I hated. Well, I still hate the the Duan Master, but at the same time, I also love the Duan Master, especially in um, the the last episode, I the Power of the Doctor, because he's so fucking hilarious. <laughs> like he's not a good. He's so master, much. But he's so funny. Like well. Here's the thing, right, is I, I have no, like, problem with a villain like him existing. I don't think he should be the master, but I'm, I'm happy with, like, a villain like that to exist. Because um, his whole thing is, like, wanting attention. He's, like, a little attention-seeking little bitch boy. Um, <laughs> he's, like... And, like, nothing is... Like, that's emphasized so much in the um, in the Power of the Doctor, where the, the best thing he can think to say to, like, Kate Stewart is, by the way, your dad is stupid. And you're, like, <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> And That's what I'm saying. What, like this, he, what this character desperately needs is to be paired with a doctor who will make fun of him rather than one who will take him extremely seriously in everything he says for no clear reason, which is what 13 is. Can you imagine how much the ninth doctor would roast the fuck out of <laughs> Sasha Duan's master? Yeah. <laughs> like, just like, like laugh in his face at his like weird quips. Yeah, Night Sox would make Sasha Dewan's master cry. <laughs> There's a line I remember in The Timeless Children, which made me burst out laughing. N not for reasons intentional, when like he was he he's explained the doctor that he destroyed Gallifrey. And he's like about to show the doctor the truth about the Tom's child, and he's like, Let's roll out the red carpet, and then he leans in the doctor's ear and he's like, It's red because it's soaked in the blood of our people. I think that Nine would just punch him. <laughs> Like I genuinely no, think nine, that nine, nine would just punch would, him in the my, face. Nine would burst out laughing and then punch him well laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that, sure. But I don't know, like the time time lord shit is like a uh, I guess it's a pressure you know, point a big for him. trigger for nine, right? Yeah. But the thing is, um as far as he knew they were all dead, so them still being dead wouldn't necessarily no, I think I think it would fuck with him. It's like they mm -hmm. were alive, but you killed them? Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna punch you now. <laughs> I, I mean, think I mean, like, that's genuinely the closest you could have got to having the Doctor beat a villain to death. <laughs> realistically, uh, if you're asking for my realistic opinion of what the Night Doctor would do, wouldn't be laugh and then punch him while laughing. <laughs> but the funny, like, the like, funny most version of the things of what... that the Duan Master does, I think it would just be like Nine would just roast the shit out of him, as would like most Doctors. Six would obliterate him. Four would obliterate him. Uh, can you imagine? How my, no, uh, four. I take it back. Four would just make him feel so stupid by proxy. Yeah, like the, like he was the kind of guy where when someone asked him to like pointing gun at him, asked him to turn around, he would just do a full three sixty. Yeah, <laughs> like he would so like um, he would just make you feel dumb, it, like, like by being around. Well, that's him. what nine, nine would do that kind of thing as well. Like not to the same extent, but nine would do that kind of thing. And uh -huh. yeah, not like um, as much as they would be taking the threat presented by this master seriously, they wouldn't take him as a person seriously. No. He, they would. So all of them, like basically all of them, would see right through his like attention seeking little displays of being like, Oh, look at me, I'm lashing out. Don't you want to like talk to me now? No, the fourth uh, doctor... Aren't I crazy and bad? Um, I think the Times Children is the worst episode of the show. Maybe, maybe some of the it's, it's um, it is just like a nothing burger, but also at the same time, extremely insulting. Like, it doesn't actually have a story of its own. It's just being like, hey, lore, am I right? But then all of the lore is bad. Uh-huh. No, it's, um, it's, it's the way but I it don't, just... I don't... The way it just takes a poo on the whole show, the whole show's lore before that point. It's like, well, yeah. my version is more important because when I was a kid, I watched The Brain of Morbius and there were other faces before the first Doctor. So... That's that confirms it. It's literally, it's literally, it's literally fan fiction being inserted into the show. 
it is pretty much um yeah it doesn't it doesn't work at all what other episodes do we have i mean they're all bad except for the does villa does villa die die being good though push it over series 11 no in my it's like fair enough okay <laughs> heaven sent wasn't enough to save series 9 i don't think that's enough to save series yeah but 12. i mean series 11 also doesn't have any good episodes in it right like that's yeah, but series twelve having one and then a lot of one putrid good episode episodes. is more than none. But I think it <laughs> it has more putrid episodes than series eleven does. I think that a lot of these episodes in series eleven are just as putrid. They're just not as like overtly, obviously offensive. But they it's like you have to dig to find the putrid, but it's still there in just the same amount. Uh huh. Um. But I don't know, I'm happy. I'm happy to put it above. Uh, above uh, sorry, I'm happy to put it below series eleven as well. It's like, um, yeah, because Villa Die Die is such an anomaly. It's not like, it's not like watch the season for this episode. If you're gonna watch the episode, then watch the episode. But don't watch. You don't have to watch the season to see it. Yeah. And like, just like. But this is an this is a case another case by the way where the the season finale had a part one that wasn't good but for Chibnall standards was okay Ascension of the Cybermen no. and then fell apart in Tom's Treasure no 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 for Chibnall standards Ascension of the Cybermen is even way that, like I don't know it just sort of like sells people on its existence because it is just sort of a runabout but like the character writing is still like abysmal the. It's it's so like empty and hollow. There's nothing to it. It's just sort of like Cybermen running around, like all of the same uh, tribunal problems are there. It, it it's just but like it's easier to forgive because it like more closely resembles something that's good. No, but I, I sorry, I wasn't trying to say that it's good. I was trying to say that it is far better than part two. Is what I meant. Just like that. Oh, and it is better that, than part that two. Pattern, that's, that's true. That's all I meant. I was just trying to say the pattern. Of having a part okay, one fair enough that's then, better yeah. remained. And for, like, for I'm not Chib sure that I would say that it's good for a Chibnall story. For a Chibnall story, I think it's one of the less bad ones. I don't I don't again, I think it's a bad episode, but when we're like comparing it to other Chibnall ones, like I don't know, I think it's not one of the worst ones. Just because it's like inoffensive, I guess. Hmm. Maybe. I can't. I don't know. It's not. I, it's not that important. I can't think of much to roast about it. I guess this is the. I, I can. I can. I. I can do. I can do a big roast of that. Episode. Maybe the fact that I don't remember much about it though is why I feel this way. Maybe if I watch it again, I would hate it. It, it really doesn't stack up. Like there's very little about it that stacks up. This series is the series that has the moment in "Can You Hear Me" um, when the doctor is tied up. And launches a sonic screwdriver out of her pocket into her hand. Yeah, or maybe more really accurately, hard. I could should say she uses the force to summon the sonic yeah. screwdriver. <laughs> and I mean, it also has the hate crime moment. If, and the hate crime moment. I was just the point I was trying to get at with the sonic screwdriver is like, how did that make it to air? How did the whole team watch that and be like, this looks good? This is professional. But the the hate crime moment is more of a writing oopsie. It's more of a Chris Chibnall not thinking through well, I, I think it's like you, you write that like you write that she's cuffed like by her hands are cuffed like by her pocket right like you but she's cuffed like her hands are low and and then i i could i could buy that it's just in the script that her hands like the the script doesn't go into like particular detail right it just says her, her hands are cuffed and she's like tied up uh -huh. And then she like shimmies the screwdriver out of her pocket into her hand, right? Which makes sense as a thing to write. But then when they actually designed the set, they designed it so that her hands were way above her pockets and like it was impossible. Yeah. <laughs> but then I, they didn't I, think I, to I change buy that that's it. how it happened. But like yeah. even so, how did they make it look that bad? <laughs> like it's like it's it's one of it's one of the universe's great mysteries. Another one of the universe's great mysteries, mix, mysteries is how mysteries. the script for Praxius was approved for shooting. And I that, don't it, believe that it's, it's that it's much or even like at all better than Ultimate Fifty Five Praxius. I I actually kind of agree that Praxius is 
one of the worst. It literally is just missing its first act, <laughs> by the way. It just starts part way through the story. <laughs> I love that you never even find out why the doctor and the fam are even interested or even know about this mystery. We never find out what led yeah. them onto this. They're just well, I'm, already... I'm, I'm fine with like, I'm fine with that kind of thing. Having like a story start halfway through. If it's, you I, know, if, if, if you the, find the out, what begins, the, yeah, if you find out what the start was through the episode, but you don't in praxis, you never, you never find out what even happened to m- get them like down this path. <laughs> of investigating this they're just i know because they because they are like characters who very much just like yeah they investigate things that's what they do i'm fine with like us having a story that begins with they are already investigating a thing and how they found out about it isn't important they just did okay accept it because that's the kind of thing they do um like the the, it's just i don't know it's just really bad like it's just really hollow right it's just I don't know. It's just bad. It's just very bad. Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's not necessarily just that we don't find out how they knew, because like I can see that working theoretically, but also just like pacing wise, it doesn't feel. It just doesn't work the way that. No, yeah, the pacing into. does feel off. It just. It really does feel like turning on episode partway through. And not knowing. Yeah, I'll second that. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> the, the the climax of that episode is a. Uh, not good. <laughs> Not as bad as it. Uh, can you hear me though? Can you hear me? Liter- it, it, literally, I think they ran out of time in that one. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> that's that was a weird one. I don't even know what happened. <laughs> I still like the doctor is just like, oh, by the way, uh, actually, you guys are trapped in prison forever now. And they're like, what? And then they're trapped in prison forever. And I don't even. Um, what happens that happened. is the doctor says L plus ratio, and then she wins. <laughs> the doctor's like cope harder, <laughs> and then. They're just like, damn it. Yeah, we lost. So, yeah, all in all, Series 12 is worse than 11, I think. I think that uh, that's what I... I I'll, I'll happily... Uh, I'm happy to second you on that. I think each Chibnall series is worse than the last. And that brings yeah, us to... Yeah, because Flux is the worst. To Flux. Uh, where you have entire arcs that, like, just... It, it, like, entire, like, 20, 30-minute subplots of episodes that literally don't matter... You have the unit subplot. You have, like, hey, remember how Yaz and Jericho and Dan are stuck in the past? And then they do this whole thing to get in touch with Carvanista. And Car- the conclusion is Carvanista going, well, I can't do anything about that. Uh-huh. And then they um, and then they happen to solve the problem via unrelated means. That, I'm so glad I watched that whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I, I, I was, uh, when I was watching the the halloween apocalypse i was tallying the amount of random characters that we were cutting to that we didn't know <laughs> just like random side characters um i have it somewhere on my phone i don't remember but from what i remember there's the doctor and yaz there's dan there's um i don't remember his name but gray worm from game of thrones <laughs> who's just in his spaceship there's the skull man there's Skull Lady. There's, yeah. There's that he was one, in the Arctic Circle. He was for in the no Arctic reason. Circle. There's that one woman who gets touched by a weeping angel, and I don't even. I still don't really remember what role she plays in the greater Flux story. I think. Yeah, she doesn't need to be in that. Episode. <laughs> she she can just be introduced in the, uh, in the angel story. It's just like, it's just there's like overtly like we want to get everything in this episode one so that the viewers stay tuned to see see the cool things there's like a a woman and her husband who get killed by the skull lady that for some reason we're following them as pov characters for a little bit first that like just i don't even blame you for not remembering them there's like there's this woman and her husband i barely remember them who like we we cut to them a few times and then the skull lady shows up and kills them is this the bit I I don't remember their names. Wait, or I, I, is this the bit in the Arctic Circle where I don't remember? I don't remember because there is a bit where there's like a married couple and one of they're, they're living in the Arctic Circle because they're like researchers or something. Um, and they like one of them actually turns out to have been Skull Lady. Like yes, no, that's as it. A human, no, that's it. That's that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why it's there. But like, ne- like you know, it's one of those uh. things where it's like okay. In universe, it makes sense that this would happen, right? Because it's like, okay, so 
Skull Lady is here, I guess. The Skull Man needs to go and save Skull Lady because yeah. they, they're friends and they want to be like, they want to do their stuff together. Makes sense. Sure, that follows. But narratively, just have them be imprisoned in the same place. You can cut an entire subplot that adds nothing to the story. Oh, I almost forgot. We also cut to the random uh, woman who is like has like an iPad that she's in love with. Like she's fucking that iPad. And she... So that's that's seven different POV characters that we're just cutting in between. Yeah. Just like spontaneously. And we don't know who like any of them are at initially. And by the way, like in the well, end we start of Fox, out with the guy who's digging holes. That's the first scene is the guy who's digging holes. Who's like a small character in one of the episodes. Oh yeah. It doesn't right. actually really matter. Right. So there's him too. <laughs> oh, and also the guy who forms unit for some reason. Like, yeah, he, we kind of follow him at times. So what is that? Like, nine different so, yeah. <laughs> different POV well, characters it's, it's the same <laughs> it's the same story but it like it's the same all the same problems but suddenly for, for no clear reason it's like abandoned all like everything to do with like structure it's just like no actually we don't need structure what we do need is an episode where we're like what if russians were actually santarans yes <laughs> And the doctor. Why not? If what I re- if I recall correctly, did the doctor ever like reset the universe? Did the doctor ever like fix? No, no. So the flux does end with the universe being destroyed. Yeah, you you are correct. Yeah. So this this stuff is like never really addressed. Like no, is the universe still fucked up like this? Like was it fixed? Um, they just. They just sort of cut to it being fixed in the next episode. They never explain it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, a best part about Flux. They destroyed the universe and then forgot. My favorite thing about Flux is that throughout the beginning of Flux, the TARDIS is, like, breaking. And, like, the door is appearing in weird places. And there's, like, oil leaking out of places. And when Yaz Yaz asks the doctor, she's clearly uncomfortable about it. And she tries to change the subject. And it's like, what's the doctor hiding? What's the doctor? Why is the, is the TARDIS dying? What's going on? And then Chris Chibnall forgot about that, and it never comes up again in Flux. I swear there was a resolution no, to no, that. Th- there, and then in um, the uh, the New Year's episode, the doctor's just like, by the way, I have to reset the TARDIS because it's like messed no, I up. Swear, I swear that there was like. I th- I can't remember what it was, but I swear there was like some resolution to that in flux. It's like it's like really underwhelming. It's like a throwaway line. It's like oh, the TARDIS is breaking because of this, and we fixed it now. Um, and then if, in if that's the, the uh, New Year's I... special, in the New Year's special, it's like um, oh, it's 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 like tar- the TARDIS sustained damage during the flux, so we have to reset it. I think I I need to rewatch all these episodes. Uh, the thing is, it uh, it's possible that during the Vanquishers or survivors of the flux or something that there wasn't really fast offhand comment that explained what was going on with the TARDIS that I just like don't remember (laughs) because it was like an offhand line. But my memory is that there's no real conclusion. There's no like significant satisfactory explanation to what was causing the TARDIS to do that or why the doctor, the doctor clearly knew about it because when Yaz asked her about it, she'd get all uncomfortable and like change the topic does that imply that she like knew about flux all along and like it's, it's <laughs> i i don't know it's it's just the, it's the worst i can accept <laughs> that it's the worst very easily <laughs> i think i think that i mean this is the like the worst run of episodes that dog two has ever had i i agree and i think the the creme de la creme <laughs> of this season is um the sea devils one legend of the sea devils yeah that I think which is, might be the worst single episode. I agree. Uh, what's really funny about that episode is I watched it with my mom. I was like, I was back home just like for that month, and I was like, "Do you want to watch something really bad?" <laughs> and she, for some reason, she was like, "Yes," just out of maybe morbid curiosity for what Doctor Who's like right now. So I turned it on, and there's a part like at the very beginning of the episode when the Doctor walks out of the TARDIS, and then her earring like perks up and like like points her in a direction i don't remember why that happens but i remember i looked at my, i looked at my mom's face and she was literally she literally i i can't recreate it because you can't see me but she 
you know angry video game nerd <laughs> no i've never actually watched any of those videos okay but have you ever seen an image of him like making like the face no okay counter do uh, uh, you know of nostalgia critic <laughs> Yes, do you, but also you, I don't know what the face is. Okay, well, fuck, how am I supposed to... Like, her mouth was, like, open. <laughs> and she looked like... Wait, is uh, that the, the mouth open pointing face? Because uh, I have seen Nostalgic Critic making that face. She wasn't pointing, but she was making, like, a face of, like... Like, cartoonishly exaggerated what the fuck. <laughs> and that was yeah, her I, face I throughout, like, the first third of the episode, and then she fell asleep. It was, like, 1 p.m. <laughs> I don't know how she fell asleep during it. I mean, I get it. I get it. I understand. I, I, I certainly get it. Oh, that is. Anyway, uh, the power of the Doctor is, like, fine for a Chibnall episode, but also very bad. Well, it's really bad and doesn't make sense, and Graham randomly shows up in a volcano with no explanation of how he knew to be in that volcano at that time but you know well i mean you know the ending of the last series of the, the last episode that he was in implied that he was going to go and investigate things of course so so why not have him be naturally there, sure. he's just in the volcano where everything's happening in what is it yeah. like in it's somewhere in remote part of south america he's just there he is <laughs> uh, what i what i find funny the two things i find funniest by that episode is one the fact that they didn't even bother to big, bring Ryan back, or he didn't want to come back? Which I I, I assume that Tosin didn't want to come back. I I assume that my genuine guess is that Tosin Tosin didn't have a good time working on Doctor Who. Yeah, probably. And um, the the way that they just jettison Dan out of out of existence at the beginning of the episode. Oh yeah, that's hilarious. Because Chibnall didn't know what to do with him. That's the most unceremonious ca- companion departure since like. I think Kate in the classic series. I don't remember her name. Or Dodo. I don't remember which one. But one of them who just, like, disappears halfway through a serial. And then someone just says, oh, she left to go be with her family. Because, like, I, the, the the actor just, like, th- she just, like, wasn't clicking. So they just fired her, like, halfway through the serial without writing a departure for her. That That's, like, what Dan's departure is. Yeah. Well, it's like there's so much stuff to do in the episode, so... Except that Chibnall wrote it. That's the difference. The BBC didn't step in and forcibly fire a companion. Chibnall willingly wrote it to be like well, that. Yeah, Chibnall <laughs> willingly put in a character who didn't need to be there for the whole of Flux. Um, <laughs> because Flux needed more stuff to deal with. No, because there needed to be another Graham. There needed to be a replacement Graham. Yeah. Wouldn't have worked otherwise. Of course, it couldn't be Graham, though, because Graham had to leave. Pretty much. Have we done it? We've done it. So just, so Have Flux we... goes on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I would talk more about the plot of Flux, but the plot of Flux makes no sense, and I d- don't remember it because I've jettisoned it out of my mind because it doesn't make sense. The plot of Flux is just is genuinely just like things happen. Why not? Things happen... Like and then the doctor will explain them because because during the Thirteenth Doctor's era, every time something's happened, she explains it like to the audience in layman's terms, which initially was really annoying yeah. and patronizing. But once the the story started making no goddamn sense whatsoever, it kind of started becoming <laughs> it was like mandatory. Necessary. But her explanations are so lightning fast that you still don't catch them. <laughs> like I was, I was, yeah, yeah. I was trying to figure out what was going on at the end of flux so hard <laughs> just didn't make sense how did she win again did she trick them into like they dissolve i remember but i don't remember why i don't remember why they like suck the the flux into the passenger and somehow they protect earth from the flux by just putting a bunch of spaceships around it like right like the the dog guy yeah which works apparently. <laughs> sure, why not? And that that planet had just randomly decided to specifically protect Earth. Unclear why Earth, but like because Earth's special. And you know they sent like one ship for every one human because that's the best way to do things. Mm. 
We could we could roast Flux for hours. Doesn't the Doctor commit like double genocide at the end of Flux? Um, that's one of the criticisms that I'm less bothered about because it's like there were very there, there weren't any other apparent ways out, and also it's the Daleks and the Sidemen who True. like the Doctor has been trying with wiping out and previous stories too. Of all the genocides the Thirteenth Doctor committed, that's one of the okay ones. Yeah, it is. It is. And I guess, I guess that's it then. I guess we did it. Yeah, that only took four hours. <laughs> I mean, you know, the first hour was getting the stream to work. <laughs> that is true. Two false starts, but we got there in the end. We did. We did, and that's what matters, you know. Oh, and by the way, Tom, um, what do I think Russell T Davies will say about Flux? Um, I think that this era will just ignore Flux and everything Chibnall related because I think he has to know that it sucks, <laughs> but he doesn't want to say yeah. it. Like I remember, in, I've seen there were interviews where he was saying Power of the Doctor was really good and a great ending to Chibnall's era, but he didn't want to talk about it at all. Like he would di immediately divert the conversation away from Chibnall's era after just saying, "Oh yeah, it's good." He did also shit on it once. Um, really, I didn't even know that. Yeah, um, he shit on like the Timeless Child once on Twitter. He was like, uh, it was it was like a rewatch event for uh, for 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 Journey's End or or Stolen Earth. It, yeah, Stolen Earth. And he was like, yeah, this is like a lot less exciting now that you know there are like a million doctors who could answer this call, huh? Damn, that's uh, I can't believe I didn't know that. Respect to Russell T Davies, it just went up. Well, it's like yeah, um. And because, you know, there's such a culture of professional courtesy, which I do understand of like, don't shit on like this thing that your friend made if you want to get work. <laughs> um, yeah, I get it. Um, but for him to even say that is pretty crazy. Uh huh. Do you think it would be worth just for show putting Series 11 in E? Like, j like. It would stay in the same place in the no. overall ranking. No, no, to to emphasize how bad twelve and thirteen are. Maybe I, I don't think so. No, I, I think that I think they're pretty equivalent. Like, mm, okay, fair enough. Not that I think I mean, eleven isn't terrible. Okay. It's just I I do think twelve and thirteen, especially thirteen, are like on like an, a new level. Of I think thirteen. I mean, I think they're all on. I think they're both on a new level, but that thirteen <laughs> is like you know. I think the twelve is like a midpoint between the two, really. Yeah, we can just we can we can leave it. No, I agree. I I think no, I think each is worse than the last, but I, I do think um eleven of the three is the only one that has some like redeeming qualities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, okay, well then that's it then. <clears throat> so in yeah. in S, just to recite everything, in S we got series four and series one. Which I feel like it's a widely agreeable opinion. It is very much so. Yes, Tom, you were right about the stream lasting five hours. <laughs> Congratulations. Also, at, there were a lot of people in chat at one point. At this point, it's basically just you. <laughs> That's what happens when you do four hours. You win. Stream. You won, Tom. You win. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's S. In A, we got series five and series three. Again, fair. I, th those are two very enjoyable series. I think that that's fair. In B, we got series two. In C, we got series ten, series f six, and series eight. In D, we got series. Where we're going to be controversial? Probably like the C and D here. The C and D zone is like the only, the only people where people, the only like zone where people are going to be like, hmm. Oh, you're you're still here, cheese. Okay, thank you for. Thanks for letting us know. And you too, Andrew. <laughs> I'm yeah. still here. Yeah, and Jay's still here. So <laughs> And um Yeah, I think no, it'll be controversial that we put series ten this low because it's really it's really well liked. Now Yeah. I I, I, think I mean it's, over. it's controversial on this panel that we put series ten this low. And that's higher than I wanted to put it. By the way, if you just want, yeah, that, that, is, how, how that my, is how democracy my goes. controversial, how controversial my opinion on series ten is. I wanted to put that shit in D, so be thankful that Jay's here. Well, actually, no, I, I might have put it in C, but it would have been below six and eight if it was just up to me. 
Um, yeah. yeah, so in in D we got series nine, and that is only above series seven because of Heaven Sent. That's the one episode carries it up a whole tier. Um then yeah, E we got series seven. Self explanatory. It's cringe as fuck. And then in F we got all the Chibnall seasons. Yay, we did it. <laughs> New Who is kind of overrated. I yeah, I guess at this point there is there are more seasons that I don't like than I like. I guess <laughs> overall in New Who, but never f- never forget how much bad stuff there is in Classic Who too. That's just kind of how Doctor yeah. Who is. It's just like it's a roller coaster, you know. You, you gotta be you gotta accept that there's gonna be you know lame moments where you're you're, you're slowly climbing up the. Uh, the hill before you get to go down on the drop and actually have fun. I mean, I like, I like, you know, uh, all four of the RTD seasons, two of the six Moffat seasons and none of the, uh, Chibnall seasons. Yeah. That's, that's a, that's a fair take. I can't believe I, I didn't, I didn't appreciate series 10 for being not, garbage when it came out as much as i still don't like it as much as most people it really it really was a slightly a return to form before things really fell off again i i'm um, you know i let's not fight <laughs> we'll not fight <laughs> there's a storm of ruin in me there's, there isn't really a, i'm not much of a an angry streamer but I am an angry streamer, and I will declare that Series 10 is overrated he- here and now. And no one will change my mind. So, yeah. <laughs> That's it. I was, I was, I was like, mid-yawn there, and I, <laughs> so I couldn't really reply. This is indeed a very boring stream, so I don't blame you. <laughs> so true. Uh no, yeah, I'm just, I'm uh, just tired. What do you guys what do you guys think? Do you think this is a good tier list? Do you think this is a bad tier list? I mean, I feel like it's going to be a relatively uncontroversial tier list. I mean, yeah, for the for the most part we we generally agreed with the uh <laughs> the masses. <laughs> but I mean, there are certain things like um where we put series 10 and where we put series nine that would probably and yeah. may- maybe series two that would piss people off i don't know i feel like people are gonna be like okay it's above all of like the bad seasons so yeah maybe on I, the scale it, it's like people there might be some people who would say it's better than any moffat season like series one two three four sorry sorry series one three four and five are like the popular ones no one's gonna get mad yeah. like that one of those is above season two, even if season two is like their favorite season. Yeah. Everyone like understands. Yeah, fair enough. Um, and you know we might get some like Thazzy mad, I guess. Yeah, right, we, we never talked about Thazman, right? I said I was, we were, I said I was going to get there when we got there, and then never did. But honestly, I don't even know how much there is to be said other than it just didn't go anywhere. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't really work. It's just, uh, I don't know why the Doctor... It's like what I was saying with Rose. I don't sp- know why the Doctor specifically likes Yaz that much more than any other companions. And I, um, But unlike with Rose, there's no resolution. It just doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, she's told, um, please go away now, and then she does. The Doctor just really doesn't want to be gay. So true. Chibnall could, you know, the thing about, again, like, this era is supposedly the woke one, but Chibnall wants to shy away from any form of significant reputation that goes beyond just tokenism. I guess making uh, the Doctor a woman was the one example of, like, going, like, actually going with it. But other than I'm not that, sure that it's fair to call it tokenism, because, I mean, like, a lot of his significant characters are, like, you know, there's a very diverse roster of, like, main characters, but the problem is that they don't actually feel like people, so it feels like tokenism. Well, that's kind of what I mean. I also mean that, like, there are certain things, like, doesn't Ryan have a disability? 
He does, yeah. But it's like never. And that does feel like he might as well fair, not. Yeah. yeah, it's and like or the 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 gate. But that's thing is what is it, it, it only feels like it only feels like tokenism because it's so poorly done. Like in his character, it really doesn't feel like he wanted to tell a story about like a disabled character. It feels like, but like, you know, a, a lot of stuff in there feels like that. Uh, it, it it's all, like the arc about him being disabled and coming to terms with his is like his disability or whatever, right? is on par with like all of the other character stuff in the show but it feels like tokenism because there's like a motivation that you could ascribe to it that would explain it being there but i don't think that you can do that when all of the show is like that yeah but i, I don't know it, to me it feels like chibnall wasn't really interested in in telling these stories he just he 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 did it but he didn't really want to do it or like he didn't really have like yeah, but like that kind of that kind of feels like, like a lot of his era feels like that. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. Like that is what a lot of his era feels like. Like maybe maybe deep down he actually wanted to like give representation. His heart really wasn't the right place, but he just wasn't a good enough writer to like make it work, and it just accidentally came out feeling like tokenism. I I don't know. I feel I feel like I've sort of like sworn off um speculating about what happened behind the scenes because there is so much that can happen like as much as i like to blame chibnall it, it is just sort of a meme now like i don't actually know what happened maybe that maybe it was all someone else's fault who knows maybe the bbc did um forced him to work in a way that was really not conducive michael to great is back producing something good he's trying to kill the show once again yeah That's exactly the, the real lore yeah but i yeah fair enough um that being said, I think if if there are problems with the way the show is being produced or treated by the BBC, calling that out on a wide scale could possibly lead to it. Oh yeah, I mean, is better. It, it's important to like call out the quality of the show, you know. Yeah. Uh, but the the speculation about like what the motivation is and um, like who is to blame, I think is. Um, is, is a lot trickier because you know unless you're actually there and unless you're behind the scenes and you know what's actually going on there it is difficult to say a lot of the time whose fault stuff is and why because uh -huh. like i remember what i remember when i first talked about series 11 i blamed a lot of the actors because there were a lot of poor performances in it that i, I felt and then I, I remember hearing a rumor i can't remember who i heard this from but i remember hearing a rumor that um like the production was a mess and a lot of actors were given the scripts like an hour before they had to shoot their scenes like they didn't even know what they had to say they had no time to rehearse their lines it's like i mean i guess it's not their fault then which is you know um essentially maybe reevaluate a lot it could have been that chibnall was like given a brief by the bbc for every episode he had to write like a day before it had to air which i'm guessing he wasn't but like well not not air but you know start shooting uh-huh and like these things are possible they do happen um maybe not like that crazily but it, it, it's it's never just a matter as simple as like well i mean it's often not just a matter of as simple as well they are a bad at doing the thing you so know it's, it's bad, it, a, sh a show like this wouldn't be this bad because of just one person and that that's something i the, the first doctor who video I ever made which was like the, what happened to doctor who which was just about series 12 I think I, I said at the end that, well, it's, it seems easy to blame Chibnall, and he's a big part of it. Like, there, there's clearly a bigger problem. And I, my, my take at that time was that it didn't seem like the BBC actually wanted to put in the effort to, like, treat the show properly or, or hire people who actually, you know, would, would do well yeah. on a show like this. They, they just hire people randomly just because they think it might generate buzz like the person who wrote rosa i don't i don't remember exactly what she'd done before but it was nothing even remotely like science fictiony like they they hired her to write an episode that has social commentary but not because she would write a good episode of doctor who and it's it's issues kind of like that and also like but like not just with writing, but like production, I I, do, I still think there's a ish, like technical issue, issues that seem to be plaguing the show, and like 
I really don't like the composer for the Chibnall era, just he, the ethereal synth well, music he does. Um, like the interesting thing is that I always, I, I really like a lot of the music that he's uh, produced for the show. When I listen to it, like when I specifically listen to the music, I'm like, yeah, this is pretty good. Yeah, fair. It, it doesn't never, work in. The I never show. like it in the show. Like, yeah, yeah. No, no. It's it's kind of like um the kind of music that might play in like a, a video game, like when you're climbing to the top of a mountain. And there's just this like pretty ethereal kind of like pad, you know, to just to add sort of color yeah. to the experience. But it's just it's not, especially after Murray Gold. And I had my issues with Murray Gold at times, like the, the, when he tried to put funny music in under funny scenes and make them not funny. <laughs> but like still, after like the 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 epic scores and all the the uh, iconic character themes of Murray Gold, it just felt like such a downgrade. What we were getting with just. Synths. And I, I felt that Murray Gold's was like kind of overbearing towards the end. Oh no, I totally uh, I, mean, agree. I liked a lot of his compositions as well, but I also took issue with a, a lot of the ways that his music was used in the show. And one thing no one talks about, a problem with Murray Gold is that, or I guess not necessarily Murray Gold specifically, but the way his music was used was it, especially in the Moffat era, it was mixed too high, like to the point it was, where yeah. it was hard to hear dialogue at points because, like, we need to play. I am the doctor here. We need to play it so loud that you can tell something awesome's happening. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, it like. <laughs> oh, but it's written in a weird time signature, though. True. It's a mistake to ever open my phone because every time I do, I get a notification on my doctor's ranked video of someone being, oh, well, that joke about the queen aged badly. <laughs> Because I um I, don't I, the I said about the queen. I said that um I was making a joke about how things haven't really changed since Doctor Who started. And I was like back then Queen Elizabeth was the Queen of England, and now and at the time she was still alive, but then she died shortly after I made that video. And now everyone and their aunt who watches that video is like, oh shit, he probably doesn't know the Queen's dead. I'm gonna point it out. Well, I guess that joke aged <laughs> badly. <laughs> I get like five comments well, a day. That are like you, that you joke aged sections. badly. <laughs> YouTube comment sections are people, are like are like a thousand people making the same three observations over and over I know. again. It's, it's different for every video. You don't you know. realize that until you make videos. <laughs> yeah. So just if you ever have thought about commenting on something about a video that's like readily apparent, just know that they already know. <laughs> that's that's what I'd say. <laughs> or they'll do it because it boosts the algorithm rating. Yeah. Or that. Or yeah. Sure. Fair enough. Got to, got to get in on that algorithm. All right. Well, I guess, I guess there's not much more to be said. But yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm probably gonna go and want to get some lunch soon. This stream has been going for four hours and twenty minutes. That's a funny meme. That is a funny number. That's the funny number. Elon Musk is laughing his ass off right now. Oh, but 69. 69. 420, bro. I'm looking forward to the day gonna, that um, cry. when we're all like dying of poverty and like climate change and um, and such and homelessness. When um, th in the last few months of humanity, Elon Musk gathers what little resources we have left as a species and launches a satellite into space that says 420 69 Dogecoin on it. And everyone laughs themselves. That'd be great. Death. Yeah. That'll be awesome. Well, I, I guess that's it. Well, thank you very much for joining me, Jay. It's been a pleasure. On this long experience. And um, you were saying earlier that we should do something with theories. And perhaps we should. We should. And with anyway. that... Anyway... <laughs> with and with that I will I will now end the stream. Thank you for tuning in everyone. Um goodbye. Bye. I don't know how to end streams. I don't know what to say. <laughs>